from the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the from an altered perspective. Say, so, man, you got it. Uh, no, not on me, man. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> And now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. And that's normally we would say, and Scotty, but Scotty's not here still. But there is someone else here tonight. Yes. Probably our most the, highly requested guest. Yeah. Honestly. The greatest YouTuber of all time, Paul Zigo. Wow. Wow. How, how am I, how, how is this appearance ever going to live up to that? <laughs> <laughs> like, how's that ever going to, no, it's no. okay. The, uh, the standard is pretty low, you know, it's like, well, Ray William yeah. Johnson and fucking, uh, I don't even know. Jesus freak. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus freak. <laughs> Man, you guys can't go that old school. People are be scratching their heads. That you <laughs> yeah. know what? The, the other day we were we were talking about that. And we're like, we're just helping Jesus freak out because he only gets like five hundred views. Yeah, for the, yeah. For the uninitiated out there in the audience, Jesus Freak was a Christian YouTube vlogger that had some notoriety back in the day. And I used he and I used to make videos back and forth to one another all the time. Mine were usually pretty good. His were usually <laughs> well. The opposite. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> but entertaining yeah, in their own way. <laughs> yeah, in the there, same, there was a like if there was just, a whole if, yeah. If, well, go ahead. I know. I was gonna say there was a whole coven of like YouTube Christians back then, the Jesus freaks and the the Venom Fangs and yeah, yeah. That the, seems that my, seems gone. My now. favorite was Yoke Up. Yoke Up. You was remember good. Yoke Up? Yoke Up was good. Yoke Up was. Uh, didn't I meet him once? I could have swore I did. You did. You did for for a charity event. Yeah, that's right. I did meet him. Was yeah. you know he handed he gave me uh, his the, his dead daughter card and I was like okay, <laughs> like <laughs> no dead. Well, we we met at a like a gas station where I guess his <laughs> ministry was located. Okay. In like a tree because he does like a tr- truck stop ministry in Louisiana. And um, right. and we sat down and we talked and he he seemed like a pretty nice guy for for I mean, to be honest I mean total redneck and you know uh, obviously off his rocker but I mean he seemed cordial and nice and we sat there and talked like intelligent human beings but um but then he he uh, he handed me this card and he's like this is my daughter that died and now she's in heaven and she grants wishes and stuff I'm like how do you have <laughs> what? this what yeah like no she said like yeah you know and, she, and you you know you make you make wishes on this card and they come true and, you know it's just like it's like a like God. she's like she's like I mean I, I, I kind of had this vision at that moment of like his daughter up in heaven like swamped with requests like just said dad quit giving out these cards See, like, not to bring, not to bring the whole like mood down, but like, yoke up to me. Like, I was so angry at him for so long, and I'd make these angry <laughs> videos back and forth. Uh huh. And then, and then I just came to like pity him, and that makes me pity him. Like, like the whole card thing. Like, because he probably actually believes that. Like, he has to believe that in some capacity to deal with, you, you know, know, the it, death of his daughter. The, the thing that seems the, m- even more sad about it was that. You know, it, it was clear that he did not have a good relationship with his daughter at the time that she died. Right. So maybe it was his way of like, I'm going to make amends to her uh, right. by, you know, glorifying her in death to a position, you know, when I probably neglected her in life or I don't know what the exact situation was. But right. my so- favorite was actually not Yoke Up. There was another guy. Was it? <sighs> I can't remember the dude's name. He looked like a a caveman, and he was like... <laughs> he looked like a caveman. Yeah, he looked like a caveman. You you kind of didn't know whether you should even make fun of him. Cause... Was, it, was it Firefly? Yes. <laughs> yes. What about, what about the night vision phantom? <laughs> <laughs> it was another oh, one. Man. Night vision phantom. You know, I, I usually have a rule, like, I'm not... I would not make fun of someone's weight, but he's one of the few people I've made an exception for, because, you know... Um, Dude, Firefly, like he made a video one time 
where he like, got cut up and trolled so hard where he was talking about how he had allergies uh-huh. and how the trees were releasing the trees are releasing their massive loads into the air <laughs> you know what i mean like and he says this and then like of course it got cut up so horribly where he's talking about how he i like to take massive <laughs> loads you know what i mean <laughs> it's just, uh, oh, poor! I fire wish fly. I, I I wish that they could see a Firefly video. Yeah, but um, yeah. I mean, like he looked like he looked like a caveman, and like I I thought I I don't think I did. I ever make videos to him? I don't think I did. But I mean, I always was like, well, oh, man, I'm not gonna make fun of someone. I mean, <laughs> last night we were talking about Gorilla One Nine Nine. That's oh god, but, crazy. Man, they don't. They just YouTube just doesn't doesn't bring the crazy like yeah. it used to, you know. Yeah. yeah, but we we actually played probably about half of one of his videos and commented on it. Yeah, and then oh god, got interrupted. But you know, yeah. Well, of course, it was. Uh, oh man, but yeah, that that guy. Uh, I, I used to think that he was a Poe. Uh, did you guys examine whether or not you you you, you know, think he's uh, genuine? I you know I always just default with real. Like people, I don't care. Like uh, if I find out later that someone I made a video response to was just you know trolling for and trying to get a response out of people, I'm just like, well, whatever. Because I mean, yeah. no matter how stupid someone pretends to be, there's someone out there that actually is that stupid. He, so. Exactly. He thought TJ was a middle aged man when TJ was like 22 years old. He was right, like, right. "You're a middle aged man, TJ. <laughs> You're a middle aged man." I remember that. He's at least 45. <laughs> at least 45 years old. <laughs> it was classic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the old school, the old school YouTube posse was the best. But man, uh, and it and it's never that's never going to come around again. No, you know? you know it was like a moment in time that's never coming back. Hey, apropos, it's of like nothing. hey, that's when M- that's when MTV used to play music videos. Yeah, that's like, what you it know, sounds like it yeah. ain't happening again. It was a once in a lifetime thing, and we were part of it. Yeah, a quick uh, a quick question of protocol. I was supposed to get like there was a requirement, right, for me to get super ultra. Well, it's, it's not required. There, there are no laws or requirements on the okay. Drunken Peasants podcast, other than just don't be. We I'm had, glad uh, that I, uh, I'm glad that I didn't then. Because actually, <laughs> ben, and, <laughs> ben and I are, I think Ben and I are fairly sober at the moment. Yeah, yeah, Un- not, okay. unusually sober for for this show. Yeah, huh? But uh, well, that's that's uh, so am I. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> tonight we're the boring podcast. Yep. <laughs> but uh, you know. Yeah. So, Paul, uh, you're gonna is your annual video coming out anytime soon? Or oh, My oh, that's a low blow. Yeah, that's a low blow. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I unsubscribed to your channel for a while because I was just like, man, I'm tired of this. Like, I'll go by. I'm, I'm gonna check Paul's channel last vi- last upload eight months ago. Like, well, yeah. I mean, come on now. I've always been really, and it's a it's a bad commercial for my channel, but that's you know that's not why I'm here anyway. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm horrible. Like I'm horrible with um, upload schedules. I've never really, I've never really stuck to anything that I've said I was going to do on YouTube. <laughs> like, I, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad though on some level. I mean, even though like t- t- like the com- my, like when I was first on YouTube, I had this very competitive streak where I was like, I'm gonna be the top dog on the YouTube mound. I mean, like at this point, right. I realize that that dream is not gonna come true. So okay, now that I've accepted that, I'm a little bit cooler about it. But I remember back in the day, case of fake Sagan, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, said to me, you know, you're lucky. You and I are both lucky that Paul doesn't make videos more regularly because if he did, he'd be bigger than both of us. Oh. And I was, yeah, but I actually agreed with him on that. And I was like, <laughs> well, I guess it is good that Paul, you know, sucks at consistency because if he didn't, he'd conquer the YouTubes. And I really I like, but his bitch, I really liked Paul's videos where he did like the Q and a and, and you told, you told a few stories that I thought were crazy. Like the one where you went to the party at the mansion yeah. there, that was a crazy story. And then the one where you, uh, slapped your sister with a cheeseburger. Yeah. That was pretty that's... funny too. That's one of my favorite stories, the the slapping my sister with a cheeseburger story. That's that's an amazingly cultivated story on my end. Like I've spent years and years adding and subtracting from that that particular story to get it just right. That, that. <laughs> the process of refinement. 
Yep, yep. I don't think I've actually heard that story. I hear you do a, a lot of hangouts now, though, Paul. I do. Uh, that's kind of what I've been doing lately, just doing the live interaction thing. Because I'm not, I don't know, I've, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm not really interested in talking about a lot of, no, not that I'm not interested in talking about it, but sitting down and doing the production of making a video about it, even like, though a lot of my videos are just off the cuff. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've been there and I've done that, and, and what else do I need to say? Right, that's all in the past now. Right. I mean, like, and you kind of feel like be a constant struggle, like going back your way to find stuff that's relevant enough for you to care enough to make a, a video about. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I, what I do is like I'll just uh, every once in a while, I'll just be like, well, I already made a video pretty similar to this, but maybe I'll make it better this time. You know, <laughs> maybe they'll forget right. I already made a video about. That. Well, they probably <laughs> will. I mean, there's so many videos on my channel. Um, I think there's like 760 and that's not even all the videos no. I've made because I've, t- I've done some purges here and there where I've taken on it that I just despised. Um, but, uh, yeah, but uh, one of the, one of the things I wanted to talk with you about TJ is, is that one, one of the reasons why I've, I've been just doing the hangouts and not really caring about the content on my channel is that I, I learned uh, a lesson that you, interestingly enough, we're, we're, I think, trying to teach me I, a I, little bit uh, way back when, when we had our little, we had a tussle at one point. Are you, well, I mean, like, are you talking about the thing with the, the, uh, the K- Casey Anthony and all that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, like, at that time, I mean, like, I didn't, I mean, I don't know if I've, I've mentioned to you since then, but like the main reason I did that was just because I wanted you to make a video. So I was like, well, I'll just, I'll get Paul to make a video. <laughs> it worked. But, it worked. But anyway, you were saying? Uh, I, no, I was saying I, I learned it through being in talk therapy. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's the art of being selfish. I've, I've learned, I'm starting to learn how to be a little bit selfish. Now, not totally selfish where I don't care about selfish enough that I can take care of myself and decide that maybe I don't want to spend all night wringing my hands over whatever's going on in the news that day. You know what I mean? And and part of that was these videos. Like if you watch me in some of these videos, I'm pretty hopped up. Like I'm known for being pretty animated, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty like insanely uh, stressed out making these videos. So it's not even a real release for me. Um, so, yeah, and I have no idea where that tangent was going. I don't know. When I shoot videos, <laughs> like I, I, I used to have like a very like a nervous energy whenever I turn the camera on. But I guess I've gotten so used to it now that it's just like, you know, oh, it's time to do a video. Like even like when I was just like sick and like hurting and I'm just like basically laying in bed. I had the I had my back went out and I had the flu at the same time. So I was just like I was still able to get on camera and just do the videos the same way where I'm like. You know, just putting on like, okay, now it's time to slip into the amazing atheist persona. Right. So, right. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess that, um, I mean, I, like, I, I know that on some level that like it, it lacks the, the visceral quality that it, that it once had, I guess. So I try to make up for that by just being, you know, better and better as a, as a performer. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and like, like I said, you, you're going at it from such a different angle than I am that it has to be that way. Like, you have to be consistent. I used to, to love, I used to love all the, the, uh, the logical videos that you had. Well, those were the, that's the golden age, right? That's right. The- I mean, <laughs> that was all my favorite stuff because it was just, and that, I, I kind of agree with you that it kind of lays the foundation for pretty much everything. Maybe not everything you have to say on every subject, but, you know, when, when it comes to the, the religious thing, like I think you pretty much Certainly. cover every major criticism that you, yeah. you conceivably yeah. have. Throughout that that series, that was kind of me getting that out, I guess. <laughs> like every once in a while I'll hear something that I think, oh wow, you know, that that religion. I mean, uh, I, I but, guess I guess I mean like I've had kind of a resurgence in it because I keep just I keep seeing things that I know are just they wouldn't these this I, I keep coming across news stories where I'm like you know this wouldn't happen if it right. weren't for the way that people perceive religion and the 
the fact that people can, you know, use their faith to justify any horrendous that they want to. It seems increasingly desperate to me, though, some of the things that they've been doing, kind of like the death rattle. Yeah, not 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 that not that I believe that it's ever going to go away completely. But I think that like the influence of the religious right is has it peaked a while back and it's been in decline. Right. Do you believe that or no? Uh, Yeah, but I mean, I kind of even believe that back when we first started. I just I, I was starting to see. I mean, I think I think at the point in American history where the atheists are writing best-selling books and able to amass like massive audiences on YouTube and you know, right? Like to me, like you know, in in a in, in bygone eras, that wouldn't even have been possible. You know, right. what, just yeah. demographic. I almost noticed that when the uh, the evangelical Christian YouTubers when they started to kind of fade away in popularity, then we got all, all of a sudden, then we started getting like, like conservative, like heavily right wing, like Steven Crowder or how the world works, uh, people that were gaining popularity for a short time there. It's interesting because what this little like weird community that we had (coughs) did was it, it cannibalized itself when the, when the big Christian and, and Muslim targets started to fade away, as you know, how could they not with the withering abuse that they that they took every day? Um, just like shocking, horrifying things were said to them day in and day out. And uh, I don't blame them for leaving. But when they did, the uh, the YouTube atheist community kind of turned on itself. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, certainly, because, I mean, before they had a common enemy to unite them. But after after the common enemy had basically been defeated and driven off of YouTube, Right. Uh, I mean, what more did they have to do other than figure out ways to differentiate themselves from each other? And I think that you and I don't know if you if you've ever owned this about about what you did during that era or not. But I think that for good or ill, and I think I think for mostly for good, because I think I think things are better off fractured and like like in, in the YouTube sense, I think things are better off not under the wing. But I think you helped to bring about kind of the death of YouTube atheism as a, as a popular medium with the atheist scum United thing. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think you divided like, like that was the first time I remember people like, yeah, that said, was, that was the first crack in the, in the, right. uh, in the, in the facade or whatever. Yeah. People sending me PM saying, yeah, yeah. That know. was when people, that was when the, when the, cause I was kind of advocating for a much more aggressive approach Right. At that time. And then there were the, you know, people is, that were like, no, 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 no. Which is odd but, now because if I if that had happened now with me and my current mindset, I probably would have been the most virulent detractor of Atheist Scum United. So it's a, probably a good thing it wasn't successful. <laughs> right. <laughs> because but, I, then uh, I would find myself in a, in a difficult position. Of, it did uh, start like it started an av- avalanche, though. It did. It, and and uh, I, I think it I think where we ended up is better. I think the community was tested and probably made better for it, and it allowed us to move on and start talking about things like politics and uh, yeah. You know. I mean, that was it was very freeing. I think when uh, when my channel became less about atheism and more about you know because um, I kind of realized that religion, like when I was younger and a little bit more naive, I kind of had a, a more simplistic view of the way in which religion interacts with uh, politics and and how our society is structured and all that shit. So I, I, I was, I, you know, I kind of had this, this idea of a direct causal relationship, like people, ha- you know, first they have religion, then they do this stupid shit, and, you know, it's a direct causal link. But right. I, mean, I kind of see now that it's a little bit more complicated than that, and there's, you know religion is tethered to people's faiths and traditions and, you know, cultural identities and all sorts of other, you know, shit. And, um, there's all these competing value systems at work. And even within, even within individual religions, there's different sects with different values that, you know, maybe they would be in opposition to each other if they didn't feel like they had a common enemy. Exactly. But, um, I mean, yeah, that's like that's kind of like the big the big lie, and I think I saw a video where where Penn Jillette was actually talking about this, even though I don't I don't much care for him. 
Um, he was he was talking about how if you really think about all of the different ideologies that Christianity encompasses, then it starts to look a lot less like this monolithic thing in America. This this you know united force for a particular agenda because exactly. it's, it's really not. Yeah, it, yeah it's. Um, I I don't think that religion will ever do what the little kind of microcosm of of atheism did on on uh on youtube though i don't think they'll ever turn on one because because if there's one thing that religion is good at doing it's finding a common enemy and uh there's always somebody i think i think right now it's guns i think i think that guns are the topic um i i've had some frustrating conversations with people who are normally pretty reasonable about guns recently Mm -hmm. and it's it's become a very hot kind of uh, why don't you, why don't you kind of elucidate your what your position on uh, on guns is? Uh, I'm pro gun ownership, uh-huh. and I'm also pro gun regulation. I think that uh, universal background checks should be instituted. There should uh, like the gun show loophole should never have existed. I have I, I have a friend that would literally be calling you a fascist at this moment. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm sure that you and, see, and this is my thing. It's like I feel I feel like my position is incredibly moderate because I'm not going ban all guns and reduce magazine sizes. I'm saying, look, guns are dangerous. We all know this. Like every every person that owns a gun and has ever had a gun shown to them knows that they're dangerous. Um, and and how can we better regulate who gets their hands on them legally? And how do we stem the tide of legal guns being purchased and then through gun show loopholes where we don't have to have background checks because I'm not a licensed dealer at the gun, gun show, so I'm able to sell to somebody sans background check. Like, why is that even a thing anymore? Yeah. And, yeah, and, 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 and I, I pretty much – I just pretty much want to say that I, I – my position is remarkably similar to yours, and I, I know what you mean because every time I've espoused that position, I've had gun nuts – uh, tell me that um, that I'm basically the worst sort of fascist. That I love the state so much that I would <laughs> right. just, you know, if I would suck Obama's dick and I would fucking fillet Uncle Sam with a fucking American flag sticking out of my ass. It's it's interesting that you mentioned how the whole gun thing took over for religion, kind yeah. of, because I I almost view it almost like it is a religion for uh, for some people. Well, it's certainly the same crowd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. not to not to make a sweeping generalization, but uh, you know, I think a lot of the people that you see at NRA rallies are the same people you'd see, you know, uh, calling Obama a Muslim at a at a John McCain fundraiser. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah and uh, the, the the funny thing is that um, I remember there was a they had uh, George Zimmerman actually signing. Um, Signing autographs at a gun yeah, show. Yeah, it's like it's, it, what a, what a shocking fucking amount of uh, like lack of self awareness. Our hero on the part of those people. Like, how? Why would you ever do that? Like at a time where people are literally frothing at the mouth to like like I I'm afraid for your right to bear arms at this point and because there are people calling for gun bans and massive gun restrictions. Um, you know what I mean? And, it, and shit like that is pushing people hey, to those. Paul, margins. Paul, someone, yeah. someone in our chat has got your fucking number, dude. Oh, okay. They, they said that when you said incredibly moderate, that was an oxymoron. Oh so, shit. You know, you've done, that been, is true. You done been got. Good night, everybody. It's been great being here. Uh, <laughs> oh, the drops, the drops. <laughs> Yeah, this, it's a sad song. Though. Whoa, but anyway, I'm a, I'm a, you know evangelizing over here. I've I've turned I've turned your podcast into a gun talk. But yeah, no, like I just wish we could have a conversation. You know what I mean? Like I'm not asking to ban guns. I don't want to take your fucking guns. That's silly. I don't, That's the dopey problem. Talk. <laughs> yeah, actually, we were discussing this yesterday. I think we were saying, you know, if if you got if you tried to get rid of all guns, it it would just create a black market of guns, which would be arguably the most violent black market in history, you know, because it's a black market of guns. Right. Um, so it's not practical to ban guns, but I agree with you. There should be tighter regulation on it for sure. Right. 
I mean, like, why not? Why why wouldn't we want to make sure that people are competent? I mean, why why do we license drivers? Anyone try to take my gun, they can have the fucking bullets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come and get it. I don't no, why do we you, you, think you about can't? it though? Why do we why do we license drivers? Because a car is an incredibly dangerous piece of machinery that you're gonna be handling and using. And we wanna make sure that on some basic fucking level you're competent. Yes. Enough. And the funny thing is, is yeah, but like a yeah. car isn't even but in primarily some states, used for killing. Yeah, in some states they give away free guns with like you open a bank account with our bank, we give you a gun. Right. Yeah, like a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I mean, and we don't even do that properly. I have an Arizona driver's license that expires, and I shit you not, it expires in 2070. Yeah, I got it. Air- I got it in 2002 or something. I mean, it's ridi- I'll, be, I'll be long dead before I ever have to re-up my Arizona driver's license. Yeah, but- you can get a lifelong driver's license from Arizona. It's Man, Arizona is awesome. I I gotta wonder how many 80 year old people there are that haven't had to like take an eye exam. You know, <laughs> yeah, years true. to get on the fucking road there. Someone says they need Scotty's voice to climax in the... Uh, Scotty's dead. We yeah, Scotty's Scotty. not here. We fired him. Paul ate Scotty. Yes. Yeah, he was delicious. Paul was like... Mow. Slightly salty. <laughs> yeah. This is for <laughs> making me feel like a piece of shit eight years ago, you sub bitch. <laughs> <laughs> did he really make you feel like a piece of shit? Oh, yeah, dude. He made me feel like a total piece of shit. What did he do? Hold on. Let's hear about this before we talk about well, Brett Well, I think we kind of talked about it once, didn't we? Maybe not. Bit. Maybe not on the show. You, we we, we might have talked about it. We might have addressed it. I don't think we actually got into to what he said. I don't yeah. even remember what he said or what the video that I did towards you was about. But he was well, definitely it, yeah, he, he was, was the more vicious of the two. Yeah, he well, because it was just blunt. Like he just walks in out of nowhere. Like I made some stupid video to TJ uh, because I didn't like the ASU, and so TJ had res- TJ responded and had already ripped me an asshole. I'm already watching this video, going, I can never <laughs> go on YouTube again. Like this is it. Like my first YouTube video is going to be my last YouTube video, and then all of a sudden, and I had never seen Scotty up till this point because I was relatively new to TJ's channel, and Scotty. Who at this point, I think must have been like fucking fifteen or sixteen years old, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he comes something wa- like that around that yeah. age. Yeah, he comes wandering in from outside and goes, "Hey, TJ, what are you doing?" And TJ's like, oh, "I'm just responding to some faggot." And uh, <laughs> and, and uh, fucking Scotty just watches like two seconds of my video and goes, "Why are you even bothering responding to this faggot? He's stupid." Like, like I can tell. <laughs> I can tell he has there's something wrong with him. And he just like walks off camera. <laughs> you know? And I was like, well, that's fucking it. You know, fuck it. I'm going to YouTube career. Uh, that sounds like Scotty. Yeah. I can just tell. Look at him. <laughs> just yeah. look at him. Yeah. Just he pronounce about, instant judgment. He said something about my jowls, too. Like it was the worst <laughs> fucking thing. Yeah, he was like, look at that fucking guy's jowls. And I was like, oh, god damn it. <laughs> the guy has jowls. His jowls. <laughs> that is fucking hilarious. But I can tell I can tell it scarred you in some way because you remember it so vividly. I don't e- yeah, because I don't even remember yeah, what the dude, fuck that I was told you. about. You don't, you don't remember the first ass whipping you get on a website, you know? You, you remember that. Yeah, I, I wonder if I'll ever get mine. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, you've never had your ass whipping, have you? Not really. Like, I've had people that have, like... You know, got like their blows in and shit, but I can't really say that I've ever been like massacred where I watched a video towards me and was just like, that's it. Fucking hang (laughs) up the hat. Fucking time to go. Game over. Game over, man. I remember, uh, I remember one time, Paul, you told the story of your first like physical ass beating because you insulted the Denver Broncos. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. That was a that was an interesting story, yeah, especially yeah, at the I, end. I took a massive ass beating for <laughs> for not liking the Denver Broncos. Well, at least it was well deserved, you know, because <laughs> obviously, sure. obviously, anyone who doesn't like the Denver Broncos should be brutally beaten to death. It's too bad that pot wasn't uh, legal in Colorado at that time, because maybe they would have been more cheerful. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe so. Yeah. We'll never know. And TJ, welcome. To the Drunken Peasants Podcast. I'm Ben. I'm ZJ. ZJ is here. And I am TJ, part two. Huh. And we also have the late, great Paul's ego, who Hello. is dead. 
I, I, I've just been informed that I'm dead, so I might be a little unsteady tonight. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, I, we're good to that's, go. That, that is understandable. So, Paul, <laughs> um, we, uh, we recently received, well, I shouldn't say we. Yeah, I Scotty received a disturbing message. recently received a uh, disturbing message. Okay. And uh, I'd just like to play that for you right now. So okay. Listen okay. To that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Scotty, you are a nerd. You are garbage. I will destroy you. I am your enemy. You will be destroyed by my power. For I am the great. Po- I mean, uh, I am anonymous. <laughs> You will never figure out who this is until it's too late. One day I will appear behind you with a baseball bat and I will slam it into your head, killing you instantly. For I am strong. Like when I was a kid, people always be like, you know, Paul, you're pre- I mean, you know, anonymous guy, you're pretty strong. Anyway, you're going to die. Fuck Ben and TJ, too. Cocksuckers. You know, I, so, um, I, I would have thought that maybe it was TJ, but he no. said, fuck Ben and TJ, too. Cool. Yeah, and, and at one point, he slips that his name might have been Paul, so... Uh, I don't know, man. You know, well, we don't know any Pauls if, but you. And, the and actually, fits, we, well, uh, I don't, I, we sent I don't this over... In this we sent this over to Brett. We actually sent this over to Brett Keen, yeah. our forensic audio expert. Uh-huh. And he reverse-engineered <laughs> uh, it? Yeah, he reverse engineered it, and and, uh, we were able to come up with this. Scotty, you are a nerd. You are garbage. (laughs) I will destroy you. I don't think we need to play the whole thing there, but uh, that is clearly your voice, Paul. Well, in my defense, and just let let me put together my defense real quick. I, I currently don't have a way of, of changing my voice uh, hooked up to my computer. Um, oh, no. So, <laughs> Sounds like an echo minute. we just heard. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Uh, I don't know. No. I, think, I, think we better, I think we better like load up the guns, T.J. I think Paul's coming for us, man. Especially me. He's gunning for me. Why? What, what, is, this, what is this hatred you have towards Scotty, Paul? Yeah, what I, did I yeah. ever do to you, Paul? I don't other, have... Other, they make uh, you want to kill me so badly. I don't. I don't really, literally want you to die. I just wanted to call you, and but don't have you know the balls to do it myself. Uh, so I covered you know. up the voice. You got me. You fucking nailed me. What can I say? <laughs> it's clearly me. You know. Yeah. It's, it is clearly. I think. I think it's. I think it's Paul. I think he, he, he's come. He's come clean, TJ. But I think we still have to kill him. I'm, it's unfortunate. But <laughs> we, the bread. We respe- the bread queen was too good. Like I was gonna deny it. But then I heard yeah. the bread queen's breakdown of the situation, and and it's obviously me. I'd be stupid to sit here and deny it any further. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you're able to admit that, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you're able to come clean and admit that that was you because I it was so it. obviously you. And and uh, I just want to. I mean, I want to say thank you. I mean, I know we've had our problems with bread queen in the past, <laughs> but you know he his. <laughs> Expert skills as a forensic audio examiner have been invaluable to the process. TJ, of I'm, I, I'm this actually thing. getting a message from Brett Kane. Can you, can you basically, uh, let, let, let's pull this up, TJ. All right, let's okay. see. Brett, Brett, Brett actually, Brett actually wants to join us on the show. Yeah, okay. He wants to join us on the show. Welcome yeah. to the show, Brett. Oh, uh, hello. This is the Butt King. <laughs> hi, hi, Butt King. Hey, how you doing? Oh, uh, uh, this is the Stallion. I'm, I'm a Stallion, <laughs> and I have actually done some further analysis on this file. <laughs> and what I have discovered is that that is not Paul's voice. Oh, wait, wait. So it's not Paul? No, it's not Paul. Who is it? But so, but, but he just confessed that you're sure it's not Paul. No. Well, Actually, well, it was the Amazing Atheist. Wow. So and what? it was not directed at Scotty. It was actually an attack on my family. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is it yeah. also because you have health problems? That that is that is classified information, and I will thank you to stay out of my business and to stop insulting my family. <laughs> I was trying to cover for you, Brett. I was trying to cover for you. Yeah, we we knew you guys were in cahoots when you did all those hangouts with him. Yeah. Oh, you know. yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah How is yeah, cahoots I... doing these days, anyway? <laughs> 
Good old cahoots. <laughs> yeah. The best two dollar whore money can buy. All right, so we we hung up on Brett. Yeah, he's dead. What's your first time smoking? What's your smoke story? You know, I mean, uh, I smoked a few times, but I never really got high. And then yeah, one you- and then one time, uh, you know, I smoked with uh, my wife, and you know, I I was I was always the asshole that was like, weed don't do nothing for me. People who smoke weed are losers. Yeah, it's a waste of time. That that was very clear in your videos before I I actually was it re- oh yeah yeah, yeah definitely. I I definitely had that attitude and then um and then finally like my wife was the one who uh, who finally just broke it down and was like come on come on and I'm sitting there and I'm fucking smoking I'm like oh, God I can't believe I'm smoking this shit again don't do nothing for me I never enjoyed this and then I I go to set my drink down and I tried to set my drink down on the pedal of her bicycle. <laughs> which is not a stable serve. I'm like, holy shit, why did I try to do that? That's weird. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm fucking high as a goddamn kite, and it's awesome. So after that, I was like, wow, this is great. And like, I, I went from, like, I hate weed to, like, I am a total stoner in, like, 0.2 <laughs> seconds. I'm like, oh, so this is what it's about. Now I'm going to smoke every day that I can anyway. Hey, 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 hey. Smoke pan every day. What about your smoke story, Ben? Smoke story like my first time ever? Or just an interesting story about smoke, if the first time is not interesting. Oh, wow. It would probably be like back in high school, me and my friend, we went back behind a, a furniture warehouse and smoked. And it was it was like the end of winter, so there was a lot of melting ice like falling off the sides of the buildings and shit. And my friend thought I was making some weird noises, but it was actually, like, the ice falling from the side of this building. And he's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with all those fucking noises? Why do you keep making those noises? And I was like, dude, it's not me. It's it's the fucking water running off the side of that building over there. He's like, no, no, stop making all those stupid fucking noises now. And, like, it, it, it was a pretty stressful situation. For, wow. for a few minutes, yeah, not not the not the funnest uh, situation. That's the worst high ever. Yeah, um, Paul. The the first time I ever got really high because I think I think everybody has a couple of times where it's like maybe maybe people get really blown out high their first time, but like first time I didn't smoke much and so nothing much happened. Uh-oh. The first time I got mm-hmm. really high was with a, a friend of mine, and his dad had this piece. Um, that was like a uh, you have to picture it like a lopped off hand giving the mm-hmm. bird and that's what you okay. smoked out of the bowl was in the palm the carb was on the thumb and you packed weed into a little bowl on the end of the finger yeah and I got wow. I, we, we took a couple of rips off of this and I don't know if it was just better pan than I was used to but I spent the next fucking like 10 <laughs> hours on my friend's couch just listening to everybody as they walk by and just like, Paul, you know, I want to give the pizza. <laughs> Do you want to get pizza? I'm like, yeah, pizza sounds delicious. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was the first time I ever got really high and I've been in love with it ever since. I like how you could tell a story about you laying around on a couch and it's entertaining. Um, Tim, I don't even know if you uh, if you smoke, but I'm sure you probably do. <laughs> well, you know, you know, not really, man. When I was a, when not I was really. a teenager, I I couldn't smoke, man. I was that guy. If I smoked, I got paranoid as shit. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And my friends hated about. that, man, because we like get ready to get you know get with some women or some some girls, some teen, you know, whatever, and. I'd be the one that just start freaking out, like, what's that? And they're like, nothing, man, you're high. I'm like, no, nah, man, something's wrong, something's wrong. <laughs> so it took years, man, for me to, like, be able to smoke like a normal person. But I, I got to admit, I'm always afraid that shit's going to happen. So it's just not for me, man, unfortunately. I got gotcha. you. I've, I've, I've had a few paranoid episodes. My paranoia is always, like, even now that I live in Ohio where, you know, like, Amounts of weed under like three ounces or something are decriminalized. 
So it's not like I'd even get into some shit, but every time I get really high, I become convinced that the police are, like, imminently going to be breaking into my house and, like, get out of fucking town! <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. And, like, if I get high enough and paranoid enough, I can actually start hearing, like, every noise that happens outside. That's them getting in a fucking position. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. I'm doomed. I'm doomed. I've got, the, uh, I've got another great weed story if we've got time. <laughs> Do Go it. Ahead. Okay. Um, I used to live with this, this guy who was a classical pianist. His name was Jonathan. He was a and what? He was a classic, like a classical pianist. Like he played classical <laughs> fucking piano. I know. I know. <laughs> Not a penis. He also had a classical penis. He yes. Had, he, had a, he had a classic penis. And we, uh, ended up being roommates and mm. he had this fucking baby grand piano shoved into this shitty little apartment that we shared. And we got high one night. And I was like, dude, my favorite classical song ever is called Allegro Barbaro. And it's just basically somebody pounding on the fucking piano. It's the loudest thing ever. And it's like four in the morning. And I'm like, dude, play Allegro Barbaro for me right now. <laughs> and he's like, right now, man. And I'm like, now, dude, I have to hear Allegro Barbaro. You don't understand. So he gets on the fucking piano and plays a brilliant rendition of Allegro Barbaro. And right at the end of it, fucking knock, knock, knock. And the door was cracked. So the cop just kind of lets himself in. Oh, shit. Of course. And this is in Arizona where they send you to jail. and You don't pass go. You don't collect $200. You go directly to jail. And so I'm like, holy fucking shit. And it's just hazy in the house. <laughs> And the cop goes, huh. Well, I got to be honest with you. I was not expecting this. And I was like, oh, shit, what? <laughs> what? You know, because I'm, I'm looking at all the weed spread out on the fucking table. <laughs> you know, the, 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 our pipe is just sitting there. I mean, we didn't have time to hide anything. And he goes, I honestly thought this was just going to be a radio call. But you're actually playing piano, aren't you? And, and Jonathan was like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, officer, you want to hear some? He's like, no, no, it's a little late to be playing piano, boys. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> turned around and left. <laughs> so, so I know we shit on the cops a lot, but there are some cool cops out there because I know he smelled it. <laughs> I know he saw it. He could have booked us. What is the weirdest, creepiest, most bizarre dream you've ever had? Whether it's something surreal or just benign, what are your types of dreams? Thanks. No worries. Hmm. I, I'm almost afraid to talk about dreams. Honestly, <laughs> you, you have you have good ones. Well, you know, you have good ones. You have weird ones. You have ones that are scary. Uh, but I told was... I told this this one before uh, on my channel. But I had a dream when I was a kid that. I went to the Epcot Center, you know, the big dome yeah. thing in, in Florida. I had a dream that I went there and had to shit really bad. And I was like, Ma, I got I, I to gotta shit. Like, I got to take, take a poop. Could you please, you know. So she, my mom helps me find a little boy's room. And I go and I sit down, in, you know, on the bowl to start to shit. And I think that this happened because your body can't let you shit while you're sleeping. Like, they're our natural kind of hormones in place to keep you from doing that. And so I think my body had to think of the most ridiculous thing. And so what happened was, is my fucking toilet started raising up and I started hearing circuit <laughs> circus music, like, <laughs> and all of a sudden I raised up out of the, out of the, uh, the, the bathroom and I was inside of the Epcot center and there was a rail, uh, like a, like a roller coaster track. And I'm sitting on this toilet, like holding it, holding on for dear life as I'm going around on this roller coaster. And I'm looking at the people as I pass by and they're all laughing at me. They're all like pointing and going, ah, ha, 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 ha. and I'm just like, no, no, that that's probably the most disturbing dream I ever had in my entire life. It's a pretty fucking disturbing dream. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, Ben? You uh, have any? I, I don't know. I, I don't even want to go into it, honestly. I think Ben's pleading. If Come I, on. Yeah. Oh, no. Ben, you got to do it. You can't. You got to do it. Do it for the show. 
Do okay. it for chat. Do it. Do it now. I had a dream that I had period period sex with Barbara Bush. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> I don't think I'd even say I would bother saying anything at this point because I don't think I can top it. No, no. Now you have to. Uh, I, don't, I, I honestly don't have crazy dreams. The craziest dream that I ever have. You beat me. You yeah. beat me with one sentence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How fucking what, dare you? That's what I'm saying. Like, what am I going to say that's going to top that? <laughs> Was it good? I don't even know how she was still having her period, you know, but yes. Did, did you enjoy it, Ben? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I had period <laughs> sex with Barbara Bush. How do you fucking How do you fucking top that? You don't. That's what I'm saying. It's like what the fuck do I go from here like, you know, uh You can hey. top it by having period sex with both Barbara and Laura Bush sure, at the same sure, time. Sure, that was my dream. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, right. We should have made Ben go last. <laughs> I got yet another question for you, asshole. Here she is again. She sends so many questions, I can't even limit it to one per show. Wow. When you were a little kid, barely a Barbie, what was your favorite story? Whether it was told for a movie, TV series, or, or a book, basically, what story did you like hearing the most? And what are your thoughts on it now that you're an adult? I was a pretty big fan of Ferdinand and Little Red Riding Hood. So, what was yours? Um, Shameless self-promotion. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a really good question. My uh, my grandpa used to tell this story about how he had an elephant that lived in his pants and would I pull on the trunk? <laughs> it squirt and, milk out. Yeah, and then like it would squirt milk out. That was a pretty fun story. <laughs> I liked that one a lot. Um, but yeah, as, as far as like the mainstream kind of f- fairy tales... I think Humpty Dumpty was my favorite one. There's a video of me just like laughing my ass off to Humpty Dumpty when I was a toddler, just barely <laughs> babble talking. You know what I mean? My yeah. my mom reading me Humpty Dumpty, and every time he took a great fall, I laughed my ass off. So I'd say Humpty Dumpty. And as as an adult, I, I'm still down with some Humpty Dumpty. It's still a funny ass story. The big fat ass sitting on a wall and falls off, and they can't put him together again. Yeah, I kind of laughed from uh, Jack and the Beanstalk when the fucking giant just like fell down the beanstalk and fell down and died. I thought that was yeah. pretty funny, too. Yeah, that's good shit. Yeah, I like that one. I also like because uh, I, I used to have a book of Grimm's fairy tales that, you know, the not so uh, PG oh, versions yeah. of them. And I, it, I even liked uh, the, the Cinderella story because they got the glass slipper and the one uh, stepsister, the bitchy stepsister, she... Her feet were way too big to wear the glass slippers, so she cut her fucking toes off to make it fit. Oh. I was like, yeah, it's awesome. That, that's fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, toeless feet. Ben Fuck reveals yeah. his foot fetish. Barbara Bush on her period. <sighs> <sighs> the things I actually grew up watching was my, my, my favorite Disney movie was Sleeping Beauty, and then I also liked Donald and Math Magic Land. Those are the things that I watched repeatedly. I've, so, so, uh, like, I, I can even remember, like, my mom just telling me all the time, like, you used to wake me up in the middle of the night, and apparently I had to watch these movies over and over again, so I have to go with those. Let's, let's hear an amusing anecdote from Paul first, though. That'll be the close. Paul, tell us an amusing anecdote. Uh, vote for Chris Christie. <laughs> That's not an anecdote, Paul. I know it's not. <laughs> tell us. That's just a sentence. Tell us a Chris Christie-related story, Paul. Um, Tell I us just, about the time that you blew Chris Christie. Uh, well, I had to lift his his gut up <laughs> off of his his uh, his pecker. Did you just use your your, your head Dude, as like a rest? That was board? like that's like Atlas holding the sky. Yeah, yes. you're like. Atlas, dude. Atlas and he shrugged. Was, he was wearing uh, that that gold leaf kind of uh, <laughs> gold. That gold leaf kind of a uh, crown that the Roman emperors wore, yeah, yeah. and being fanned, see that. being fanned by a bunch of uh, effeminate boys, and being fed <laughs> grapes. 
<laughs> and in a palatial, like like a palace, basically. Yeah, right? with columns and shit and statues. Corinthian columns. Yes. Yeah, statues and, of and like. He, he looked at me and and lo, did he say, "Paul slobbeth my novice." <laughs> <laughs> and then he beckoned to Paul, probably. And beckoned. He beckoned with, me with close one finger. And, Come and, closer, and my child. Made me take my uh, made me take my loincloth off and then <laughs> lift up his ample gut and uh, suck his penis, and I did with with great fervor. How would and, you uh, How would you rate the experience on a scale from one to ten? Uh, well, I wasn't able to bring him to orgasm, so it was oh, probably about a five. Did he, oh, and I have a, did he at least did he maintain spare your life? an erection? I, I, did he, did, uh, Paul, how did he spare your life? I mean, because you failed him, obviously, so what, what did you do to actually be spared? Uh, he, he relegated me to his, uh, to his, uh, stand-in nipple tweaker <laughs> while, while the next person came in and was able to bring him to Oregon. Oh, okay. So, a more talented uh, pair of lips than your own. Yes. Yes. I'm not a very good, uh, I'm not, I'm not a very good oral sex, uh, giver, but I am a good nipple that, tweaker. So, well, there you go. Oh, okay. So that's your saving. So days. you found, you found your niche. That's all that's important. I found my niche. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, on that note, the show's over. Show's over, bitches. Fuck Good you, night, CJ. Good night, drunken peasants. I love Good you Good night, all. Paul. Thank you for being with us, Eat Paul. many burritos, Paul. Go many get, burritos. Paul can finally go get his burrito. Yeah. He's so. been craving. I'm going to go Shh. suckle Chris Christie's uh, penis <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a baby goat at its mother's teat. There you go, Paul. There you go. You found your place in life, buddy. Hey, Paul, can I, can I go ahead and announce that shit that we talked about? Uh, yeah, dude, if you want to. I oh, man, this is a huge announcement. All right, so this is, this this is, is huge. Huge. It's going to be huge. Dude, the chat is going to blow up when we, when we make all this. Right, all right, all right, all uh, right. Paul is now going to be a recurring guest on the show every Friday from here until he gets sick of us, and, and that's that. Yes, so once a week, Paul's Ego. Paul's Ego, Wacky Fridays. Wacky Fridays with <laughs> Paulie Ego. And if you're wondering how he got such a great deal, it's because he sucked TJ's dick. <laughs> he sucked my cock. He thought he was flossing his teeth, <laughs> to, oh. to be fair. <laughs> Turn it into AIU <laughs> on an me, easy man. mistake to make. <laughs> All right, everybody, show's over. Good night. Peace. Peace. I, I was just as shocked as you are. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Dude, Paul's lying. It's it's not true. There's no way. TJ, it's, it's not true, is it? Oh no. my god, I can't believe this. No, the main the main demographic for video oh games is god. women in their mid forties. We all know. I this. thought that was true. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what is the world coming to? Paul's just looking around, confused, like what's yeah. going on? I don't even know what the fuck. I don't even what. I don't even know what the fuck is going on in the world anymore. Like, Me I don't either. even know. Paul, I don't know what to say. Is, Paul, the frozen burrito factory is still fucking running. To, to wrap it's up, running. You're fine. To wrap up the show, do you yeah. have any good stories at all? I do. All right. I have one. <laughs> I have one, yeah, that I told um, on on Reddit. I did an AMA on the, on the Drunken Peasants subreddit. Oh, okay. All right. A few days ago. Cool. And I told this story. So... I, I have uh, what's called a pylon idol cyst, right? Sounds beautiful. It sits is that the one right that's like on the, like over your ass or something. Yes, yes. Oh, right oh. When, oh. Plus, when does the bus park part of the story come in? I'm waiting for it. it. Oh, you you have no idea. Uh, it was a thing of beauty. It's beautiful. So, I have this pylon idol cyst, right? And yeah, I was born. With, it's, a, it's a genetic thing. I was born with it. Mm-hmm. Um. And my entire life, see, usually what happens with a pylonidal cyst is it flares up, it gets really painful, somebody goes to the doctor, they say, okay, you got a pylonidal cyst, they do a really quick outpatient surgery, and you're done, right? The problem with mine was, is that it didn't ever flare up my whole life. I had it, and I kind of knew something was back there, because when I was soaping up my ass at night, you know, you could sometimes feel a bump there, but uh, I, I... I had no, I had no fucking clue what the lump was, and it never hurt me. So anyway, fast, fast forward. I'm, I'm like uh, 20 years old. I'm living in Arizona in, in poverty, pretty much. I'm working at a, at a coffee shop part time, 
living in a shitty apartment. Luckily, the coffee shop I was working for was Starbucks, and I had health insurance, but we'll get to that in a second. So I woke up one morning, and it was like the back half of me was on fire. It was like I had fallen out of a window and landed directly on my ass. It was. Like, it felt like I broke my tailbone. <coughs> wow. And uh, so I got up. I managed somehow to work. I got to work. I managed to limp my way through work all day. I got home. I'm taking a shower, and... I reached back to kind of feel because I, I thought oh, I'd no. injured my back. Oh no! I know where this is going. <laughs> I reached back to feel, and and there were two things I noticed. Number one, it felt like I had a third ass cheek. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. The back of my oh. ass was so like the top of my ass crack was so inflamed and swollen that it felt like I had a, a third <laughs> ass cheek, mm. and there was like a hole. Now. What? Listen, I know what Fuck you're thinking. That. I know you're thinking, oh, Paul found his asshole, LOL, top keck. I get it. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was what's called a pylonidal sinus. Now, I freaked out. I freaked out. I felt this thing, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And my finger went into it a little bit, and I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, fuck. So I leapt out of the fucking shower. Turning into the fly. I leapt out of the shower and went to the the uh, <laughs> what? Ben, ben is dying. Ben is dying. <laughs> uh, I went. I, I I leapt out of the shower and and I and I propped one ass cheek up on the counter <laughs> of my bathroom so that I could see in the mirror what was uh, going on in my backyard. Right? Oh, you didn't want to see it, did you? I see it. Uh, no. And it's swollen, just like I could feel. And there's this black, I mean, infinitely black, <laughs> oh. like like dark oh. matter hole oh. in the middle of this big swollen area on my ass, right? Oh, oh fuck. That's horrible. It was like, I, I think I said in the AMA, it was like the, uh, it was like the, 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 the eyeless, the the eyeless socket of some eldritch god that had been dreaming for a million years. It was like staring into the abyss. So I reach back there, obviously, instinctually, I reach back there and I just lightly, lightly pressed on the swollen no. area. No, no, and no. All hell broke loose. This black tar shit. <laughs> Started to started it just exploded out of me, went all over the sink, all over the fucking mirror. Oh, fuck. And it just kept coming. Like it like I stopped pushing. Instinctual instinctually I pulled my hand away and I was like, what the fuck? And it just kept it's just Damn. draining. This shit this shit smells like oh. dead. <laughs> like dead. Like if you if you're a country person and you've ever had like a possum or a cat die under your house, what came out of me was straight up death. Oh man! So needless to say, because oh, of the excruciating pain and the black tar coming out of my new ass, <laughs> I I ended up in the hospital. I went to the. I, I called. I called nine one one. I went. I went on on a on an ambulance to the fucking. Hospital. I thought I was dying. Did you? I thought I had that. some. I, I thought I had some kind of colon cancer that had eaten its way up and out Paul, my ass. Paul, you are clearly making Kyle cringe with your. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude, but it, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's you awful. You speak the truth, man. You gotta speak the truth. Just the truth. Did you get some Vicodin out of this at least? Well, oh yeah, dude. But that comes. Let me get there. So. I get I get to the hospital. They take a look at me. They send me to a specialist immediately, and it, I, I lucked out. The guy that did my surgery, I, I ended up having surgery for this. The guy that did my surgery told me he was one of the foremost uh, experts on pilonidal cystectomies in the world. Right, so I'm like, okay, cool. He had done like nine or nine hundred or a thousand of these. So basically, what they did to me, I, I was told that because I had this giant abscess right in my ass. <laughs> And that abscess had ruptured inside of me. Oh no! That I was in. I I I had to be rushed to immediate surgery because I was in danger of a like a galloping septic infection. Right. Oh my god! So they take me in. What they do is they took this big pocket right of shit, this abscess that had built up at the top of my ass. They cut it open. 
They open it up. They drain all the shit out. Then they then they burn everything inside of it to kill bacteria and all the dead flesh and shit. Oh wow. damn! And then they and then they staple everything back up and <laughs> and hope it heals from the outside uh, or from the inside out. Uh, I had seventeen staples in my ass. I couldn't work. I couldn't get out of. I couldn't get out of bed for two months. I, I shouldn't be laughing, but that's funny. no, it's it's awful. It was the worst fucking shit. They gave me the strongest opiate I've ever been prescribed for anything in my life. I was on the moon for fucking wow. two months. Uh, two months. And Good googly moogly. Yeah. And it was three fucking years before my ass looked anything like a normal wow. ass. Wow. How old were you? How old were you when this happened? I was twenty. Wow. 20. My dad said that uh, when he was younger, he had. Had to a, a, have a cyst move from the side of his head, and if they didn't remove it, like right when they removed it, he might have died because they were afraid it was going to fucking you know whatever explode internally, like into his fucking brain or some shit. That's not as yeah. funny as the ass tumor. <laughs> <laughs> the giant ruptured ass abscess. When I'm slapping to try and kill the ants, and then I take the time to slap my ass red before I <laughs> grab the the lollipop. Because that's totally like I do that, you know. Yeah. So what's today's story about? And now, um, by the way, know, we I, do we do want an intro for Paul's story time, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, do yeah, TJ's good. bidding. Um. So this story, uh, I, I I live in California, and all up and down the coast of California, there are these missions, these old Spanish missions, uh, from when the this you know Spanish Empire in North America was colonizing uh, the coast of California. So it's kind of a rite of passage as a kid from California to go visit one of these missions on a field trip, right? Um, So I'm on this field trip, and my dad, uh, for whatever reason, uh, volunteered to be a chaperone on this field trip, right? And this, and this, this is the story I always think of when I think of my dad, for whatever reason. And I don't know if it's as funny as the last story, but it's this is my dad in a nutshell. So we all go to this. uh, to this mission. I don't remember which mission it is here in California. And uh, there's this bathroom, right? And it's one of those pee troughs. Have you ever seen those in like a bar? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the bathroom at this mission is a pee trough, right? Fuck. And everybody everybody has to piss, right? Everybody has to piss. They get off the boat and the kids and chaperones and everybody just head straight to the bathroom because it was a long bus ride. So we get in there and my dad, you know, drops trowel and he's pissing and I'm pissing, you know, a few guys down from him. And there's just a bunch of everybody I know, all the dudes I know from school are lined up uh, at this piss trough taking a leak. And uh, all of the sudden, my dad cuts the, the, <laughs> the biggest, wettest, <laughs> hollowest echoing fart that I've ever heard in my entire life. It silenced the room. It just, it sounded like somebody, it sounded like the world's, like, fattest man blowing on a trombone filled with oatmeal. It was just wet and loud and like a Uh. trumpet blast. And everybody... Everybody in the fucking uh, in the fucking bathroom just stops and they're all staring at him. And my dad doesn't even really notice at first. He finishes pissing. He jumps up and down a couple times, you know, shakes, shakes, the, shakes the man meat a little bit, puts it in, puts it in his pants. And then he turns around and he says, uh, you know, boys, um, when you're firing a big gun like this, you're bound to get some backfire every once in a while. And he just left the room. <laughs> Um, that, that's my dad. That's my dad in a nutshell. Um, just the nastiest fucking, doesn't have any fucking social decorum when it comes to farts and, um, or, or dealing with like eight year old kids, you know? So yeah, there, there you go. That's yeah. my, that's my dad. It's a pretty epic story. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was, it, it's hard to overstate the, Can the, you- the juiciness of this fart. <laughs> You know, uh, this this kind of reminds me, if we're going to do fart stories, there was one time we were, me and Scotty and uh, Stevie Stevie was there too. We were in a hotel room in Las Vegas. Circus, circus. The yeah, fucking, we were, we're, we're the, the worst, worst hotel. The worst hotel on the strip anyway. 
or at least one of the worst. Yeah, one of the worst on the strip. And uh, we had like this great view of like this fucking granite wall, basically. And um, anyway, I was laying on bed uh, on the bed, which was a fucking like a, like a rock. I was like, this is yeah, one of the most like uncomfortable rock, beds you I'm can imagine. My, I'm laying on my stomach, and uh, I feel like this fart <laughs> brewing inside. I knew it was. I knew it was unnatural. <laughs> I knew this was not my normal fart because it, you know it felt like a candle. It, like it, it, I could tell it was gas, but it felt like the size of like a cantaloupe just like moving through my bowels. I could like feel it worming its way through, and I'm like, man, this could be a crazy fart. And uh, I was glad that Scott. I remember thinking, I'm like, man, I'm glad Scotty and Stevie are here, so they have to endure this. And I'm not going to warn them at all. And it came out, I'm not even going to try to bother doing a sound effect to go with it, but it sounded like a fucking demon coming out of the pits of hell. I I guess I will try to do it. It was something like... (laughs) Me and Stevie, like, literally jumped out of bed. We're like, what's going on? Like, they literally, like, jumped. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A portal to hell opened. Yeah, from TJ's bowels. And then it was, like, uh, the smell. Ugh. Just like, Uh. like someone slaughtered cattle in that room all day. And Scotty and Stevie both like died. Yeah, it was it was beyond terrible. They uh, it was it, they literally didn't and we even were stuck know it was in a fucking fart. room. With no, no, them. this is how fucking unnatural it sounded. They asked me afterwards, like, "What the fuck was that noise?" Yeah, and I was like, "I farted," and they're like, "What the fuck? That was a fart." I've never heard a fart like that ever, ever, ever in my fucking life. That's on anything fucking remotely like that. That did not sound like a fucking fart. It literally sounded like a demon was coming out of his asshole. So we were just like, no way. You are fucking, you're fucking punking us. You're fucking pranking us. What the fuck did really happen? He's like, I farted. And there was no other plausible explanation, so we had to believe it. One time uh, when, I was, when I was younger, this happened when I was about eight or nine, too. Um, my, uh, we used to go to the beach a lot, and, and we would camp down on the beach. And we were driving down, down uh, this beach called Pismo Beach uh, on the central coast of California and looking for a spot to park our Jeep. And my sister and I are in the back seat. Now, my sister is three years my junior, but she always picked on me as a kid. Like, it, the, the, the power balance was completely off. Like, I was the big brother. She was the little sister. But she picked on me constantly. So we're riding. We're bored in the back of this Jeep. And she kind of lifts her leg up and farts in my direction and wafts it. You know what I mean? And I was like, well, fuck that. So, I, so we're having a fart battle, basically, going back and forth. And my parents are up in front not noticing this fart battle escalating in the back seat behind them. And uh, I, I, I ran out of gas. And um, she let a pretty respectable fart and wafted it over to me, and it reeked. And I was like, fuck this shit. And so I bared down as hard as I could, and I shit my pants. <laughs> this soft, soft, malleable, liquid shit. <laughs> and uh and, and I'm like, so I, I, to make a long story short i formulated a plan i grabbed my shorts up at the top of my thighs to prevent any of the shit from running out of my bathing suit and as soon as we stopped i booked it for the ocean and uh r- rinsed all of the shit out of my ass in the ocean um but it was still a close call it was really gross and uh yeah that's why you don't have fart battles Dude, that's like I that's fucking have, intense dedication. I applaud you, Paul. I intense dedication. Story. Do it. Sorry. All right. May may I proceed? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Proceed, sir. Or, sir. Okay, so uh, this was told to me by uh, Vadim, and uh, in high school, he had his teacher named Mrs. Seely, and this this bitch, she just had it out for him. Okay. Did, did he have sex and with her? Uh, 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 yes, it was. It was a, a high. It, it was sex ed, actually. Oh, okay, so okay, sex, cool. But that's right. not really part of it. Um, so, so basically, um, there was one time where ink. This is not the, the story, but there was one time in class when Vadim farted really loudly, and this woman called, and and everybody laughed in class, <laughs> and she called him a pig. <laughs> so, uh, about like three years 
impersonator, he was walking on the stairs, and she was walking past him, and uh, she was about half a flight down, and she let out this humongous fart that just was <laughs> so loud, it just kind of echoed through the, you know, the, the, the hallways. And, and, and Vadim yelled out, Pain! <laughs> And it was so satisfying because in that moment that she farted, he he instantly knew that there was no way that she could report him because she would have to tell them that she farted. And if she just said that that, that, that he called him a pig, uh, I mean, that he called her a pig, he would have just said, well, you know, she let out this really big fart. So... He was basically able to get away with calling her a pig, uh, and, and that's that's it. That's the story. Sweet, that's, that's awesome. That is a good story. All right, we're gonna end on that note. Farting. Thank you, All guys. Right. Please, please give this video a thumb up. I told a, I literally told a story about how I shit my pants. Like, yeah, that takes for no other reason than that. Thumbs up for Paul shitting his pants. I, I applaud Paul. Make He's hardcore. Take a stand. Hardcore. You're going to beat Paul? Paul will shit his Get fucking pants. I, I will shit my pants so hard. <laughs> for I you. I love you all. I will see you next Friday. Bye, Paul. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Paul Bye. in the house. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone else. Goodbye. Eat shit and die. You know, I didn't even ask you, but I hope you're ready because someone took the time to make this. <clears throat> Story time with Paul. Uh, I like it. I me like too. it. Yeah, me too. I can it's dig beautiful. it. Um, I ha- I, you know, I have like... You know, Paul, I asked you a question in your... your uh, Little Reddit Q and A on the Drunken Peasant subreddit, and you never fucking answered me. Oh well, shit! Oh, I didn't. I, I didn't answer all of them. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm you terrible. piece of fucking garbage. Paul, can you move your cam like down? Uh, all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you go. Good. Perfect. Perfect. For a second, Paul did not have pants on. Like, whoa, 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 maybe hold up. Okay, I actually yeah. don't. I'm, I'm in my. I'm in my You're fucking perfect. boxer briefs. You're perfect right now. Boxer briefs. <laughs> all right. Boxer briefs are so. Comfortable. All right, Paul. They but the question. They just cradle the ball. The question I asked you, and I understand if you need a moment to think about it. What is Paul was ducking you, TJ? The fourth closest you've ever come to death. The fourth closest I've ever come to death. Yes. And is there a story there? Um. Yeah, I mean, there, there there is a story. I don't know if it's a great story. Uh, the fourth closest. Uh, let me let me make sure that it's the fourth closest. I've got. Well, you can go through them the if you want. Yeah, just go through the whole thing if you want. Yeah, yeah. So off the top of my head, the times that I was close to death were okay. The first. Let's just do chronologically. Like sure. So earliest in life at about uh, six, seven years old, I was in a major car accident in a shitty car. And my dad slammed into a fucking uh, tanker truck and uh, barely had the time to hit the brakes. My parents were almost both killed, and it's a miracle that I survived it. So that was the first one. The second one was when I was 16 or 17, and I got carjacked and dumped naked in a field, which is a story in and of itself. Did ants crawl up your ass by any chance? No, we, no, it was too cold <laughs> for ants. Oh, okay. It happened in November. Um, Burr. yeah, that's a story. That's a story. So maybe I'll tell that story. I don't know if the, if the, if the fourth one isn't great. The third would be another car accident. Um, I was in a car accident that occurred at, a, at an inter- intersection here in the little town I live in. It's a country intersection. People just barrel through there in the fog. And, uh, I was stopped there and a big fucking accident happened and I got swept up in it and I almost died there. Um, but the fourth closest I've ever come to dying, I, I genuinely think that I had a, 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 a cannabis panic attack once that almost killed me. Really? Yes. And, and so, it doesn't so ha- weed almost killed you. <coughs> it's called, well, pan. no, I think the panic attack that I had while I was, while I was on weed almost killed me. Okay. I don't blame the weed. I, I blame my mental state. Um, <laughs> but there, there was a period of time where, Every once in a while, this never happens to me anymore, but every once in a while, I went through this period of time where I was really nervous, and every once in a while, 
I would smoke weed and get really like agitated. Like I'd get really aware of my heartbeat. Have you ever done that, like, at all? Yes. yes. Yeah. All the fucking oh, for time. Sure. Yeah. For yeah, sure. But Not like, all the time for that. me, but it has happened. Yeah, yeah. But think about that, but, like, but like to a really uh, elevated extent. Um, and so I, I smoked I smoked some, uh, some weed before bed one night, and uh, I was probably, like, 23 or 24 years old. And uh, I just had the fucking, like, an eight-hour panic attack. Um, I thought my heart was going to stop. I got it. I, I, I thought I thought it was blacking out and I was just really fucking high. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the only thing that was wrong with me. But um, yeah, that's probably the. But I, I, I really felt like I was dying uh, much more so than the really uh, than, than some of the other events on the would list. You, would you say that this was a strain that was higher in sativa than indica? Probably. Yeah, uh, because I've always noticed that if I smoke like a high sativa strain, I get like a like a heart that will speed up a lot more, and then indica just makes me want to sleep. Yeah, yeah, no, I I it, I have to do like a hybrid between the two if I can get it, which thankfully I'm in Cali, so usually I can. Yeah. it's like <laughs> it's like it's like ordering different kinds of hamburgers in California. <laughs> yeah, we saw that in Amsterdam. There there was like a menu, and it had like percentages. Of you know sativa slash indica, I honestly just don't even give a shit. Well, somebody, it, somebody, somebody in the chat said that the weed that I smoked when I had that panic attack might have been laced, and that is true. May have been. Um, it may have been like at that point in time, it wasn't uh, medically legal in California to have marijuana. It was still a pretty, still a class A drug in California. TJ so, says. TJ says he doesn't give a shit, but when TJ was freaking out, we gave him Indica to calm him down. When yeah. he was having like his culture shock moment. TJ was a roller coaster. I know. Time. He really was. Yeah, like, I didn't give a shit. All right, we'll smoke. Because <laughs> we smoked White Widow, which was like all sativa when we first got there, and TJ got all paranoid. He was and weird. freaked out in public, too. He's yeah, like, yeah. And then, and then, Dutch like, people are so ugly. And then that was later culture on. Culture shock, man. Oh, well, well, you were high that as was, fuck, too. It, it was high as fuck. It's like Scotty and Ben. I gotta dude, tell you, you were, something. Dutch people are insanely ugly. It's like, <laughs> I think you're just really fucked up, dude. He's like, yeah. no, I'm not, man. I have clarity of mind. They're fucking. I don't know what it is. They're yeah. ugly. This. I. We're gonna get busted for this shit. I know we're gonna get busted. They're gonna come in any minute yeah. and arrest us. You thought we were it gonna was get not like that. No. Yeah, you, you were, dude. You were nervous in the in the fucking coffee. You shop. weren't like you weren't yelling that stuff. You were telling us like, man, dude. I know. I know we get in trouble for this. I know. I know something's wrong. Something bad's gonna happen. Even if it's not. But the then, cops. but then we bought like the the Jamaican weed that was a hundred percent indica. Yeah, I bought that. He's like, yeah, it's yeah, cool, yeah, man. I'm so like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I made him smoke my Jamaican weed blunt. Yeah, uh, blunts with the uh, uh, joints, and then he was fine. He's like, "Whoa, all right." Well, it, it's funny, dude, because you're like a litmus test for our weed. We're like, "Smoke this, TJ," and then we'd see how he'd react. He'd be like, "Yeah, I just smoked it." He'd be like, oh, "Okay, yeah." Well, uh, since since uh, the fourth t- closest you came to death wasn't much of a story, I guess you could just yeah. tell whichever one you want. Sure. Uh, well, I'll tell the carjacking story. Uh, a lot of people oh, probably God. haven't heard that one. I've told it on my on my <coughs> channel, but it was many years ago. I remember uh, it, but yeah, let's yeah. Here again. Uh, if you're okay with it, I'll tell it. <laughs> I'm uh, cool with it. Tell yeah, it. It's go ahead. One. Yeah. Uh, so I was about 16 um, or 17 years old. I don't remember which. And I was sitting. I had this little car. It was a Ford Tempo. It was a 1982 <laughs> Ford Tempo. Which is like, you know, that's the fucking pimp ride of all I time. I had one before, too. Oh, yeah. I had Dude, one, too. The tempo. P-I-M-P. We, yeah, didn't we well, talk about weird. that? Yeah, we all have tempo yeah. weird. tempos. Was man. that like the car when you were like a poor, like, teenager? I guess so. Yep. Yes. Basically. Dude, one time, Dude. I, I'm sorry to digress from your story, but no, that's one time fine, I was fine. I was in that car and I oh, went up God. to a Sonic. With all this trash, it's like a go kart basically. I had a, my, I had a 1991 Ford Tempo with the hood tied on with telephone <laughs> string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wire, rather, not string. And that thing um, was a beast, man. That car, I, it was a five speed. My car was a five. It was a stick shift, and I no. still to this day, I still to this day drive five speed only. Like I don't even, I don't, I don't care for fucking automatic transmission cars. Oh man, I love being in control of the fucking gears. Well, um, I just learned on one, but yeah, any, my first car. Anyway, I was in a 1991 Ford Tempo. It sounds like the Ford That's Tempo declined between 1982 and 1991, based on what Paul is saying. But anyway, um, I was there and I had trash all over my back seat 
and my hood was my hood was like fucked up and tied on with telephone wire and um I ordered a couple of foot long chili dogs and the waitress <laughs> who came out to give them to me was just like you know what just take them cuz I think she thought I was like homeless and living in this car <laughs> When, when was the last time you had bathed prior to this? I don't know. At that time, my, bath, my bathing early. habits were maybe once every two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. People literally like You look like TJ. you've been sleeping in a car. Like, P- TJ was hated. Like, would, would people have to see TJ like, oh, they would smell TJ first. He smelled Ugh. revolting. Ugh. <laughs> His room was basically just like a fucking, like, like you know, a dog that I had around to be, the ground. I had to be TJ's roommate for almost a month in, in Europe. And like, no thanks. Could you imagine someone that doesn't shower also wearing clothes I, that he's already worn like I four times? I lived with him for a, a, a really <laughs> long amount of time. So like, me. someone who hasn't showered in six days is wearing clothes that he's already worn like three or four times throughout that six days. That was disgusting. It, it started happened. to smell really bad. No, what? 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 It happened. Yeah, it does. He could have easily washed his clothes. He could have easily washed his clothes. Like we all I, washed I, our I clothes. I remember the time that the, the first time that. I ever. The first time I ever bonded with TJ, <laughs> like really bonded, like I liked TJ for a long time. I, I appreciated TJ's videos, but I, the, the first time I ever really felt a bond with TJ was at one point he uploaded a video, and I think it was to his TJ Does Life channel, maybe, where he talked about this time where he his ass was itching, and he was <laughs> in bed, and he didn't want to get up and wipe his ass, so he so he found a sock and wiped his ass with a sock. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't and, you uh, piss in jars too, TJ? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I would piss in like old discarded fast food cups. <laughs> I actually threw it at him one time, and I've totally been there. And uh, that was the first. Yeah. So you know, I understand, dude. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Paul. God, those piss cups are, were just, just you and I are, are soulmates, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, true. tell your fucked up story. I, I'm sorry okay. to derail it twelve no, times no, no, now. That's- that's perfectly fine. Uh, it, I, I, I welcome derailments when I'm telling stories, but that's just me. Um, so I'm sitting in this, in, this, in this Ford Tempo. I'm in a suburban neighborhood, not a great area of town. Um, and uh, it's, it's probably like 1030 at night. I'm listening to uh, my, my stereo. Um, I, I'd just gotten off the phone with my, with my girlfriend at the time, and I was pissed off. So I was listening to the angsty music of the 90s, you know what I mean? Like... Nine Inch Nails, the perfect drug on repeat, you know. You and, are uh, the perfect drug. Such yeah. a good song. Anyway, it is. Um, so I'm doing that, and these two guys walk by, and we lived in kind of this cul-de-sac. So they, they walk around the corner, and I see them as they're passing by my car, and I don't really think anything of it. They just walk by, and they go up and around the corner. And um, <coughs> so I, I don't think anything of it, and I'm fiddling with my radio or something, and I look back up, and the guys are coming uh, towards me with ski masks on. Now, at this point, I had a chance to, like, start the car maybe and gun it and get out of there. But I just froze. Like, I couldn't – like, it was, some, it, was, it was like something out of a movie. Like, this shit just doesn't actually happen, right? So these dudes walked right up to the side of my car, and st- the dude stuck a 9 millimeter through the, through the window. And he said, break yourself, motherfucker. Now, um, (laughs) luckily I had watched like, you know, nineties gangster movies like new Jack city and shit. Um, (laughs) and I knew what break yourself meant. So I went for my wallet. I grabbed my wallet. I passed my wallet out. He said, get out of the car. So he's holding the gun on me and, uh, I get out of the car and he says, give me the keys. Um, so I give him the keys to my car and, uh, his, he tosses the keys to his friend who grabs me and walks around to the back of my Ford Tempo. And he uses the key to pop the trunk. Now, I had a, uh, a big set of speakers. This becomes important later. I had a big set of speakers in the trunk of my car. Um, that was the one thing about that car that was slightly expensive was I had a pretty nice sound system in it. Two big subwoofers in the back of my, in my, uh, my car. So I, uh, he pops the trunk and he says, get, get your ass in the trunk. And I said, well, uh, do you want me to remove the speakers and get in the, I'm not going to fit in the trunk. And he looks, you know, kind of looks and sees that there's speakers back there. And he's fuck. So he says, all right, get in the back seat. So he, I get in the back seat of my car. Um, the, the dude sits down next to me, 
holds the gun against my head and they drive off into the night, right, with me. And so they start going through my shit. Um, I was a high school student, so I had a backpack. They asked me at one point uh, where the uh, where the weed was at, and I didn't have any weed at the time. I was smoking cigarettes, so they said they, they claimed they smelled weed when they walked by my car the first time. Um, and they basically, they, 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 they found my, uh, my driver's license and, and said, you live with your parents? I said, yes. They said, well, now we know where your mom's lives. You know, they just, they, they did the, they did the, uh, the, the whole threatening thing. And then at, at one point told me to put my head down and the guy rested the gun at the back of my head and, uh, they kept driving. Now they drove for a while like a good 45 minutes probably. And I could tell that we were in the middle of nowhere because they were heading south on 99 in California, which so is... Wait, hold the, on. What is, your, uh, what is your mental state at this time? I mean, like, you just... I'm are preparing, you, are you, like... Uh, are you thinking about, like, I'm about to die? Is yes. part of your mind saying, like, maybe I should attack the, the try to fucking escape or something? Or are you just, like, hoping they spare you? I mean, what is the, what is the thought process of Paul with a gun to the back of his head? I'm, I'm preparing myself to die. I have this because I I know that there's nothing in the in the direction that they're driving in. They're heading south on 99, uh, south on 99 from where I was was living at the time. There's nothing. It's farmland um, for for miles and miles and miles of endless miles. Right. (laughs) All the way to the to the coastal range. It's it's farmland. So um, I, I, I could see no other reason that they were taking me out in the middle of nowhere. So I was really trying in some way to prep myself for dying. Now, a lot of people ask, well, did you cry? Yes, I did eventually cry, but not during this going on. Well, while this is going on, I'm having all these thoughts about, like, I hope my family is safe. Like, one of the reasons why people ask me when they said, get in the car, why didn't you run at that point? And part of it was I didn't want them to chase me into my house and hurt my sister or my dad or my stepmom. Um, so there was a lot of that going on through my head. I hope that they're safe. I hope that, you know, if they, if they kill me, that my family is okay. Um, it just, it's just, it's just a weird place to be in. I, and I had a long time to sit there and contemplate my, the, the end of my existence. Um, eventually they, the, the car stopped and I was told to get out of the car and at this point, I thought, okay, they're going to shoot me uh, because I look up and I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. There's farmland to the right, empty farmland to the left. The only light that I can see at this point is the moon. Um, it's November. It's very cold outside. And uh, so I get out of the car and I'm standing there and the guy uh, with the gun walks around to my side of the car and he levels at, levels the gun at me standing a, you know, a few feet away. And he says, strip motherfucker. Now at this point, what went through my mind is I'm getting raped and then killed, <laughs> which, oh, is, God. which is fantastic. Um, what a way to go out. Uh, and I, I said everything. And he said, yeah, everything. So I proceed to strip off all of my clothes, my, my hat, my, my, my sh- pants, my underwear, my socks, my shoes, everything. He says, throw all your clothes in the back seat." So I do that. I'm standing there, you know, stark naked. And he says, you see that field over there? And he points to the field off to the right. He said, you're going to walk into that field and you're not going to look back. If you look back, I'm going to be here and I'm going to kill you. And I said, okay. And he said, start walking. So I started walking off into the field and uh, I kept walking. I didn't want to look back. Uh, I, eventually I heard car doors slam and then I heard my car peel out and leave it was still a while before I had the courage to look back. When I finally did, the car was gone. And it's at that point that I, that I collapsed and started crying. Um, <laughs> you know, it, because I had survived something that I was pretty sure I was dead. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it wasn't very long that I realized that I needed to get uh, somewhere because it was very cold. Um, and I was going to freeze to death. So... I, I started making for this little speck of, of light off in the distance, and uh, it ended up being a farmhouse. And I kind of grew up out in the country, and so I knew uh, at this point it was probably one thirty or 2 in the morning maybe. 
I knew what my parents would have done to like a, a, a 300 pound fat guy who showed up at two in the morning naked on their porch in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I didn't want to get shot by the person that I needed to call the cops. So I, I covered my, I, I, I dumped out a flower pot that they had decorating their garden and I, I covered my dick and balls with it. Um, and it barely fit over my monstrous <laughs> cock and, and testicles. Uh, but I managed to make it fit. It was like one of those little tree planters. Didn't didn't you say before that you know you have the kind of testicles that like dip in the water when you sit on the toilet? <laughs> I'm not that, I'm not that bad yet, but big balls do run in, in in the family. Uh, I, I have I have some I have some some uh, some respectable balls. They're pretty respectable size balls. Uh, but anyway, so I cover myself up. I knock on the door. Uh, eventually a woman comes to the door and, and it's one of those one way screens. So I can't see her, but she can see me and she yells, what the fuck do you want? And I said, look, ma'am, I was robbed. I don't want to hurt you or your family. Could you please just call the cops? I'll go sit at the end of your driveway. She said, I already called the cops, get off my porch. So I did. Um, and I went and sat at the end of the driveway. The cops came, um, they put an APB out on my car. And while I was en route back to the town I live in, in, in a sheriff's vehicle, um, they caught the guys. So, uh, they caught the guys because they went back to town after they dropped me in the middle of nowhere and were driving da- in downtown at two in the morning with their ski masks on and they passed a cop and the cops saw them wearing ski masks and cops, you know, being the, the horrible, um, the horrible, uh, profilers that they are <laughs> thought that two guys in ski masks in the middle of the night, uh, in downtown, <laughs> might be a little suspicious and they, and then hey, it was guys, a cold night. Come on. Yeah, I know it was a cold night. That Maybe is the true. hair didn't work. Come on. I mean, it wasn't exactly snowing, but it was a cold <laughs> night. Um, yeah, but, but they decided that they were going to go on a police chase, um, uh, uh with the cops and their, and their, uh, V8 crown Victoria's in, in my little, tempo. <laughs> in my little, my, my little five speed four banger Ford tempo. <laughs> it didn't work out well for them. Uh, they ended up driving not. off of an, uh, they ended up driving off of an overpass and one of them got mauled by, uh, a canine unit because he tried to run. So that's my, that's my carjacking story. Uh, to, to bring it full circle though, the, the, uh, the next day, the big newspaper and a couple of the news, uh, outlets in town called me wanting to interview me about this. And I didn't want my name to be named. Um, so they didn't say my name. But they, I told them the story basically like I just told everybody the story. <laughs> and uh, and they, they printed, and I quote, the, the man said that they tried to force me to get into the trunk of my car, but I just <laughs> wouldn't fit, period. <laughs> <laughs> man, man says. So even, even in the instance that I am carjacked, and dumped naked in a field. My friends get to fuck on me for being fat. That's the moral of the story. Um, so yeah, story time are, with Paul is over. Are both of these guys uh, in jail now, or what, where what what became of them? One of them is in jail. Um, uh, one of them, it, it was really a shocking kind of uh, crime. One of them was only fourteen years old, and uh, the, he was the one that actually drove my car. <laughs> the one with the gun was seventeen years old. Um, to my knowledge, the 14 year old has gotten out of, of prison. The, the 17 year old that, that used the, the gun that's, that used the only gun that I saw during, during the crime, um, he had a rap sheet, a really long rap sheet. And so he, and he, and he, uh, went up for a lot of serious charges, assault with a deadly weapon, kidnapping, carjacking is its own assessment in California. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's like it's like kidnapping. So they got kidnapping, carjacking, assault with a deadly weapon, attempted murder, um, uh, grand theft auto. He went up for he's he's still in prison, uh, wow. to my knowledge. So. <clears throat> Pretty funny story, Paul. Oh yeah, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry to sorry to leave everybody on Let such a sour you. note. Yeah, let me tell the knee slapper. I was almost killed and stripped naked. It was wonderful. <laughs> yes. 
All right, everybody. If you enjoyed the show, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the show, you can do so by going to audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants or Patreon. Let's check up on FanDuel. DP. Let's see if we got any new uh, FanDuel. FanDuels. Dueling fans. Our fans can duel against they each can other and us. For real money. And you can win. Dueling banjos. We're at 88 right now. 88. So. We need, uh, we got 150 slots. One day, can, 13 hours and 39 minutes. Every slot is $5, and you can buy three per uh, round. And you will have the biggest slot of them all. Oh, my God. Last time I came in first place out of the three of us. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, did, did I came in last place. Uh, did somebody say slots? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. It's like all the slots. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Okay. I'm going to redeem myself this week. No, you're yeah. shit, Scotty. Oh, fuck you, TJ. You're pure, undeleted Scotty, shit. Scotty will, uh, the, Scotty's one weakness is that he will not play against his beloved team, even like if it goes against... Nope. Like I real strategy, it. like right, like if the Steelers have the worst defense in the league and they're playing like the Patriots with the best offense in the league, hypothetically, yeah, you would not pick... Patriots to play the well, yeah, uh, the Saints. Not. Oh no, the Saints now. Oh, I said the Steelers. Sorry, yeah. I meant the Saints. No, pussy. I might pick individual <laughs> players. I wouldn't pick them to like win. But um, yeah. Uh, also, just a reminder to our patrons: um, the hangout and the private show are both tomorrow. Hangout happens around uh, three, and the private show is going to happen around five thirty, six o'clock. And uh, we will get drunk, and it's possible that Lucy will uh, be in the sky with diamonds. But I'm oh not my sure god, yet. we'll see. How will the show even happen? Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it might. There might be Scotty and Ben. It might be a Scott, Scotty and Ben. What, show what if, if, what I, if I want to be in the on. sky with diamonds? Well, then it's going to be a really fucking strange <laughs> show. I don't even know if it's going to be a Am show. Am I alive? <laughs> You might just be staring at us like <laughs> things on the screen. All right. Thanks for joining us, Paul. See you again next Friday. Bye, Paul. Thanks, guys. See you next Friday. Thanks we'll for having me, as Friday. always. I love you all. Good night. Right. You know. I don't really watch vloggers. You, you know? find vloggers to be boring. I would say that Paul is the only vlogger I don't find boring. And myself. I'll watch my own videos. Constantly. Paul, may I scrub your balls further, sir? But yes, I would say please. Paul two, is even... One coat of wax or two. I would say I enjoy Paul's videos even more than my own. And that's a, that's a high compliment coming from me. Well, I know, appreciate I'm, that. I'm that actually is a compliment. That, I am. That is a compliment. Someone once told me that my, my e- ego is like the Matrix and all other people just exist within it. And I like that, actually. I, fe- I took that as a compliment as well. I knew a dude uh, that was uh, – I went to a summer school when I was in high school. Um, I tried out and I got a scholarship to the summer school for the arts. Um, and it was basically just um, – the basically the place where theater kids went to start smoking and get be exposed to a lot of alcohol and a lot of pot. Wow. Um, that sounds like one of, a good time. One of the yeah, it was it was amazing. <laughs> I, I won't go too deep into it, but one of the dudes there, his name was Alex, I think. Um, mm-hmm. He was a Jewish guy and yeah. kind of a straight laced dude. But as time went on, as as the weeks went by, and he smoked more and more pot, he got weird and like he. He said to me one time, he said, uh, we were talking about religion, and I was like, you know, so you're a Jew. He said, yeah, you know, what are you? I said, I don't know, you know. I th- at that point, I wasn't calling myself an atheist. Uh, I, you know, I, said, I think I said something like agnostic, uh, not really knowing what that is. And he, he was like, oh, uh, well, I don't really want to tell you about what I believe uh, because you're going to think it's stupid. Everybody does. Everybody I've ever told. And I'm not, no, man, I'm interested. Like, tell me. He believed that he was the only, he was a solipsist. Oh, yeah. Basically. Um, which is the weirdest, I mean, you ever want to, you ever want to fucking have a mind fuck of a conversation, get high and talk with a solipsist. Yeah, I've had some, in, I've had some dealings with solipsists. They're great. For those of you out there who maybe don't know what a solipsist is, it's basically someone who thinks that the entire world is just in their head and they're the only real person. Yeah. He thinks that everything that exists in the world is made for his benefit and that I cease to exist when I'm out of his visual range. <laughs> That's what he told me. He said, literally, if I can't hear you, see you, smell you, or touch you, 
you don't exist. But you know what and was interesting? I became a solipsist the first time I took acid. Like, I literally did not believe that any anywhere I wasn't actually existed. So I think there's just, like, maybe some part of the brain that if it's not clicked on, you, you don't have the sense of reality being stable beyond your immediate perception. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. It's actually why I ended up taking Ben's acid. I actually forgot there was a Ben. Oh, whatever. <laughs> it's true. I really was. I, it never even occurred. I knew, listen, that, listen, listen. I knew that the minute he, he said, oh, yeah, I did take Ben's ass. And I was like, yeah, because you were so fucking, like, you know, high off your ass that you were just, you didn't give a shit about anything else. It's like, this is a trip. I, didn't, I honest, on it. Like, we honestly had a conversation about how upstairs didn't even exist because we weren't there. So. <laughs> It's, it's know, uh, yeah, psychedelics, it's easy to, uh, it's easy to extrapolate things like that when, uh, when you're high out of your fucking mind. It doesn't even feel like a high, though. Yeah, it, <laughs> I mean, it is, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. It feels it's like not waves, like. Yeah. Yeah. My, <laughs> just the other day when I was on some Lucy, I was, like, watching my ceiling just get higher and higher and, like, the room get larger and larger. And then it would get really small and then it would get really large again. It was very the last time, stuff. The last time I took a decent dose of mushrooms, I was sitting in my living room with my friend Brian and we were watching, uh, funnily enough, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Warriors. Oh, my God. I love that one. We're kicked back and we're watching the Dream Warriors, and it's dark in the house. And my TV is kind of high up; it's above above the mantle of my little fireplace. Yeah. And it was dark in the room, and the light from the TV was hitting that popcorn ceiling that everybody has in their house. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it made this bulge, like it was a it was an optical illusion. But I was so fixated on this bulge in the ceiling, and and as I got higher and higher, it would it would start. Like breathing, yeah, yeah. Like it should breathe. Like it's nothing would. Crazy. I've never had visuals that are like scary. Like like they just move real fast. Everything I yeah. see is very subtle, like very subtly tweaked, you know, and very yeah. specific. Same here. I would say that um, that has been my case on the last couple of trips I took. But on another trip I took, like everything was very like hyperkinetic and crazy, and mm. I much prefer that honestly. But. You know, either either way is fine. I do tend to find that um, on, like, acid specifically, I have, like, a p- profound sense of dissatisfaction with things, though. Like, yeah. nothing's good enough. If I'm tripping, I'm not tripping hard enough, you know? Well, and, they tell, and they say never take a psychedelic. Like, always clean your house before you take a psychedelic. And I found that to be true. Because yeah. I get so fucking yeah, fixated. Like, if my, if my yeah, kitchen I, is I a started, little dirty... Yeah, I, like, I, it's funny you mention that because I was I just cleaned the kitchen the other day on shrooms because I was like I can't stand how dirty this is. Yeah, that is not me. Yeah, that is not TJ at that's all. That's not yeah. my normal personality. Uh, but um, let's let's get it, speaking of uh, going on a trip. Let's take a let's take a trip into Brett Keenland. Paul, do you have a story? Oh, hold on. Well, I want to know if he has one first. I do. I mean, I have I have a ton of stories, man. All right, we're gonna play the story time with Paul intro then. <laughs> story time with Paul. It's so classy. It is. I love it, dude. It's Everything a, it's about a classy it, drawing. Man. Everything about story it. Story time with the, Paul. The Paul in its natural environment. Paul is going to tell us a story. There's no Cheetos or burritos though, so uh. yeah. <laughs> It's kind of not accurate, but it's, yeah. it's more classy that way, though, you know. So um, it's kind of weird. I, 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 my dad uh, came into town recently, and he may or may not watch this video. So if he does, hi, Dad. Uh, my dad and I have had kind of an estranged relationship for a while. Um, and it has, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things I don't really want to get into in public. It's just a, it's a, it's a fractured relationship, and... And uh, it has been. Tell, for tell, some tell time. us more of the of the details of your relationship. Get into uh, it. Get, <laughs> and how does that okay. make you feel? So, how, how does it make you feel, Paul? You yes, have the penis yes. envy. Yes, you have the Oedipus complex. You want to have sex with your mother. <laughs> um, no, it. It's just weird. I, I don't know. When my parents got divorced, uh, my dad kind of went out of his mind. Uh, for a while, mm-hmm. and and with due reason, he was put through a lot of shit during the divorce, and yeah. 
but he didn't really know what to do with me as a young man. Um, and so he kind of went the route of being my friend. Yeah. Which a lot of people go, oh, man, that's fucking awesome. Because, yeah, my dad would talk to me about sex and, and uh, dirty jokes. And, you that know, was our dad, too, for sure. Yeah. I, I was like a bar buddy with him. You know what I mean? More like a bar buddy than a son. That's exactly the relationship we had with our father. So we understand. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, so you understand where I'm coming from then. In retrospect, like at the time, there were even times when I was like, man, my dad's fucking great. Like. He, uh, everybody else's dad is like, keep it down. But my dad's like, oh, let me tell you a pussy joke. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it, there were times in my, in my young adult life where I was like, yo, you know, this is cool. But in retrospect, I probably would have rather had a dad. You know what I mean? And I don't fault my dad for this. He just didn't know how to do it. <coughs> um, but anyway, we were, um, we were talking today, actually. We went out to lunch together. He's in town today, and he's leaving today. So uh, we went to lunch together, and we we got to talking about old stories and stuff. And uh, there's this one story that I've always liked because it's it's got a lot of characters in it, but it, I've never I've never told it. So I got I got in real trouble one time because I fucked up my dad's trumpet. Now you have to understand about my dad is he grew up in poverty. And when I say poverty, I mean like barefoot poverty. Like they couldn't afford to buy him shoes. And on top of crushing poverty, his father was an abusive drunk, and um, it's it just a fucked up life. A fucked up life for a young person to, to be raised in. And the one thing of worth that my dad had was this trumpet that he uh, saved up money doing odd jobs all over town wherever he could while he was in high school. And he bought this trumpet, and it's a really nice trumpet. He still has it to this day. And one day, and he loved this trumpet. My dad's a pretty decent, you know, kind of jazz trumpet player. And uh, I, one day when I was a little kid, uh, wanted to take it to school for show and tell. Because I loved it. You know, he worshipped this trumpet and I worshipped him. You know what I mean? So this was an object, a fetish object that was very important to him. Because he had worked and, and, and bled and sweated for this trumpet. And, I, of course, I wanted to show everybody because, of course, you know, as a kid, you want to show everybody everything amazing. So he, he says, you can take it to school, but you have to be very careful with it. And I said, okay, Dad, I'll be very, very careful. I promise, I promise. He showed me how to, you know, put it in the case and this, that, and the other thing. Anyway, I take it to school, and on the way home from school, uh, this kid wants to see it. And this kid happened to be my next-door neighbor on the way home on the bus. His name was Sean Johnson. I can use his full name because, you know, there's a billion Sean Johnson. So, um, <laughs> but Sean Johnson, and he came up to me and he had a, he had a speech impediment and he said, uh, Hey, P-Way, he used to call me P-Way. My PJ was my nickname growing up. Hey, P-Way, let me see your trumpet. And I was like, nah, man. Uh, I fun. Yeah. He had, he had the, like the Cindy Brady thing. You know, I'm not making fun of people that have that. I know it sucks, but that's how he sounded. Hey, P-Way. Let me see you twump it. And I was like, I don't want to, no, I don't want to bring it out on the bus, man. It's going to get damaged. He's like, let me see it, man. And I was like, fine, 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 fuck. So I opened it up and he grabs it. He reaches in and grabs it. And he's like, huh? And he's turning it over in his hands. I'm like, man, give me that fucking trumpet back. And so he's like, okay, okay, okay. Gives me the trumpet back. And I put the trumpet in, but I put it in wrong. I put it in upside down. And I went to close the lid and I kind of slammed the lid because I was pissed at Sean Johnson. And it dented my dad's trumpet, right? Now, this is not like something that's unfixable. You can have your trumpet repaired and shit. But as a kid, that's the scariest shit that's ever happened to you. Am I right? Like you damaged <laughs> something that your father is like in treasures. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. So I was scared out of my fucking mind. So I concocted the world's filthiest lie. I, I decided <laughs> to take a little bit of truth and throw in a dash of, of good old Paul's ego fiction. And... Uh, I, I made up this story that Sean Johnson had had stolen the trumpet and dropped it. <laughs> Wasn't what happened. He was fine with the trumpet. He didn't do any damage to it at all. I was the one that had damaged the trumpet. So I go <laughs> home and I'm like, well, I'm going to play this angle first. Maybe my dad won't even notice the dent. Maybe I'm just looking at it and I, I see it because I know it's there. He hardly ever brings the And at this point, it was true. He, he, he didn't bring the trumpet out very often. He had another... He had a flugelhorn that he played most of the time when he played. He didn't like playing with this trumpet because uh, it was, you know, special to him. Anyway, so he, 
So I was like, maybe he won't even notice. He noticed immediately. He immediately of, of opened course, yeah. the case, uh, examined the trumpet, saw the dent, and uh, pulled me aside and said, well, and my dad uh, was never a yeller. He was not a screamer. My dad was a very simmering, quiet anger type of guy most of the time. I have heard him scream and yell, but it was very rare. So he leaned into me and he said, uh, son, what happened to my trumpet? You want to tell me what happened to my trumpet? And I just burst into tears and I was like, it was fucking Sean Johnson. <laughs> I was on the bus and he wanted to see the trumpet. And I told him no, and he made me open it, and he stole it, and he dropped it. I'm so sorry. And he's, he said, son, are you telling me the truth? I said, yeah, dad, I'm so sorry. I was trying to be good with him. He's so stupid fucking Sean Johnson. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, <laughs> I, he, he goes, okay. You're coming with me. And he walks across the street to the Johnson's house. This is my worst fucking nightmare. <laughs> the Johnsons, as it turns out, were wholly unreasonable people. They were the types of neighbors that everybody thinks of when they think of the bad neighbors. They were just like, they'd call the cops on you for no reason. Um, just slimy. Like, they, they always, there was a gossip center. You know what mm, yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, so they always were talking shit about everybody else, and you knew for a fact that they were talking shit about you when you were home and everybody else was at their house. It was just, They were just not good people. My dad walks across the street with my hand, and he knocks on the door, and Sean Johnson answers the door. And my dad says, son, uh, can you get your mom or dad for me, please? And Sean goes, okay, not knowing anything, not knowing that he's done anything wrong, because in this instance, he hadn't, really. Um <laughs> Uh, he goes and runs and gets his mom. His mom comes to the door, and my dad calmly explains to her, y your son uh, damaged something that's very important to me today on the bus. PJ, go ahead and tell the story. And Sean is standing there looking at me. And I'm like, oh, Sean was on the bus, and he <laughs> grabbed the trumpet, and he dropped it, and it based in. And Sean was like, no, -uh, no way, P-Way. I, I didn't drop the trumpet. I didn't drop the trumpet, Mom. And, and, and so his mom gets down on her, you know, on one knee, and she goes, Shawnee, did you drop that trumpet? I swear, I, Mom, I didn't drop the trumpet. I held the trumpet, but I didn't drop the trumpet. I swear. She goes, Shawnee, you're lying to me. And she grabs his arm, <laughs> lifts it up, and starts whooping his fucking ass right in front of me. And I'm sitting there. Oh, like, man. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <sighs> At this point, as if shit couldn't get any worse, Sean's dad literally comes riding down the street on a horse. Oh, my God. <laughs> I used to live out in the country, and people had horses and would ride them around the neighborhood and in the fields and shit that were around there. So here comes Shawnee's dad on a horse. And Shawnee's dad is the stereotypical right-wing Republican shit-kicking Wild Bill for America, you know, just neocon racist piece of human garbage, he, he drunk all the fucking time, violent. He comes riding up, gets off his fucking horse, and strolls over to my dad like he's John fucking Wayne and goes, <laughs> the fuck's going on here? My dad said, well, um, your son, Sean, uh, dropped uh, my trumpet today on the bus. And it's not, you know, it's literally, it's not that big a deal. We can repair it, but I just, I wanted to see if you guys would chip in on the repair. And his Sean's dad does kind of the same thing that his mom had done. He goes, Shawnee, did you, uh, did you drop this man's uh, trumpet or whatever the fuck? And Sean said, no, Dad, I didn't. Of course he hadn't. And, uh, and uh, Dad turns around and says, fuck you. Get off my property. My son didn't drop shit. My dad nods his head and turns around and kind of leans down to me and whispers. He says, son, I'm about to get in a fist fight. And I need, I need, I just need to know <laughs> that you are not making this up as a lie. That, that he actually dropped this trumpet. Because if he dropped the trumpet, then, and they're not going to pay for it, then I'm going to, I'm going to kick his dad's ass. But if it's a lie, I need to know now. <clears throat> and I, of course, um, said, 
okay, it was me. I just closed the thing on it. And he goes, okay. And he walks over to Larry. Larry Johnson was this guy's name. Walks over to him and says, I'm sorry, sir. Won't happen again. Shakes his hand. Walks over to uh, Sean and apologizes to Sean. Walks over to, to his mom and shakes her hand. Grabs me by the hand and walks me back to the house. And he beat my ass. We got to the house. <laughs> And he beat my ass harder than I've ever had my ass beat in my entire life. And that's the story. Okay. So you should have doubled down on the lie because then he would have been the one with his ass beat. Such a happy exactly. ending. Right? You know, you can't, you can't bail on a lie. Half after, measure. Yeah, you, you half can't bail lie. on a lie when the, fucking, when the pressure's on like that, you he know? He was so convincing when he was like, I'm not going to be angry. You're not going to get in trouble. Oh, you fell I, for that, oh, that oh, okay. one. Yeah, yeah. I promise I, just, I won't be mad. Just tell me the truth. Okay, yeah. mom, I did it. What the? Yep. And then out came the fucking belt, and he beat my ass for that. And I, I probably deserved it, because he had to humble himself before some really fucking oh, shitty yeah. people. So Yeah, man. Yeah, that's true. I definitely had an ass beating coming, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're a piece of shit, Paul. You're a real piece of shit. Real piece of shit. That should help my credibility with the crowd of people that think my stories are all made up, too, right? Yeah, no because... You're uh, phony! <laughs> who even cares? I You're a even big, care. fat phony... I don't care. I the actually, mythology I'm of Paul. I'm, I will, I've, I've, like, made up stories on YouTube and then told them at the end, like, that whole story was fake. Yeah. Fuck you. I don't do that. You know, I, 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 I stand behind my stories. My stories all happened, you know, with varying degrees of hot sauce added in the right places, sure. I embellish a little bit here. I, I, I make a word choice there. But uh, everything, I, everything I tell, it, it happens. It it's legit. It's, it's too legit to quit. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you very much. And audience, thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big, fat fucking thumbs up. We are the Drunken Peasants Podcast. If you're not subscribed, the greatest sure podcast subscribe. in the universe. And uh, if you're not checking us out on SoundCloud or iTunes or any of those places, you can check us out there as well. Yes. We hope you enjoyed this special pre recorded edition of the Drunken good, Peasants Podcast. Good night, everybody. Thank as you, always, it was awesome. I will see you guys next week. Thank you, Scotty. You Thank you, week. TJ. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Good Thank night. You, Paul. Good night, Thank Paul. Thank you. Good night. Good evening, drunken peasants. Hello, chat. How's it going? How's it going? Tonight? <coughs> good Everything's good going evening. Great. I'm actually doing I'm much better than I was. I mean, I, it's kind of a blessing that the Friday show crapped out for whatever reason, because I'm feeling much Casuals. better. No, because you know what? I was honestly because I know that you are a depressed piece of shit. I was honestly waiting and hoping to get the depressed Paul show, you know? <laughs> well, you're going to have to get it some other time. Then, I know, and now you seem like you're all upbeat again. Your well, I'm feeling failed, better. TJ. I'm not 100% upbeat. I'm still a little downtrodden. I injured myself. I've been on really heavy pain medication. Like on Friday, I was doped the fuck up. Sweet. I was on I was on Percocet, <laughs> yeah, uh, all day Friday. I mean, uh, uh, cool. So today I haven't taken a Percocet it, it yet. That on, as you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if there's a break, you know, Percocet yet. You know, I I have to, uh, you know, like when I get the depression episodes, I just have to mask it and still just like, yeah, I'm the amazing fucking atheist and everything's fine. Really? That's yeah. what you do when you're depressed? You tell yourself that you're the amazing atheist? I'm no. the amazing I mean, atheist. When, I'm, when I get on camera, I still have to do that. You know, I don't just get on and be like, I'm I'm, I'm just going to mope. You've definitely shit. done videos that are like, you can tell it's like TJ's like, well, fuck you know, everything. sometimes the morale is just shit, leaves no. through, you know. Yeah. You're but like, I'm, I'm, you I'm, email the Bitch. I'm apt to write a depressing video if I'm depressed, you know. I can do that. TJ. Yeah, I can I can I can do that too, TJ, but the the introduction of of drugs makes it harder and harder for me to do that. Oh yeah. And then the cynical side of me just comes out immediately and it won't go <laughs> away. So I'm still kinda in the midst of that. So who knows? Who knows how the show that, that will actually turn does out. sound a lot like TJ. Paul's gonna get pissed. He's gonna flip a table. <laughs> We'll so, see. so since the last attempt at uh, Drunken Peasants 165, this is take five. I know. Really? I, maybe we should talk about the story that 
you know, the, the, the altercation. I don't even have any desire to tell no? it anymore. I've, okay. I've tried no. to tell it twice. You know what? Like, yeah, I, I actually feel the same way about it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe down the line, you know. Yeah, w- w- when it becomes funny, we'll, then we'll talk about it. Sure. It's not quite there yet, so. By the way, uh, after this show ends, immediately after, we're going to have the world premiere of the Drunken Peasants play Cards Against Humanity. And we suck. Where we get our asses handed we are to terrible. us. terrible. All three of us collectively get our ass handed to us in a, in a game of Cards Against Humanity. Maybe us having to decide our cards by committee, you know, gives us I would a, think that would give us more brain you know? power. We should, have, we should have easily won. No, because, you know, I don't know. You're right. Probably. Come on. I mean, we had three fucking human brains, and we were just, we were shit. You know, we, we were outplayed. We were outsmarted, you know, so there's no other way of putting and it. And for those of you who are watching this uh, after it's live, there will be a link. You're probably seeing it, and it's probably annoying you. But there it is. You can click on it and go to the video and let us know if you like it. We had a hangout full of people. JF was there. Shirt guy. They actually wow. had, a, they had sex on camera, so that, that's, like, <laughs> that's the highlight of the show, so... Yeah. We all kind of just like, okay, this is happening. We, we, we kept playing, though. We were, were champs. Yeah, we got destroyed. Yeah, we played until uh, the so, better so, end, and it was some better. Of the people, uh, some of the people in the chat are saying, Paul, it looks like Paul joined the Islamic State. Like, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got Damn. looks. I, I went to, um, I went to the, uh, the barber. Because I, I'm living right now, for the first time in my life, I can do whatever the fuck I want with my hair. Like, I've always had to keep my hair a certain way, my beard trimmed, because I had a job that, you know, now I, like, I'm literally, I'm back in school, that's all I'm doing, so I can do whatever I want. So I walked in and just told him, I was like, how short can you cut my hair, you know? And uh, the lady there was like, well, I can do a zero. I was like, let's fucking do it. And she just, like, shaved me. I, it, it reminded me the opening scene of, of uh, Full Metal Jacket where they're shaving all the grunts. You know what I mean? Oh, Kiss yeah. me goodbye and write me. <laughs> you know what I mean? There, she just, sh- you know, shaved my head. And since that day, I haven't had to fuck with any hair above here. You know what I mean? Like, and it's great. So fuck you guys. I agree because I shaved my head once, too. It was a lot it's easier nice, to deal right? with. It's nice, right? Dude, it's, it, it's way better. It's way easier. But now I got this long hair again. Yeah, now someone can just fucking tug on your hair, TJ. See, you're fucking, you're defenseless, dude. Yeah, tug on it. Fuck yeah. You should shave, yeah, shave that head. <laughs> shave that head, TJ. Dude, Liberate you yourself from it. society's standards, man. Yeah, TJ, reject it, dude. Shave society that tells head. you how to think, TJ. We, so just listen to us instead. We, we have a new setup. <laughs> I want to be a nonconformist too, guys. We have a new setup in here now, and it's just way better. It's so much more comfortable. Nice. It's, it's unbelievable. Nice, dude. It's very sexually attractive. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. We all have chairs now. Yeah. It's revolutionary. Man, you're fucking so baked, TJ. You're fucking... I, I have, we have chairs Why now. Why do you feel the need to comment <laughs> on how baked I am all the because time? Because it's fucking funny as shit. It's fucking Everyone funny as shit. Everyone can see that I'm fucking baked. Why you gotta be like... It's like, it's rile you up, TJ. So I can rile you up. Fuck during so like rile you up. Fuck during the hang. Like I can rile you up, Shut dude. dick in hell, you goddamn people. I can rile TJ up shit. like no one else. Scotty's uh, like the reverse worm tongue because he, he, you know, instead of always seducing you with sweet lies, he's always like fucking with you with bitter truth. Bam! I told you your blood work would come out bad. <laughs> Bam, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew it, dude. I fucking knew it. It's kind of it's it's it, watching you guys, you know, over the over the last year or so here on the Drunken Peasants has made me a little glad in some ways that I don't have a brother. That I never got to experience the utter torment that having a brother <laughs> must be at some points. Just imagine yeah. another you that hates you. That hates I know, you. I know, that's exactly you it. You pretty much right? have it there. Time to move on. Yeah. Gather around ye old herb. Uh, I understand today's story time with Paul has some musical accompaniment. It, it, it does. does. Are you going to cue us as to when to happen or... I'm going to explain all of that, yes. But um, if, if I could have like one minute, I have to. I'm sorry, I'm on medication right now that makes me pee like every half hour, like a racehorse, and I'm drinking. Can I go pee real quick 
and yes. do it yeah. and, and be right back. Um, maybe we could take like a one minute break and then story time with Paul is on. How's that? That's all right. I'll tell all them right. a story about you while you're gone. Sounds great. All right. I'll be right back, guys. Yeah, it's fine. So uh, one time Paul was over and we were watching the Scooby-Doo movie, you know, and uh, we were we kind of got to bitching about it about how like terrible it is, how it doesn't really represent the feel of the show in any way. And, uh, you know, one thing just led to another. And Paul basically, you know, he, he said, TJ, I heard your penis is pretty small. And I said, well, I mean, it's not that small once it gets hard. And he's like, well, show me. And I whipped it out and then he whipped his out. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another. And, you know, we just had... Uh, Gay butt sex right there watching Scooby-Doo. And we saw Scrappy transform into that giant monster and shit. And that was when Paul came. <laughs> I think that he had a thing for uh, Scrappy, honestly. I think you that back to me. He, was, he was fucking me, but I'm really thinking okay. he was thinking of Scrappy. So it's like the same boom. thing with you and, and like Godzuki. I understand and, you know, But it was like, you know, he even, I, yeah. I think I heard him say you Scrappy under his breath right while, he, while he came, you know. Um, and then afterwards, you know, I, I kind of pushed it out of my head. Like, no, Paul isn't in a fucking scrappy do like that. But Oral then sex uh, I went to get a closet to, you know, wipe. I went to the closet to get a towel to wipe my ass off because we were at Paul's place. And I saw that his closet was basically like a shrine to scrappy do, you know, <laughs> And and a lot of do these, you think Paul engineered the events? You know, looking back on it now, now that I tell the story out loud for the first time and I come clean, I feel like Paul probably did know. So he Paul, did, he was probably engineering. He was probably going. So Paul created the circumstances. You know, I mean, because I didn't want to watch the Scooby Doo movie. In fact, I, I already seen it. I knew it was a piece of shit. But he's like, you know, I haven't seen it. Let's just give it a chance. I thought it was weird that he had this old VHS copy and it was so worn out and shit, you know, because he said he hadn't seen it. But he's like, well, I got it at, you know, Goodwill. But now, you know, after I saw the scrappy do shrine in his closet, I figure, you know, he's lying. So I was just basically his little scrappy do that night. And so, I, I don't know how many other guys he's pulled. That so, on, like, you but, know, you feel taken advantage of. Because, oh, yeah. It's, it's really sickening. And, uh, you know, he's a rapist, but uh, he's so talented that we have him on the show anyway. Uh, nice. Tale, TJ. So you revealed my uh, you revealed <laughs> my my secret to everybody. I hear. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were still gone, Paul. I thought you were still gone. <laughs> so this this uh, this story time with Paul comes with a caveat that in itself is kind of a story. Okay. Um, I hurt myself recently. I, I, I injured my ribs. This is why I was so fucked up on Friday show when it fell through. I injured my ribs. I went to the emergency room and and because uh, I thought I was dying because it felt like I was being stabbed um, over and over again uh, every time I moved. And so they gave me some meds and blah. What I found out is I just really like tore a muscle in my side in between my ribs, and it takes a while for that to heal. So I've been like super medicated, uh, and I I've been, I was talking to my friend Miles last night, and we were smoking some pan and reminiscing about the good old days. And I remembered that I used to be in this band when I was in high school. When I was about 14 or 15, I was in a band, and the band, and I, and I say band with air quotes because it was literally just a guitar and, and three guys singing songs, right? But um, <laughs> we used to sit around and smoke pot and drink and write songs and record them on this shitty little one-track tape recorder. And my friend, Morgan, who is one of the three guys, uh, along with me and Rodney, uh, who made these these songs, recently uploaded them to SoundCloud. Now, there was one song in particular that I wanted you guys to listen to tonight on The Drunken Peasants. Um, because it's it's about a sensitive subject for TJ, I think. And I can, I can, I can criticize it now because I'm not 14 anymore. Uh, but I did not have the most nuanced view of Marilyn Manson in 1995. Boo. Okay. I know, I know. Uh, Paul, there was a boo, Paul. boo. How <laughs> dare I? I like Manson now. I dig Manson, but back in the day, I was not the biggest Manson fan, and that's what you're going to hear tonight. If uh, without further ado, uh, Ben, if you could take it away, this is a song that I wrote and improvised live while high off my ass at 14 years old. It is called Marilyn Manson, blah one two three. And it's by Apple Nasty. 
Yes, that was the name of the band. Apple, Apple Nest. Nest. All right, the world premiere. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Manson stole that shit from you. (laughs) Manson stole that shit. I'm sorry, but like when you like blah blah, like he fucking used that in a song later. So I think he, I think he heard this and stole. Shut the fuck up, TJ, and listen to the song. All right, but (laughs) I'm just saying, it's kind of weird. Uh, Marilyn Manson, blowing to three, and blowing to three, and blowing to three. I said blah, 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 one, two, three. Three. <coughs> we think we're vampires, but, but we're, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we're just a bunch of faggots and wear a lot of makeup. makeup. Masturbating with turtles. Masturbating with turtles. I think I'm gonna shit on the audience again. Think I'm gonna shit on the audience again. Yes. Think I'm gonna shit on the audience again. Wow. Ten year old beaters, and I like it a lot. Whip it out and stroke it and suck it One, down. Two, three. <laughs> yeah. Suck it down. If you're ten Whip years it out, old, stroke it. If you are ten years old, <laughs> like your mama or something. Think we're the vampires, but we're not. We're not. We're the vampires, makeup. We wear a bunch of makeup and smell like bone what? rot. Cause we're the faggots. Okay. I said we. I said something about oh, smelling like. I'm a faggot. Yeah. <laughs> I said blah, blah, one, two, three. Uh, Maryland man said blah, one, two, three. Uh, <coughs> Dude, wasn't that guy on like Mr. Belvedere? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. <Okay>. Belvedere. <laughs> so it was you pretty know, good. That... <laughs> I liked it. Top the charts, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, Ben, since yes. I since I I'm I'm convalescing and I don't feel like telling a story, and since that one seemed to have gone over somewhat well, if I send you another link, would you play a second song of similar length? Sure. Of Apple Nasty to to maybe play us out for the night, unless you guys have something else you need to do. Nope, we're good. We have nothing All else right. but, except to remind people that as soon as the show ends, we're going to post a video of our recent Google Hangout. <laughs> and we play Cards Against Humanity, and we get our asses handed to us by fans of the show. So there, there are two songs that I'm thinking about right now. And hold on, sorry, I'm just finding them. Uh, uh, and I'll let you guys choose. I will let you guys choose which one you want to hear. Both of them were kind of anthems in my shitty little small town. We used to play these at parties all the time, and people would sing along. So uh, one of them is called I Like Em Beer Cans, and it's about having sex with empty beer cans. Okay? Okay. All right. And the, and the other one is called Black Leather Limp Dildo. And it Black is a Black Leather Limp Dildo. Okay, Black Leather Limp Dildo it is. Let me get the link for you. What does that mean? To play us out. <laughs> What does that mean? What does that mean that to play us out? To play us out. What does that mean? What does that mean <laughs> to play us out? The link is in the description. This is me, my friend Morgan, and my friend Rodney in 1995. This is Apple Nasty's Magnum 1995. Opus. 1995. Coming at you. 1995 Apple Nasty's Magnum Opus Black Leather Limp Dildo. And thank you all for having me, and I will see you at the end of the week if we don't talk after this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All this right. one's for all of you out there who like it limp. Now there's some people who call me a gimp. <laughs> and there's a couple of girls, yeah, well, they call me the pimp. But I know a few that like their black dildos. Leather. Lamp. Leather. 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 
Southern desert cocks. <laughs> Jiggly leather lip black dildos, baby. Good love. <laughs> Ready to pounce. Live placid cocks. Now I walked in on someone's mom yesterday. Hey, hey. <laughs> I heard a big band start to play. Big band start to play. With the strap on tampon. I thought she was doing something kind of <laughs> gay. It's very like so sex twister. It is. A yeah. cow's ass? No. It was a dildo. A cow's ass? Not your ordinary dildo. No. <laughs> no, it was black. It was limp. It was leather. It was. Everybody what? sing it. Ready? Black, black leather, leather lip dildo. dildo. Yeah. Black, black leather, leather lip dildo. dildo. Leather lip dildo. dildo. Don't forget they're black. It's black. Along <laughs> by the ounce. <coughs> Lick Boy. my nuts. They're good to suck. I yeah. Like my kids tonight and pretend I am Jack Ellsborn. <laughs> oh yeah. I like to pretend I'm on the Enterprise and <laughs> ram leather limp dildos up my waiting cornhole and pull up carrots. Sometimes yeah. the occasional radish. Oh yeah, radish. radishes, baby. I like watermelon. We're talking it's about them space over, radishes, but not quite. You'd be surprised the kind of things you find when you invade your inner space with a dildo, <laughs> especially if it's black and limp and made of leather. Lucky dildo. <laughs> kind of flaccid, kind of jiggly. Ah, uh, footlog by the ounce. Makes me do the piggly wiggly. <laughs> Makes me want to stroke like grandma's pet cock. Yeah. What Rodney just said. In a different tone. Wow. Black. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. So I hope that passes for story time with Paul tonight. And mm. uh, I I had a great time. Thank you guys as always for having me. Bombs are dropping as you're shopping. What is happening? I don't know. Ah! Kill it. <laughs> Kill it with fire. Kill it with fire. The, I don't know what the fuck that was. Some crazy But I love shit. you all, and I'll see you at the end of the week, I guess. Friday show? Yeah. Yep. Friday. Yep. See you, Paul. Goodbye for now, my friend. Uh, Goodbye. Goodbye, Good evening. everyone. Here's a Werther's original. Yeah, good job. Oh, Story yeah. Time with Paul. Gather around the blazing fire, kids. I feel like I am. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Pardon. You turn into a Muppet for a second? Shit. I did. Sorry. I did. Um, so I was having a bad day one night, um, and I was living with a couple of guys. Uh, we were, um, we were all, we were, yeah, yeah, it was like that too. We were all, we were all sharing the rent in this little condo and I was having a really bad week actually. And I came home on Friday and, and Saturday was my day off and I managed to cop some really good pan. And I wanted nothing more. Now, all, now, my roommates were part of the problem. They were driving me fucking nuts, right? <clears throat> Having to deal with their bullshit. They were driving was, your nuts. Gotcha. They were, they, they were driving me nuts like Cody Weber drove you nuts. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, they were wow. just loud. That's hardcore. I feel your pain. I didn't even know you were into that kind of stuff. You know what? I, yeah. I, you know, there was speculation about gay love between TJ and All Cody. true. All true. Definitely true. I'm, it's going to be all in my tell-all book. You, you got to read it. Um, Eternal undying love. Just to give anyway, you an idea of the of the um, mental acuity of the guys that I'm talking about, one of them, one time, uh, we told him he needed to start trimming his balls. 
Um, and he went upstairs with a pair of scissors and cut a hole in his nutsack so big. Oh, well, hold on. Pause. Pause the story. Pause the story. <laughs> You're lying. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm <just> sorry. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me digress and tell that story. Yes, he, please. He, he, he comes home one night, and it, uh, uh, he comes home, and he comes lumbering into the room, and we're all, uh, a bunch of us are sitting in the living room when he comes home, and we're all stoned and, and watching a movie or something. <laughs> and he comes walking in. And he's got this shirt on, this like Abercrombie and Fitch shirt on that's like three sizes too small for him. <laughs> and, and everybody's just staring at him as he walks in. <laughs> and he walks in front. He, he walks in front of the TV and starts to go upstairs. And 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 one of my friends, Sean, who was sitting on the TV, goes, "Hey there, tiny shirt." And everybody <laughs> lost their shit. He was like, "Whoa, that's good." We're like, "No, dude, we can see your rolls and shit. It's not a good look." But anyway, that same night, we were talking to him, and he was like, uh, he had a girlfriend. And he was like, oh, so-and-so, I don't remember her name, so-and-so doesn't want to go down on me because she says it smells all the time. Oh, my God. He had, like, swamp crotch or something. Yeah. And I was like, oh. well, dude, do you, I was like, do you clean up your, your situation down there? Your situation. Your individual yeah. situation. Um, and, and he was like, what do you mean clean it up? I was like, do you shave your balls and your dick? <laughs> Like, do you shave your pubes a little bit? Clean it up. He was like, no, man, that's for gir- girls do that. And I was like, dude, no, no, no. You need to trim your pubes. You'll get blowjobs. And he was like, okay, well, I'll think about it. And I didn't see him do it, but he went into the kitchen and got the fucking kitchen scissors. Oh, oh my went God. Went upstairs to the bathroom. About 10 minutes later, I hear, I shit you not, I hear. <laughs> 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 And I'm going, what the fuck is going? I jump up off the couch. Everybody leaps up off the couch, and this and my and my friend, my roommate, comes running down the stairs with his pants on and his cradling his balls in his hands. And he said, and I quote, "I cut my sack open." Oh my god! Oh man! And I said, why? What? Why? <laughs> And he was like, I was trying to trim my balls, and I cut my sack open, and I said, what were you trimming with? And he said, the kitchen shears. Oh, you're going to kill me. Stop. Are you having sympathy pain? So he had to go to the doctor and get a stitch put in his scrotum because he cut a diamond-shaped chunk of his nut sack open. Oh, my God. I give um, up on life. TJ's crying. I give up on life. <laughs> How stupid can you be? So uh, that that gives you that gives you an idea of the mental acuity that we're working with here. So, so I that was the story guys, within a story, right? Yes, yes. So that now was a, back that was to a the little Paul's ego story inception. Storyception, yeah. Um, so I was sitting at home one night, and, and my two roommates had gone out for the night, and they were like, "We're probably going to crash somewhere else. We'll see you tomorrow." And I was like, "Oh my god!" I, I was just like, uh, "Yeah, guys, I'll see you tomorrow." But I, inside, I was I was rejoicing because I didn't want to be around these idiots. I didn't want one of them to cut their nut off in the middle of the night, and I have to drive them to the fucking hospital high. I wanted to get baked and sit at my computer and do nothing for like eight hours. And yeah. so they leave. I do I do that. I get super baked. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm watching movies and YouTube or whatever the fuck I was doing. And about one in the morning, they fucking stumble through the door. <laughs> drunk as skunks. Loud. And they have a chick with them. And they all just kind of stumble through the riv- living room. And they're like, hey, Paul, what's up? Oh, making all kinds of noise. And they all go upstairs together. And about literally three minutes later, there's an orgy going on upstairs, right above my head. And the, and the chick that they had brought was a performer. Not, a, not an actual sex performer, but she was like one of those chicks that had to show how good it feels all the time. So she's up there like, uh, 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 and I'm just downstairs hating my fucking life. So all of a the sudden, there's this pound on the door like it's a cop. And I jump up, and I'm looking around like, where's my fucking stash? I got to put it away, fucking stash. And I get everything put away, and I go to my door. Now, I had one of those doors that has a peephole in it and a little glass, like, window above the peephole that yeah. you can kind of peek it, peek through. So I look through the peephole. I see nothing. I look above the, the door, and I'm looking out, and there's nobody there. I'm about to walk away, and somebody goes, <laughs> again. And so I'm like, fuck. So I open the door a crack, and it's, it's this guy I knew from high school. 
he was a uh, a Japanese kid, and his nickname was Yoshi. And he was about five feet tall and weighed about 280 pounds. He was a rotund, <laughs> tiny little man. And I go, oh. And I didn't even know what the fuck was going on. I was like, oh, Yosh, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a long time. And he's like, where's she at? Now, instantly, my mind is going, oh, shit. Now, I've, now, I've, now I, I wanted to say, to be honest with you, I wanted to say she's upstairs getting fucked two ways <laughs> and moaning real loud. But I remembered that he's dating this chick the last time I knew. And so I was like, I don't know who you're talking about, man. And he's like, she's here. I know I, I, their, their cars are here and she was, she, she left with them. She's here. And I was like, Yoshi, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man, <laughs> but uh, you need to go home. Cause I don't appreciate you standing on my porch and talking. Shit like <clears throat> I was like, you need to go home and sleep it off. You seem a little drunk. And he goes, fuck you, man. I slammed the door in his face and I run upstairs. I open the door and I'm treated to, uh, I'm treated to my two roommates performing what they deemed the wobbly H on uh, this chick. Uh, uh, one of them is is on his knees and 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 uh, fucking her mouth, and she's on her hands and knees, and the other one is fucking her ass. They call it the wobbly H. And so I open the door and I see this, and they don't even react. They're like, "Hey, what, what's up?" <coughs> and I was like, and 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 I was like, "Oh!" And I started to look away, and he goes, "Hey, Paul, check it out, Eiffel Tower." And he puts his hands up. They put their hands up and give it, give each other a high five over her body as they're fucking her. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, guys, Yoshi's downstairs, and her, and the dick comes out of her mouth immediately, and she's like, oh my god, are you fucking serious? And I said, yes, he's downstairs, he's cop-knocking my door and threatening to kill people. And then she's like, oh my god, oh my god. So she gets in the closet, I go back out to deal with Yoshi, he's still at the door cop-knocking, screaming now, so I'm sure people in my neighborhood are going to be calling the cops soon. I let him in. I, I open the door. He bursts through my door, <laughs> runs upstairs, and starts haranguing my friends, throws some big box of shit down the stairs, and leaves. I'm sorry. It's a very <laughs> anticlimactic story. <laughs> but it, it's just, it's, it's a pertinent, I think, because it's such a fucking thing living with people. Right. You always have to live waist deep in their shit, you know? And it, it's never, it's never a good thing. So that's it. That's my story for tonight, guys. I I appreciate you having me as always. Uh, Yoshi threw a box and, and was angry. I like to imagine Yoshi from Mario just doing all of that. And coming out of an egg. Coming out of the egg. Uh, well, that, that's is a... Paul frozen? No. Am I just... fro- no, I'm, oh, I'm, no, I'm no, sorry. Sorry, I was just stuck he's on spaced this. out. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Paul <laughs> contemplates the nature of existence. <laughs> what, whatever, whatever became of Yoshi, though, Paul? When was the last time you saw him? Um, the last time I saw Yoshi, he this incident touched off a little war between Yoshi and me because I ended up being the one having to kick <laughs> him out of the house, of course. Not the guys that were fucking his, double-teaming his girlfriend upstairs, but I get to deal with Yoshi. So... I kicked him out and I told him to go the fuck home. And then I heard through the grapevine and I was young. So I cared about shit like this back then. I wouldn't care now, but I heard through the grapevine that he was talking shit all over town about what a prick I was and what a son of a bitch I was. So I called him one night and I was like, Yoshi, if you keep running your fucking mouth, I'm going to punch you. And he's like, fuck you. And I was like, well, come down here then and say that shit to my face. And he did. I didn't end up punching him, but I didn't end up shoving him. And that was the last time I saw him. He turned around and walked away and, Never seen Yoshi again. Wow, that's sad. I wonder what Yoshi's up to these days. <laughs> Probably dead of a heart attack. Probably knocking on some some other poor bastard's door. <laughs> Probably so. All right, everyone, we're gonna wrap it up. All right, show's over. If you enjoyed the show, give it a fucking thumbs up. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you love, love you all. Yoshi. Good night. The drunken peasants thumbs will see up. you again on uh, Monday, and Paul will see you guys again on Friday. And uh, that's that. Show's over. Um, I do believe we're doing our hangout tomorrow. I don't know the time, but you know, if you're Everyone a patron, will. you already have information on that. But if you're not a patron, be sure to join our Patreon. You can be part of our Google Hangouts. They're getting better and better. Cards I think all the humanity time. Humanity, also. Yeah, we just posted that on here. Uh, maybe we maybe we'll post some of the hangouts at some point. I don't know. We'll see what yeah. happens. But um, did, you, did you say that your Patreon hangout is this week? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tomorrow. 
Do I have? Do I still have a standing invitation to the Patriots? Yes. Fuck no. Don't you yes. show up, Paul? Come on in. Yeah, Paul. Of course. You want to come? All right. Yeah. Shoot me a text <coughs> and let me know when. Sure, we'll no do. Pro- It'll no probably. Problem. Be, I don't know what time you think it is. Been around four or something. Something like that. All right. We'll try to get that information we'll to you as soon as possible. All right. Cool. Cool beans, man. All, All right, right, everybody. Show's thanks, over. Paul. Good night. Good night, everyone show. else. Goodbye, Fuck you, TJ. Everybody. You're garbage. Do it. Do it. We're gonna do it, fucker. Jesus. So <laughs> simmer down, TJ. Simmer down. You think it's about time simmer for down, story yeah. time? Yeah, we can do story time. Time for these little kids to gather up. Should get fire. Jim Ass's at you know, should Jim Ass he's fucking even be here? Yeah, fuck story you, time, Jim Ass. Paul. He's gonna interrupt. He's gonna be disruptive. Yeah, Jim Ass, maybe you're a should, fucking pile of maybe shit. Should, maybe we should do story time with Jim tonight. Oh, you want to do story time with Jim, huh? That's gonna be a riveting story. No, no, I'm no I'm just <laughs> kidding. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're an asshole, Paul. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Poor Jim. We need like some kind of sick burn music for when that happens. Story time. Actually, that works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wanted to talk about getting drunk tonight. Um, since we're on the drunken peasants, I think it's only appropriate that I tell this story. This is not a story of the, of the first time that I got drunk, but the first time that a friend of mine got drunk. We were about 16 years old, and um, a friend of mine, his parents went out of town, and he wanted to have a get-together and drink some beers and, and smoke some cigarettes and have fun, so he invited us all over. Now, I had been drinking for a couple of years, uh, regularly at least. Um, I started drinking pretty early in my teens. But this one friend of ours was raised in a pretty strict household and uh, was a pretty sheltered guy. And he somehow got his parents to agree to let him spend the night somewhere. Um, So he showed up and it was his first time drinking. And we had uh, some beers and I think some like Jack Daniels. Um, And we all sat out in the back porch and drank. And and for the most part, the guys that were there uh, were cool uh, because we had all, you know, had our first beer before. But this one guy... Um, he got Jim ass drunk and got belligerent and started yelling and throwing things and knocking chairs over and shit and just being a general asshole at the party, right? What a dipshit. I know. Seriously. Who knows anybody that does something like that? Right, Jim? Anyway. Dumb motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, so I finally confronted him and I, uh, yeah, exactly. And I sat him down. And uh, I, I had to talk to him. I was like, I was like, shut up, Jim, you cunt. <laughs> so anyway, I sat this fucking guy down and, and I get him to shit. I know, right? <laughs> okay, I get him to, Jim. <laughs> kick this fucking Jim ass out of this room. How dare he so much story time with the Ben. Boot his bitch ass. Sorry, Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Jim. Didn't pay us enough. Didn't pay see, us it, enough, see, it, Jim. see in the next twenty thousand dollar payday, you fucking retard. <laughs> anyway, um, what a where fucking was I? Killed them. Everybody. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, all right. All right, anyway, all where was I? The I, can't even, I don't even know if I need to tell the story. Maybe we just end it there. Oh, Jesus, God. Are <laughs> you there? Dildo. Finish it, finish it. Finish gotta, it? Okay. Gotta plow through. Okay, I gotta, I gotta get through this one. Uh, <laughs> I, um... Okay, so I said he's he's being a, he's being a, an asshole. And it's the first time he, he's 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 ever drunk. Um, so I, I sat him down and I said, "Look, dude, you're being a fucking cock. Nobody likes you right now. You just need to stop. Number one, you need to stop drinking, okay? And um, immediately. And number two, you need to just settle down. Just chill out, play a video game or something, man, and calm yourself. You're being you're you're way too rowdy. We're 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 having a chill night here. And uh, he kind of chilled out for a little bit. 
But uh, when we would go pee or leave the room, he would sneak into the kitchen and pour himself another drink. And so he just got worse and worse as the night went on. And he became this kind of beast of a man. Um, his humanity was gone. And he was just a, a dick and uh, uh, willpower. You know what I mean? And, and he, he, we were sitting outside with him and he was being all quiet. And he's, he's shooting me the stink eye across the table. Like he's giving me this look, you know, this like. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I, I, I let it go for a while, but it just kept going. And he wasn't blinking or anything. Just, 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 you know. <laughs> so finally, finally I said to him, I was like, dude, can I fucking help you with something? Is there a fucking booger hanging out of my nose or something? Like what's going on? And he looks me right in the eye. And I've never believed a person more than I believed him in this moment. He looked me right in the eye and he said, I'm going to fuck you up the ass. <laughs> now, at this point, I kind of backed off a little bit. <coughs> I well, it kind of let out a little bit of nervous laughter. But I noticed, I was hoping he was joking and just feeling better and, and, and stuff. But I noticed that he just... And then you're going to be <laughs> exactly. I noticed that while everybody else was having a nervous chuckle around the table, he was still just shooting me that look. <laughs> and so I said, look, man, you need to fucking chill. You're not going to fuck my ass. Not on my watch, buddy. Oh, my. He gets up and pushes the chair over and comes at me. And my fighter... <laughs> my fighter... <laughs> God, came for me. And my fight or flight instinct kicked in and, and it was flight all the way. I'm not a fighter. It was flight. It was, I got to get the fuck out of here. Now we were out in the country at a, at a house with a big backyard that had a giant hill that, that went down. And at the bottom of this hill, there was this basin with a pond in it. And i somehow managed with my chubby frame to juke him and get past him and start running down this field. Now it's important here to talk about the clothes that I'm wearing. This was, uh, this, if, if I was 16, this would have been 1995 or 1996. And I was a fat kid in the 90s. And fat kids in the 90s wore really baggy pants. Um, I'm sure some of you can back me up on that, right? Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. I still do. Yeah. I, I do, too, to be honest. I don't like fitting pants even today. But we wore, like, really baggy pants. And so I start hoofing it down this hill. And all my flab and blubber falls into a rhythm where it's just pumping me forward. Just bleep, 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 and I'm just trudging myself down this hill and my pants are starting to come down. So I'm grabbing the front of my pants, trying to lift them up as I'm running. This, and, and I can hear him and he's not saying anything. And I can't really hear his footfalls uh, because we're on grass, but I can hear his breathing. And it wasn't the breathing of a man that was joking. It was the breathing of, of, of a wild animal that wants to put its dick in something. So I'm trying to run as fast as I can down this hill. And my pants fall down. And they go around my ankles. And I take flight. Now, a couple of things happen as I supermaned myself into the air down this, down this hill. The friend if I can call him that, that was chasing me, leapt at me at the exact moment that I tripped and caught me in midair. So I want you to imagine me flying through the air like Superman with my friend, his arms around my waist, flying behind me. He grabs me around the waist and pulls my ass into his crotch. We're still in midair. And this is happening, by the way pulls my ass into his crotch and starts dry humping the shit out of my ass in midair. I'm gonna fuck your ass! I'm gonna be humping! <coughs> so, if, as if that wasn't bad enough, the land was coming up. And when we landed, I landed with the full force of my body on my chest, and he landed on my back, crushing <laughs> all of the air out of my lungs. And continued, as soon as we landed and bounced a couple of times and skidded to a halt, he pulled me up to where I was like face down, ass up position <laughs> with, my, with my arms behind me and my face in the grass and my ass in the air. And he just started doggy dry fucking me. 
and I people can't in the, breathe. <laughs> people in the chat were saying that you were wearing Jenkos. Jenkos, for sure. And it, they got me into this mess. <laughs> oh, he's, he's dry fucking my ass. I can't breathe. <laughs> Junkos, for sure. And it, they got me into this mess. <laughs> oh, he's, he's dry fucking my ass. I can't breathe. It just keeps going. And he gets more and more insistent about it. And I somehow, at some point, managed to, to squeak a little bit of air into my lungs. And I was going to tell him to stop with my next breath. But all that came out was, no! <laughs> <laughs> no! Um, and he, that, that seemed to uh, abate his lust for my virgin butthole. And he snapped out of whatever he was doing and just said, oh, I'm just kidding, and walked away. And left me um, a, a sweaty, broken man at the bottom of a hill with his face <laughs> in a and his ass freshly reamed. So just, that is the story. He was just kidding around, Paul. Just Come on, kidding. Man. Learn to it take a jo- fucking Come on, joke, yeah. Paul. That was a joke, dude. Who hasn't so been that- <laughs> thrown to the ground, dry humped, and fucking decimated That's by a friend? You got gotcha. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. It's not unusual to have a situation. Amazing ATSD attacks my family. It's not unusual to see me cry. I want to die. That's what you're going to have when you're older, Paul. (laughs) Paul, look upon the future of your big, fat, disgusting fucking jowls. Thank goodness I can grow a beard. It will always be covered. Never again will my naked face be seen by man. Promises, promises, Paul. Somebody posted a picture of me on on the DP Wiki, mm-hmm. um, and now I'm just sending everybody over there to see it. It's the most awful picture I've ever taken. It's it's a picture from my old works website. Oh my god, it's horrifying. I can wow. find it for you guys if you want to put it up. I mean, it's yeah. If you want to if, if fuck a, on me, let's take a look at this. All we right, give me now, one man. sec. I'll find the fucking mess. Oh, oh wow. So this is a really embarrassing picture of Paul that we're going to see here. This is the worst photo that's ever been taken of me. It's the picture that was on my works website. It might still be up there. I don't know. Let me see. Sorry, I just got to find it. People are going to be fapping to your picture, Paul. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, Paul, this is so ugly. God, it's, it's but so you know awful. Here, here we go. Well, you, know, you want to see white guilt, Paul? What? Here we yeah, white guilt, Paul. That's what that. That's what. The, that's what the people are calling it. Uh, I'm gonna throw it in the chat. Okay. For you, ben. All right. Cool. There we go. Let it do its thing. Let's see. Hopefully it works. Because lately, for some reason, Skype has not been loading pictures when people send them to me. Uh, if it doesn't, I will send you an Imgur link. In fact, I can just do that. Yeah, that'll there. probably work better. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's horrifying. <laughs> oh. <I> like- <laughs> oh, fuck you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. I'm out of here. Fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, he looks like fucking Fred Flintstone or some shit. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. <coughs> what is the story behind this picture? Uh Paul okay, so, so uh, uh, <laughs> uh have you had any problems lately with Barney stealing your pebbles, buddy? <laughs> I don't know why it's called white guilt, Paul. It's like, I mean, like yeah, if, the hair, if the hair was black and the clothes were different, that face is like the perfect Fred Flintstone face, man. It looks like <laughs> it looks like like something in the room stinks or something. Oh, oh my God, I can't. <laughs> he's just he's smelling his own yeah. second chin. <laughs> I just caught a whiff of my own ball cheese. <laughs> no, uh, this this picture. Oh, oh fuck! Oh, oh, I can't. 
The longer I look at it, the more I feel like my soul is being sucked out. It's like it's like I that painting in Ghostbusters like, 2. Like, that's what, I'm saying. what the fuck happened with this? I am Vigo. This is like an ex- uh, like an exceptionally bad picture of you. It's the worst picture that's ever been made. <laughs> yeah, fuck this punk Was like was, was it like take this really bad picture and you die? Like we throw you in the fucking river or that with like you weight you down? Like what happened? Uh, like guys, my mom just texted you are cute, shut up. I oh. love you. Mom. Wow, your mom <laughs> what what like, a face only a mother could love. Yeah, man. <laughs> Even you'd have to admit, mom, that this was not your uh your your progeny's best day. Okay, I, I was sick. Okay, I was depressed. I was depressed as shit. I was sick. I had run out of sick leave because I'd taken it all being fucking depressed. And I get to work one day, and I decided on a whim to shave my fucking beard off, and immediately regretted it. So I was trying to go back. You can see the stubble on my double chin there. I was really trying to fill that in because when that comes in, the double chin goes away. You know what I mean? Um, and I got there and they were like, oh, it's picture day. And I was like, of course it's picture day. <laughs> um, so th- this is that picture. This is trying to look um, enthused about life, I guess. <laughs> it, it didn't work. You're failing miserably, Paul. I know, You're failing it's, miserably. It's, I, I think it would have been better just to be like, just, just, you know, don't, don't even react to it. Because when you tried, it was just, you could tell, like, I fucking hate this. I hate everything so much. That one's getting saved. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the thumbnail. We should. Paul. Ha- I mean, like, people will probably end up photoshopping it at this point, <laughs> and we'll have all of these crazy renditions of it. You know? Oh yeah, people. Anyone out there with any creative talent, have have fun with that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I might <coughs> it had to be done. You know, I just got a new uh, Intuos tablet, so I think I might uh, have a go at it myself. See what I can come up with. People in the chat are saying, "Get Paul's mom on the drunken." Uh, yeah, I saw that. I you think, think she, she, you know, she'd she'd be down to call in. I'm sure. Sweet. You could interview her about what a piece of shit I am. That sounds fun. And about whether or not my, my stories are true. One, one of my favorite stories of yours, whether it's true or not, is the one where you got sick and you hit your sister in the face with a cheeseburger. Yeah, I love that I, one. I was juggling uh, playing that one. I didn't know if I wanted to be the victor tonight or my <laughs> sister the victor. So I'm, I'm toying with two stories to tell tonight. So we'll see. See which way we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what, what's next? I think Pat Robertson's had it. He's, yeah, he's had it, guys. I'm gonna take a quick uh, like potty break situation. Oh, I, I, I have, you're gonna I, take I had, a, some, I had some French vanilla earlier, <laughs> and it's going right through me in this particular situation. So I'll be back. We should just call that taking a keen. Like I got to go take a keen. Taking a keen. Do 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 do. So we'll wait till Paul comes back. You want to just go to a break for a minute? We could. Yeah, why not? Let's just take a break. All right, we're going on a break. Fuck you, audience. Fuck you, audience. If you want us to come back, let's see some thumbs up and let's get over. Thumbs fucking, up. So let's get over t- 100,000 subscribers in this bitch. Let's, huh? let's make tonight the night. Let's make tonight that, the night tonight so we can announce that shit live on the show. I guess we should do story time with Paul because we got like 15 minutes left or so. About 10. <coughs> that is story. fine with me. Every time All right. with Paul Zigo. Paul Zigo. Story time with Paul. Paul. With Paul. With Paul. Paul. I wish, I wish Americans pronounced my name Paul. Paul. Hello, Paul. So I'm going to let the peasants de- decide my fate tonight. Have you <coughs> heard enough of Paul losing? Do you want Paul to win one tonight? Or would you like to hear Paul lose a little bit more? I don't know. Scotty, what do you think? Win or lose? Mm, let's say win. win. Paul win. can win. All right, I'll oh, let Paul win. Pauls have won tonight. Look win. The, the, the wins have it. So, I used to work at a blockbuster video situation. With individuals. And with, with uh, a few other CSR individuals. And uh, one day I woke up and I was feeling kind of shitty. 
you know, kind of under the weather feeling you have, that tickle in the back of your throat or whatever. But I decided, fuck it, I'm going to go on and go to work anyway. It was a closing shift. It was going to be an easy one, hopefully. So I went on ahead into work, and, and, and as, almost as soon as I got there, I started sweating profusely, like just dumping sweat, right? I mean, my fucking like little blue Blockbuster shirt was soaked, <clears throat> uh, like around the neck and back areas, you know? <laughs> And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to fucking help people with these wild fucking crazy eyes and that jowly fucking look you guys saw in that fucking picture that that person put up on me. Um, so anyway, I, uh, I was sitting there sick as a dog and my fucking uh, manager comes waddling out and she's like, are you okay, Paul? And I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. Just powered through it, you know, I'm going to be okay, I'm just going to be all right. And she's like, Paul, you need to go home. You look really, really sick. And I was like, no, I can I can stick it out. So I did. I stuck it out for a while, but I just got worse <coughs> and worse and worse. And finally, uh, like, I don't know, 10, 10 o'clock, maybe 11 o'clock at night, uh, I finally went to my boss and I was like, look, can you fucking send me home? And she was like, yeah, go. I sent you home an hour ago. Go, you know. So I went home. But on the way home, I was like, you know, I could eat. Now, there's very few times where I couldn't eat. But I thought, I could, I could pick up something to eat. What's on the way home? Jack in the box. Okay. I could do a jumbo jack tonight. A meal situation, you know, with the, with the, with the jumbo jack and the fries and, and the soda. So uh, I went and picked that up and, and got home. Now, my parents, my dad, I was living with my dad at the time, were out of town. They were out of town right now. And normally, when my parents are out of town... Um, there would be a party going on at my house, but I was too sick. So I, uh, I got home, I went into my bedroom, I flicked the light on and there's my sister and two of her teenage friends in my bed in various stages of undress. The entire place looks like a fucking tornado hit it. A tornado that went through a homeless person's encampment and picked up all the forties and, and deposited them, you know, all over the fucking room. It was insane. The amount of debauchery that had gone on in this room. And all I could think was looking at the, you know, looking at the bed was, fuck, I just want to fucking sleep. I just want to get in my own bed and sleep tonight. <laughs> like, that's all I want in the fucking world. So I tried to, I woke my sister up. I shook her leg and I said, um, you got to get, you got to get up. You got to just take the girls uh, out into the living room or upstairs to your room or something, man. I'm sick. I really just want to eat this hamburger and go to sleep. And she just was was non-responsive, you know, just kind of sh uh, shaking her leg. And then finally, uh, I, I went to wake her up again, and she she sits bolt upright in the bed and looks me right in the eyes, and she says, "Fuck you." Now, <laughs> normally that wouldn't. I mean, it takes more than that to rile me up. Um, but this night, this particular situation. <laughs> I was fucking done already, and she just caught my last nerve, and I said, listen to me. You're going to gather up these stupid, drunk bitches, and you're going to take their stupid asses upstairs to your fucking bedroom. I'm going to go outside and eat my hamburger, and by the time I'm done eating this burger and these fries, these drunk bitches are going to be out of my room and upstairs. What did you... She starts yelling at me, but I just fucking slam the door to my room. And I walk out front, and I do exactly what I said. I sat down in the fucking uh, front lawn. I had my soda and my fucking hamburger, and I'm getting everything out. I lay the fries out. I have a couple, you know. They're still hot. I'm good. Um, I have a sip of my soda, and all of a sudden, I hear this clatter coming from inside the house, and lights are going on and shit. And uh, my sister comes storming out. Now, it's like probably by this time, 11 at, uh, at night, maybe midnight. And uh, she's screaming at the top. What the fuck did you call my friends? You fucking bitch. Blah, blah, blah. You never talk to me that way. And yada, yada. You know, just mouthy, drunk, belligerent. And I'm sitting there, cross, you know, Indian style on the ground with my fucking hamburger in one hand and, um, you know, my French, fr my napkins or something in the other hand. And um, I, I, lo I look up at her and I say, what is your, what is your fucking problem? The cops are going to get called now. Because you're being a loud, drunk idiot out here. What the fuck is your problem? Just go. Why aren't you in there waking your friends up and taking them up? She said, you called. What did you call my friends again? She said, you called them bitches. I dare you to fucking call them bitches again. I dare you to say it. Once again, 
normally I'm not the kind of guy to be goaded by such situations, especially not by drunk people. But tonight, like I said, was not her night. So I looked up at her very somberly and I said, your friends are stupid drunk bitches. Now, <laughs> now what happens? What's the, what's the big fucking woo-ha here? And as I'm talking <laughs> shit, she reaches back. <coughs> and back, keeping the pimp strong. She reaches way the fuck back and just fucking cods wallops me across the <laughs> Knocking spit and fucking, I, I tasted blood afterwards and I just sat Holy there for shit. a second. Yeah. You busted my lip open. I mean, she hit me right in the lips, like fucking popped me, just bah! And she's, I, I can, I'm vaguely aware at this point, uh, after the slap just went down, I'm vaguely aware of her still yelling and talking shit. And then um, the next thing I notice is there's blood in my mouth. So I reach up and, and I test, I see the blood and I'm like, fucking broke my fucking lip. And then I turn and I look at my left hand. And there sat my jumbo jack, all unwrapped, ready to be eaten. And I formulated a plan in my mind, a devious Paul's ego plan that would get me exactly what I wanted if it went the way that I thought in my mind. I had a moment of brilliance, a moment of clarity. Call it a fever dream, if you will. Maybe, I, maybe it was my illness that was stimulating some, some part of my brain that I hadn't used before. But in that moment, I saw what I had to do. And I stood up very calmly. And she's doing, you know, doing the teenage girl thing, wiggling her neck back and forth and wagging her finger at me and yelling some incomprehensible teenage girl bullshit about how I'm never going to talk, of, you know, blah. And I look at my hand. <coughs> And I tip it, you know, so I'm holding it upright with the burger sitting in my hand. And I tip the burger. <coughs> and I start reaching back with the burger in my hand. And the bun, it's, it was perfect. It was so serendipitous. The bun naturally falls off, exposing <laughs> all the cheese and pickles and meat, that, that fucking really low-grade <coughs> 90s meat and just grease and mustard and mayo <laughs> and lettuce and just rotten-ass fucking soggy tomato. And it all is just bared. And I reach <laughs> back, and she's got her eyes closed, wagging her fucking finger at me. I reared back, and I shoved that hamburger right up her fucking nose. Now, a couple of things happened at this moment that, are, that bear noti- noting here in the story. Number one, I heard this a sound that sounded like one clap. It was like this. And it was after I had hit her. It was after I had hit her. So it wasn't the burger hitting her face that made the... I didn't hit her hard enough to do that. I looked for the source of this snapping sound, and I see my car in the driveway behind my sister. And sitting there is one of those soggy tomatoes stuck to the fucking uh, uh, driver's side window of my car, and it's just fucking stuck. So such force did I put behind this blow that it literally just fucking stuck that tomato to that fucking window. And she's standing there. Her hair is filled with cheese. Her fucking nostrils have, like, chunks of meat and ketchup and shit fucking just jammed all the way in. And she's got this look on her face, like... It wasn't disgust. It was shock. It was utter just like... (laughs) And there's just a blob of mustard, you know, and like lettuce all over her chin and her face. And like, I fucking dusted my hands off. And I sat down on uh, on the grass. And I ate my fries. My little sister disappeared in the house. I figured probably to call the police or something. So I figured, you know, if I'm going to go to jail tonight for assaulting somebody, um, I may as well go with a full stomach. So I ate my fries. I drank my, 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 my soda. When I was done with that, I went inside. And not only were the girls out of my room, but they had cleaned up all of the beer and wine bottles and all the <laughs> shit that they had been drinking, that they had strung. They, they fucking cleaned up, made my bed, and folded it back ready for me to get in. <laughs> that is the only time in my life that violence has solved the problem. Um, and they say it's I never went on, the answer. Well, that proves it wrong right there. Yeah? yeah, yeah. If violence is sometimes the answer. It worked in that case. I went on to find out that I had mononucleosis. 
um, which is a uh, horrible, horrible fucking uh, respiratory infection. I was down for like three and a half weeks. I couldn't get out of bed. I was shitting myself and pissing myself in bed. So I paid for my transgression, feminists, okay? I did strike a woman, but I spent the next fucking three weeks shitting and pissing myself. Technically, so, you didn't strike her. The burger struck her. That is true. That is true. And that is story time with Paul. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks to Paul for being here as usual. Thanks to uh, Sex Masterca for being here earlier. Yes. Uh, Sex Master. Scotty, Ben, everybody watching, give it a big old thumbs up. Yeah. If you enjoyed it. And uh, we will see you on Monday. Good night. Good night. Love thanks, you guys. everyone. Bye. Bye, Paul. Thank Bye, you. Paul. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Story time with Paul. With Paul. Paul. With Paul. With so, Paul. last week I told a story about feeding a hamburger the wrong way to my, my sister. And I, and I gave you guys the option of choosing a story where I win and choosing a story where I most definitely lose. And a bunch of people asked me on Twitter and my Ask FM to tell this story where I lose that I was thinking of. So I figured, why not just tell that one tonight? So, For sake of completion, sure. Yeah. I grew up, uh, and I've talked about this before, with five sisters. I have one biological sister and then uh, four stepsisters, two on each side of the family. And at one point, I was living with three of these sisters and my mom. And I was the eldest among them. So I was supposed to be like a role model and play with them and help them with their homework and all that shit that you expect a big brother to do. But they, the three of them, together, are the most evil entity that the world has ever conceived on this planet. The three of them together are just awful. And... They would, like, fuck with me all the time, constantly fucking with me. But I was stupid, and I, and I thought, you know, every time they'd come to me and ask me to do something, I thought, this time is going to be different. This time we'll just play a game. So they came to me one day. I'm like, PJ. It's like, what? Do you want to play a game? We're bored. And I was like, okay, uh, what game do you guys want to play? Do you want to play the game of life? And I was like, whatever, I, I guess. It, I mean, I, I was happy that it wasn't one of those games that takes forever. I don't know if you've ever played the game of life, the board yes. game. Yeah, I played it. Yeah, I played it. It's yeah. an insipid fucking game that's completely meaningless. There's really no rules. I mean, there are rules, but it, I don't know. It's just a, it's that, a silly That's appropriate, game. man. It's, it's like life, you know? It it's really is. Life. I mean, it's like it's like the worst thing that can happen to you in the game of life is that you end up a fucking hardworking loser. You know, <laughs> like that's you know that's how you lose at the game of life, being somebody that works for their money. You win the game of life, of course, of course, by being somebody that does absolutely nothing for a living and and rakes in tons of money. Oh, yeah, um, that's real nice. So. I sit down to play the game of life and we're playing and things are going just fine. They're being really nice to me, which is a little disconcerting, but I decide to go with it. We're playing the game of life and I look away for a second to like stretch, you know, I'm stretching my neck and I look away and out of the corner of my eye, I see my sister, my biological sister, take my piece and move it back. And I stopped her. I said, Hey, you just moved my fucking piece. No, I didn't. I didn't move your piece. Yes, you did. I fucking watched you. I have eyeballs. <coughs> like, I saw you move the piece. I'm not going to fucking play with you guys if you're just going to cheat. So I moved my piece back, and they were like, whatever. You're just you're, you're the one that's cheating now because you're moving two spaces. And I was like, no, you, you moved me back. Let's just play. So we continued playing. Few moves later, same fucking shit happens. Somebody's close to my piece, and all of a sudden, I'm five spaces back. So I said, look, at this point, I'm about to fucking walk away. You cheating fucking assholes only bothered me today because you wanted to poke me with a fucking stick. Well, congratulations, you've done it. I'm pissed now. Quit moving my fucking piece. 
You just need to calm down. You're getting angry over nothing. I'm not getting angry over nothing. You're cheating at the fucking game. I could be I could be <coughs> in my fucking room listening to the listening to the radio right now. So I get more and more heated and they all are now smiling ear to ear and going, "You're the cheater. You're the cheater." I am, and and I of course being unable to back down in the face of adversity and going, "I am not the cheater." You are the cheater by virtue of your moving my piece. In the middle of this (laughs) tirade, and this this is something that happened several times in my childhood. You might notice a little parallel with last week's story. In the middle of my tirade, my sister, my biological sister, rears back and bitch slaps me across the face. And the entire room erupts in the sound of girly giggles. Now... It took me a second to process what had happened. She hit me right in the lips. And I backed off. And I was like, she just fucking hit me in the lips. And then the giggling came into focus. (laughs) (laughs) And I was instantly filled with the most soul-crushing rage that I've ever felt in my entire life. I've never been more angry than I was at this moment. I looked at them, the three of them, and they were probably, you know, aging in range from 13 to 10 or 11 at this point. And I imagined myself picking them up and breaking them in half with my hands and pulling their faces off and then dumping the bodies in a vat of acid and and, and, and then pouring that into a fucking river so that nobody ever found them. I was I was literally (coughs) completely murderous with rage. And I turned and I looked at them and, you know, I'm, I'm just all puffed up. You know, that, 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 that angry man thing that we do, that the shoulders were high and the face was screwed up. And I did the only thing that I had to do. I looked right at my sister who had slapped me and I said, <laughs> and I ran to my room. <laughs> the rage, the ass puckering rage that had filled me had nowhere to go because I'm just not a violent person. And so when it fucking when it when it came, all I could think to do, the only emotional response that I could muster was to literally scream and cry. Now I was probably I was 16 years old when this happened. 16. <laughs> and I'm standing there getting laughed at by a, by a bunch of, of preteen girls who had just slapped me in the face and made me weep. It's the most embarrassing thing. So anyway, I go to my room and I slam the door and I lock it. <laughs> and I'm laying on the bed going, <laughs> my mom overhears this ruckus and comes running down the hall, banging on my door. PJ. PJ, are you all right? What's wrong, babe? And I'm like, go away. Just leave me alone. I don't want to ever speak to you again. (laughs) You know, and uh, she, being the good mother that she was, uh, put a cherry on on top of the uh, humiliation Sunday by forcing the girls to come in while I was still... (laughs) They had to come in one by one and apologize to me for making me cry. And when they did it, they walked in looking very solemn because my mom was standing behind them. But when they got my attention and got in front of me, they all smiled. I'm sorry, PJ, that we hit you and made you cry like a little bitch. (laughs) So that is uh, one of the many stories where Paul's ego loses. And that is story time with Paul tonight. It's like an R-rated Charlie Brown story. <laughs> it really is. That, that 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 I might I might use that as the name for for my autobiography. <laughs> an R-rated Charlie Brown yeah, story. Yeah, an R-rated Charlie Brown story. Pretty much sums up my young life uh, and pretty much my my adult life as well. All righty then. On that happy note, we're ending tonight's show. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Dumb that shit up. Subscribe and like to the Drunken Peasants channel. We will see you guys on Monday. Just remember, we'll send us videos. Send videos. Remember, TJ's garbage. Yeah, send those videos so we have shit to talk about on the show. I love you guys. Good night.
Bye-bye. Good night. We love Good you night, too, Paul. Paul. Allah God has this. Six. <laughs>
you need to get off your daddy's CB, boy. Yeah. <laughs> CB, radio- CB radios were the internet before the internet. You're totally they right. They really were. They totally were. And, and it was just an endless supply of gullible idiots. So we got more and more boisterous as time went on. And we developed what's called your handle. Now, uh, on, on the CB, everybody's got a handle, kind of like you do here on, the, on YouTube. TJ, you're the amazing atheist. I'm Paul's ego, right? Uh, back then, I was the whiz kid, okay? Everybody in my little area knew me as the whiz kid, and I was found on the same channel every night trolling truckers as they came through. And I had supporters and detractors amongst the trucking community. There were people that thought I was really funny, and there were people that genuinely wanted to kill me, as I would come to find out. Um, so one night, my friend and I are fucking around on the CB, and uh, this dude uh, wh- whose handle was Ghost Rider, we're fucking with him. We're like, you're a faggot, you know, go suck a dick, queer, you know, and he's like, I'm going to find you little motherfuckers. And we were like, whatever, we thought our anonymity was secure. But see, the problem with CB radios are is that they are a flat uh, uh, wave signal that can be measured by a little needle, okay, and the higher the needle goes when somebody's talking, the closer they are. So if you have a lot of time, which this guy did, because we were on for hours, like six and to- six or ten hours at a clip, just fucking on these truckers as they passed through. This guy took a break from his trucking and used his equipment to track us down. And all of he goes quiet for a while, and we continue fucking with truckers. He lets us continue to talk. And then all of a sudden, he keys up again, and his needle goes all the way to the end. And he's like, how's about the corner of 145 and Avenue 16, you little cocksucking sons of bitches? And we were like, holy fuck! <laughs> he starts driving up and down the road with a spotlight hanging out the side, like a big fucking flashlight, just shining it all over the house. So we hit all the lights. This was years before the actual trouble happened, right? So this guy finally goes away, finally loses interest in killing a couple of young, young children that night and goes home. Uh, John and I, my friend, we continue to fuck with truckers for years. I'm talking literally years. I was a teenager by the time I finally got in trouble. I was about 14 years old when I really got in trouble. And the way I got in trouble was this. There was this guy whose handle was Hightower. And I didn't know it at the time, but Hightower was a fucking psychopath. So one night I'm fucking on Hightower and he's talking about his wife, right? And he's like, you know, don't, don't fucking, you can say whatever you want about me, whiz, kid, but don't talk, uh, don't talk about my wife. And I was like, I fucked your wife, Hightower. I fuck your wife every night, Hightower. She's a cunt, Hightower. And he was like, oh, you little motherfucker. And he goes away for a while. Well, of course, I keep talking shit to other people. And Hightower shows up at my house. Now, at this point, I was alone in the house. And this dude is parked out in front of my house. And I sat and I watched him through the slit of my little, you know, window. I watched him eat fucking McDonald's and sit there and talk. Whiz, kid, are you going to come out and get your fucking brains beaten in, you little faggot? And I just sat there the whole night and watched this guy. Didn't want to call the cops because I didn't want to get in trouble. Um, Long story short, my mom got a phone call about three days later from the sheriff of our town. The actual sheriff, not his secretary or a deputy or whoever handles phone calls. The sheriff called my mother and said, "Uh, excuse me, ma'am, are you aware of what your son gets up to on the CB radio? She's like, yeah, you know, I hear him in there messing with his friends and stuff. He's like, it's actually a little more complicated than that. We're going to need your son and you to come down to the station, have a little chat with us. So my mom rounds me up and takes me to the sheriff's office. There's the sheriff, a lawyer, and a federal agent in the room, uh, uh, whatever the FCC's agents are, some representative of the Federal Communications Commission. Apparently, I was in violation of a slew of broadcasting laws, uh, starting with being too young to legally be on a CB radio and ending with using massive amounts of profanity. They had me for for making threats against people's uh, children, wives. He was like, you've made threats against people. We've had, we've been following your little uh, CB career uh, for a long time, Paul. And uh, you've made threats against people. You have uh, uh, used profanity at least a thousand times this month 
on publicly owned airwaves. Do you realize that what you've done is a federal offense? And I was, I, I almost shit my pants. I started crying. The guy goes on. He goes, but that's not really why I called you in here today. Because we could have just slapped your mom with a fine and she would have uh, put your CB up in the closet and you'd never be on it again. But he said, I want you to know something. He said, does the name Hightower mean anything to you? And I said, uh, yeah, he's a guy uh, that I talked to on the CB radio. He said, that guy that you know is Hightower on the CB radio killed his wife last night in cold blood, shot her in the back of the head while she was sleeping. And uh, uh, we're prosecuting him for capital murder. We also know that he sat out in front of your house and that he regularly carried his weapon with him. So do you understand that these people that you're messing with are not fucking around, Paul? And that was the end of my YouTube career. But I literally had, or my YouTube career. (laughs) (laughs) My CB CB career uh, ended that day with a federal official telling my mom that she faced prison time if I ever touched the CB radio again. So I don't actually know if I'm legally allowed at this point to broadcast my voice or, or image uh, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> I might still be under legal constraints. Oh, but shit. That, that, uh, no, you know, I'm kidding. I'm it's kidding funny, that. though, that uh, you know he was so protective of his wife, but then he shot her. I wonder if it's because you were fucking her, you know? He's like, I fucked I've your always, wife, you know? I've always wondered if he thought I actually fucked his wife. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you out there fucking 14-year-old kids, die, bitch. <laughs> One of the other guys, there was another guy called The Duck. The Duck. You know he's cool. Guy, the guy said, uh, does the name The Duck mean anything to you? And I was like, yeah, The Duck's one of my friends on the CB. He was like, The Duck is a registered pedophile. The Duck. Huh? That's why he was your friend. <laughs> the Duck molested his two grandsons when they were about your age. And served federal prison time in the 70s for it. The duck is not your friend. (laughs) (laughs) So that was my short but sweet CB radio story. And that is story time with Paul tonight. Hashtag bend over for the duck. Yep. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed the show, give it a thumbs up. Thank you to uh, Paul, to G-Man, to Creationist Cat, to JF, to Jim Ass. To Ben, to me, and fuck Scotty for not even being here, that piece of shit. Look at this. I want to give a quick round of of congratulations to our sitting rap battle champion, JF. Don't get too comfortable on the throne. When Uh, are we facing each other? When is it? I don't know. I don't know. We've got some time. Let's let's be gentlemen about this stuff. Let's figure it out. Let's give ourselves a couple of months. Let's let the hype die down, and then let's do this fucking thing. You and me. Yeah. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys next Friday. All, All right. right. See everybody. All Good right. Night. Good night, Bye, y'all. All right. We're gonna do story time with Paul. Fuck yeah. Let me turn this video down because it was way louder. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Story time with Paul. So I, I've been thinking a lot about manliness lately. Uh, manliness has come up a lot in the in the discussions that I've been having with people. Somebody was asking me about like this whole alpha male, beta male thing. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's heard that, right? Yeah. But certainly that sort of thing does exist, right, in nature, the whole dominant male thing. But like I've known some fucking dangerous men in my life. I've known some quote unquote alpha males. And you know what the one thing that they all have in common is? I've never. Well, that too. But no, no, I've never once heard them brag about being alpha males. Exactly correct. Um, and, and, And I don't understand why this current crop of quote unquote alpha males feel the need to crow at the top of their lungs from the top of every rooftop what fucking alphas they are. Small dick um, syndrome. Shut you the used fuck to be up, able to sure just guy. Know an alpha when you saw one. That's a guy I don't want to fuck with. Um, now you've got to announce it on the internet to everybody what an alpha you are and what a beta everybody else is. Anyway, I digress. I wanted to talk about manliness because 
as you'll see in the spider video that's forthcoming from Beyond Fear, I cr- I cringe and whimper like a woman for about 15 minutes while she and her roommates uh, formulate a plan on how to get rid of the spider. Um, and I, I started thinking about some of the things that like people in my family have done, have gone through, and how disappointed they must be in me. Um, my uncle, for example, was in Vietnam. And he's a very nice person. He's not one of those like, you know, Charlie's hiding in the bushes type of guys. But when he tells stories about some of the shit that he saw in Vietnam, um, it's just like, holy, like, how does a human being uh, hold up under that type of fucking thing day after day? Uh, You know, with the big spider, like he he told me one time, he said, you know, PJ, uh, they have this snake in Vietnam called a two step because after it bites you, you take two steps and you're dead. And we lost, you know, a couple of guys to those. Anyway, this is not the funniest Paul's ego story. It's a story that comes to you secondhand from my uncle, who was a Vietnam vet. But I've always loved this story because it's so fucked up. It just shows you how fucked up war is, right? So my, my uncle is in the jungle in Vietnam on a, on a patrol uh, with him. You know, he, he and his platoon are patrolling the fucking just jungle in Vietnam. And they become aware that there's a squad of Viet Cong shadowing them. And um, they, they try unsuccessfully a few times to fire at them. And, you know, they never, they never really get a lock on them. But they know they're being followed. But the, the problem is they're out in the fucking middle of nowhere, right? And they've got to stop and, and rest uh, at night because you can't be traipsing through the fucking jungle at night. So at night, um, they would set up a camp in a clearing, which may seem counterintuitive. You'd think you'd want to be amongst the trees, but when you're fighting Charlie, you know, the man in the black pajamas, the gooks, if you will forgive my anachronistic term, you can't trust them to, 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 to just like be, you can't be, you can't be safe amongst the trees. You gotta, you gotta have open field. You gotta be able to see them coming. So they, they would set up in an open uh, a clearing, and they would set up claymore mines facing outward all the way around their encampment. And one dude would have the job of staying up all night with his finger on the, on the, on the trigger of the claymores. So if, he's, if the enemy charged out from all directions from the trees, they're going to eat you know, a face full of shrapnel, and all of them are going to be dead. So my, my uncle pulled this duty one night, and um, he went through the whole night, said he was hearing things out in, in the darkness, went and woke up or, you know, called his chain of command or whatever he had to fucking, I don't know, I'm not a military guy, and was reporting, you know, hey, I see movement in the trees, I'm hearing uh, movement in the clearing, please advise, and the guy was like, you know, ready the fucking claymores. So my uncle was basically for like six hours waiting for daylight, daylight with his thumb on this claymore button, right? Never happened, nothing ever happens, he doesn't push the button, they're packing up, and of course, because my uncle was manning the button, he has to go and, and help wrap up the claymores. And um, like I said, not a funny story, but here's the punchline. When they went to go get the claymores, somebody had snuck in to the camp and turned all of the claymores around so that they were facing inward at all of the American soldiers who were camping there. So if one of them had fired off a weapon or come charging out of the darkness, my uncle very well might have ended his own life along with that of his whole platoon. That's man shit. You see what I'm saying? Yes. That's an alpha. That's alpha shit. Did, uh, you know? Does your uncle go around declaring his alphaness to people? Never. Never once has my uncle been like, dude, I'm a Billy badass, man. You're just a fucking weak little beta male. Never once has my uncle been in a position where he had to vocalize that. <laughs> All right. And that's well, it. Thank- I'm sorry. A, you know, no, no, like- no. It's a good story. I liked it. Yeah. Um, thanks, Paul. And thanks, uh, shirt guy. And uh, thanks for everybody who watched. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, we will not see you Friday. Uh, I don't know if we'll see you guys Monday or not. Yeah, I think we will. Yeah, yeah, we will. Um, yeah, we're just going to miss one episode. Um, well, I mean, we're going to be taking uh, a break in uh, early December, though, too, from, um, I don't know. We'll figure, I'll figure that out and put that out there uh, on the next show, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we'll all right. it all out. Thank guys. you, guys, and uh, hope you enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up. Be if sure you, to let uh, us know what you think. If you live in the U.S., have a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah.
Love Happy you guys. Thanksgiving to all week. you U.S. motherfuckers. Good night, Paul. Night, Paul. Night, shirt night. guy. Night, DP universe. Later. Jim is getting on the bandwagon. Hey, hey, Jim, I hope the 10 grand was worth it, buddy. Uh, you really contributed tonight. 10 Thanks, grand? Man. That's cheap. Yeah, yeah. You That's know cheap. what? Dude, I, I love how you're trying to sound all moral, you know. You know, oh, I don't like to eat animals. I'm moral, but I know you like cow dick and bull puss and. Good night, folks. That is true. Paul did go on and on about it. Story time. Was that with Paul? Did I just ruin his story time there? Did I? Did I? Did I steal the punchline? No. Paul? He just dropped the bomb. Oh. Bulb. Hey, did you guys notice there's a cheese whiz canister in the background there amongst all this classy <laughs> shit? Uh, Paul, I, I just gentleman. noticed that. You know, he's a refined I, I've gentleman. Always, I, I have a picture of this somewhere, and I've always tried to zoom in to see if there's any, <laughs> like, uh, any, <laughs> if there's anything on the spines of any of these books, you know? Like, that would be kind of cool, a little detail. But, yeah, no, I, I I caught the cheese whiz. I just saw it for the first time. I'm impressed. Cheese really? She is. Yeah, it's very subtle. So, Fuck it. It's filled with cheese. I'm going to tell, yeah. tell a story tonight about um, video games, since we have uh, Razor here. I thought Please it would do. be not that Razor only does video games. He's also uh, makes a makes a uh, a pastime of being incredibly wrong about guns. Um, but uh, yeah, you go ahead and tell that story, Paul. You, you go ahead, tell us. Jim, story. have you been drinking again? Has he ever stopped? I don't. I don't that's drink. like ask that. That's like asking uh, you know uh, the Pope if he's been fiddling little kids today. Like, oh, of course, come Jim's on, Paul. It's a, it's a low blow, Paul. Low blow. Jim Jim can't fucking get Literally out of a bed blow. Without, a, without a fucking big slug of Johnny Walker Black Label. At least he has good taste. Hey. That, so, shut the fuck up, Jim. So I um, <laughs> le- le- shut up. You might learn something. I um, I used to play a video game called Ultima Online, and uh, it was back in the in the nineties, and it was one of the first commercially successful. Successful MMO RPGs, if that makes any sense to people. Oh, you're such uh, a like, fucking dick, mother Paul, you motherfucker! Can we kick this fucking <laughs> faggot out of the room? <laughs> oh, Goodbye, oh, oh shit! Let's give him another chance. One more chance. Come on, Come Jim. On. Simmer down, Come Jim. All right, okay, I'm sorry. I, you know what, I'm you know sorry. what Jim? I'll listen, Jim. Look, as much as I dislike you, I trust you. You're not going to interrupt me again, are you? <laughs> of course not. Why would I? Ever you're going to be. You're going to be a good little dinor, aren't you? I, I am not the dinor. That's my dino. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good little dino. Now sit and <laughs> shut the fuck up. Hey, go go suck on a bull's puss. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's an oldie but a goldie, folks. It's even better the second time. Oh man, and it's like reg- it's, it's like reg- it's like regurgitating butterscotch ice cream. You know, it's slightly pleasant, but overall just a bad experience the second time around. Um, look, Fireball Z. Oh fuck! All right, all right goodbye. It. Bye, Jim. Bye, Jim Ash, you're gone. <laughs> you're gone, Jim. You're garbage, Jim. Oh man, I love Jim. You fucking drunk. We still love you, Jim. <sighs> I, I, I love you, Jim. I love you, Jim. Um, look, I used to play Ultima online, and I know, it, like, it's like World of Warcraft, right? But it was very, very early World of Warcraft. It had an isometric, top-down perspective. It wasn't very, very pretty to look at, but it was a really cool game because it it allowed people to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. Now, I know that, uh, Ben, uh, you play a little bit of the Old Republic, uh, Star yeah. Wars The Old Republic. So you're aware of, like, yeah, I've Jesus seen you Christ. play. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you played a little bit of the, even the, uh, the Star Trek MMO as well, right? Yeah. So you kind of know how it works in MMOs, where, like, nowadays, when you die in an MMO, you don't lose anything, really. Except Nothing. For time. Right, you just kind of appear back at a fucking gravestone, and you got to run back and keep going and doing what you were doing. In Ultima Online, if you died, you lost everything, all your shit, yeah. anything you were wearing was fucking gone. Right, so it added this whole level of tra- and on top of that, outside of towns, which was a, made up a very very small proportion of this giant world map in Ultima, um, you could kill people. You could attack Didn't- any. 
Also, it's PvP. Too. Wasn't wasn't yeah. Diablo two like that too? And also, like if you in died, the hardest modes of Diablo two, if you yeah. died, someone could like run up and take your shit while you were dead too, Diablo, right? Diablo one was like that. Okay, the first Diablo had this toggleable. P- I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. I mean, I loved them for it because I had so much fun playing it. But it had this toggleable PvP switch that when you hit it, it allowed you to affect other characters with your spells, but they didn't have to consent to it. So it wasn't like a dual button or something. It was just like, oh, let me just turn this on and fucking hit you with a lightning bolt <laughs> and then take all your gear. Peace out, faggot, you know. Um, <laughs> but th- this game was like that. So, but dying wasn't the end-all be-all, but it could set you back a long ways. Like, if you died and lost everything in World of Warcraft, you're fucked, right? Because you spent, you know, years getting that fucking equipment. Um, and, and ultimately, you could make your own equipment. You could scrounge up money and buy some decent equipment and be back in the game. But you don't want to get killed, right? So it adds this whole level of intrigue to the game that just doesn't really exist in modern MMOs anymore. And I started playing this game, and I learned very early on that the rules in this game were that there were no rules. That the most cunning, the smartest... Uh, the the most ruthless person was always going to win at this game, no matter what. Um, it was it so, was kind of the Dark Souls of its day. It, no, it really was. It really was, and it was so fucking cool to play. Um, so me and a couple of friends were playing, and we got together one day. We're smoking some pot, and uh, we're talking about like what we can do in Ultima. Like we need to start making some money. I'm tired. Of, so at the time, we were trying to save up for our own little house, and that's another cool thing about Ultima is that you could you know, buy a house and build it in the world and it existed as a, a tangible object that could actually be broken into by other players and burglarized, um, which is totally unheard of. Once again, anyway, I'm going on and on about that. So we got together and we were like, how are we going to make some fucking uh, money without boring ourselves to tears in this game? So we decided to run a scam. And the scam went like this, okay? We would stand near the bank in the main town, which was called Britain in, in, in this game, uh, which is where everybody hung out to sell things and recruit for their guild or whatever, find people that could make them this, that, or the other thing. It was just like a big marketplace of people. And we would all dress alike, and we would start spamming the chat with um, invites to our guild, right? Or we were going to talk about this guild, right? Are you tired of uh, you know having to spend hours chopping trees and, and making bows and arrows to, to fund your your PVP. Well, we have the fucking answer, man. We have a fucking castle on an island, which could exist in this game. We have a castle on an island with chests in it full of everything that you need. And any, and, and any member of our guild, as long as we trust you, can freely take what, what they need, as long as, you know, every once in a while you put a little back. So we're playing into that human greed, right? We're twisting the nipple a little bit, going, oh, I might be able to rip these guys off and never have to worry about money again, right? But of course, there is no guild. There is no fucking castle. Um, there's no chests. We don't have anything ourselves. Um, so we start talking to people. Now, in, the, in Ultima at the time that I was playing... Um, the, there, there, were, there were different character types you could play, uh, and one of them was a mage. And mages were incredibly powerful, but they were also incredibly expensive. Um, it took a lot of money and time to make a mage. And the most precious thing to a mage in Ultima was their spell book. Because you have to buy each individual spell and then scribe it into your spell book. And they're very expensive, and you have to travel all over the fucking world to get these spells. So a full spell book is a mage's best friend their most valuable possession. So we would, we would start talking to these people, and some people weren't quite thirsty enough. They'd go, ha-ha, no thanks. But there were a few people, and, and let me tell you a story about what happened like in general. We would go, okay, so look, we're not bullshitting you here. We're shooting straight, uh, but we need to be able to trust you, right? Because, of course, anybody would want to just come loot us dry. So we need to know that you are willing to put your shit on the line for us before we put our shit on the line for you. Okay, well, what do you need? Give us everything that you've got. What do you, what do you mean everything I've got? Everything you're wearing. Take it, put it in a bag, and put it in a trade window. Well, okay, and, and everything in your bank. Everything in my bank. Everything in your bank. Put it in a bag, put it in a trade window. What about my spell book? Definitely your spell book. <laughs> in Voluntary a bag. I said, highway look, robbery. I said, look, dude, look, dude, this is just a trust exercise. As soon as you've done this, you're going to be on a fucking island filled with fucking treasures. 
<laughs> so these people would do it. They would hand it over. Now, I, being me, couldn't just leave it the way it was, right? I couldn't just walk away and go, LOL, faggot, you just got raped. Thanks for the sh- shit and log off, right? I had to have a, a, a little flourish at the end. So I would tell them after, after they gave me the stuff, I would tell them, I would say, you've made the right choice today. Uh, welcome to the brotherhood, man. So what you're going to do is you're going to head to the docks. Um, and there's going to be a ship there waiting for you. Uh, you'll, you'll know the ship uh, because they're one of, one of our guild members. Um, uh, one of our guild members will be waiting there for you to pilot the ship to the island. We'll get you all set up, okay? Oh, man, thank you guys so much. It's so fucking awesome. What's the guy's name that I'm looking for at the docks? And, and uh, of course, I had this go-to name I used every time, which was U-B-E-E-N-S-C-R-O-O-D. You've been screwed. And um, I would tell him, you're going to meet a guy named Eubin Screwed at the dock. <laughs> and he's going to take you to the magical palace. <laughs> of the um, Paul's ego scams people. <laughs> give the money back, Paul. Give, give the money back, Paul's ego. Like sounds like Warren the original. Had, give the, the bows back. It just sounds like the original uh, version of Star Citizen, basically, is what it no, late really 90s is. star citizen a little bit it, it really is i mean they were doing it back then and, and i'm so i'm really excited to see some games are starting to go that direction now because to be able to do that i used to do other shit too my main oh, no, no, no. Character- i mean i mean the scam aspect i'm not even talking about the fucking gameplay i'm yeah. talking about taking people's fucking money and running my main character was named toothless crack ho and <laughs> uh, And uh, I would hang out in the Britain graveyard, which is a place where people would hang. It was a good place to to grind for money because there were a lot of skeletons and zombies that spawned there. But it was also a hangout for rogues and thieves of the night and horrors like me. And I would uh, hide because in this game you could hide, you could pick pockets. So I would hide and pick people's pockets while they were fighting skeletons. And then if they attacked me, because it like... If you attack somebody first, then they, then uh, never mind. I'm not going to explain the whole situation. But let's just say that if I steal from them successfully and they attack me, I can now kill them without any repercussions. So I'm wearing nothing, and they think, oh, this fucking idiot newbie thief guy just stole something from me. I'm just going to whack him a couple times with my sword. And then I light him up because I'm a master mage, right? So, um, And then I take everything that he owns uh, yeah, for, my, for my own. The extent of my Ultima Online experience was venturing five five entire feet outside of town and being just raped in every hole. <laughs> yeah, everyone. And that's, I think, the reason why we see MMOs the way they are today. And I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Because, like, people didn't like that. People didn't like that feeling of not being safe. They wanted to be cuddled. They wanted a little hug box where they didn't lose their stuff if a mean old ganker came along. And I'm so, I'm, I'm really excited to see some games starting to, cut away from that mold a little bit because if if a game comes out that can approximate Ultima Online, I'll be playing it. Absolutely. Sweet. And that's, right. that's story with Paul. <laughs> Sweet. That's great. I loved great it. Story. That was fucking hilarious. Uh, thank you to Razor Fist for being Razor on the Fish. show. Thank you to Paul. There's Zico a link in the description here. to Paul Razor Zico. Fist's channel. Yeah, you can subscribe to Razor Fist if you want subscribe. to. Subscribe! Recommended highly. Great videos. Yeah, as always, we do story time with Paul at the end of the show. But uh, before we do story time with Paul, we do have something else that we're going to do here, and that is. Apparently, CC has a story that he would like to share with all of us. All right, okay. Well, Uh, uh, can you dither at the beginning? I literally, like, I'm sitting here bouncing. I have to pee so bad. So I will be right back. French vanilla. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll catch up when you get back. Please start. Yeah, get the the fuck out of here. Get get the fuck out of here, motherfucker. All right, all right. I just want to know, you guys can hear me just uh, fine? Yes. My computer's kind of acting a little weird right now. You can hear me just fine? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So, the reason why I'm telling this story is because apparently on the fucking DP wiki, um, you know, there, there, there are these rumors that uh, at one point TJ owned me, that, that I was uh, a, a pet of TJ. And on top of that, 
you know, a lot of freaking shotamites, they come to me and they say, hey, Chris's cat, can you tell us a little bit about your origins? So this is going to clear up those rumors and give a little people, uh, I mean, a, a, a few shotamites, uh, you know, like uh, the, the, the scoop on, on my very early origin. So here we go. Now, look, I never, ever was owned. I was never the pet of TJ. That never happened. The reason why this rumor kind of just grew out of proportion is because when my mother shat my, myself and, and the rest of our litter out, you know, she died shortly after childbirth. And uh, TJ and his family at the time, they, they, they were scavengers. This is years before the DP podcast. They lived sort of like uh, G-Time Johnny, except they were, they, they were total word slaves. And uh, basically, anything outside of feces they could get their hands on, they would eat. Maybe even feces, depending on how hard up they were. And so I was nursing for a few days for my mom as she was dying in the wild because, you know, the birth had taken so much out of her. And uh, as, as soon as, uh, you know, she, she was dying, TJ and Scotty came along and they snatched up her carcass along with all of my brothers and sisters. Now, luckily, I had gone uh, out to, to take a dump show, so I wasn't there at the time. And, you know, some of them were alive and many of them were dead because they had no nourishment from her malnourished teats. And uh, anyhow, I, I, I was able to follow them to their lair at the time because, you know, I have a keen sense of smell. I'm a freaking cat. And I got there and these inbred freaking hillbilly fucks were naked in their filthy fucking layer of death, they th there were bones scattered everywhere, cheesy fucking Daglo posters on the wall. It was basically like a cross between a Texas Chainsaw Massacre and and like the, a backdrop from Days of Confused. So I watched them eating my brothers and sisters, and and they turned suddenly. And and I was like, holy shit! I gotta get I gotta get going. I shot out like a rocket, and I started pouncing down this this dark corridor. But you know that they, they couldn't keep up, and I arrived in this room where there was this shrine, and at the 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 heart of the room was uh, Paul's ego, and he was completely naked, and he had yeah. like he he had like uh, I think like pudding or or some like I, I i don't even know what like like some sort of v french vanilla situation all over his chest and and uh and anyway he was being worshipped by like all of these uh, all, all of these guys in fucking mexican masks and they turned around and uh and and i just i, I ran out in in like uh, not like uh, like you know just a, a heartbeat, and I I vowed that I would have my revenge on that day. Mm. But that's that's my story. Well, all right, yeah. I mean, I I I don't I I I gotta be honest. With you, I I don't blame you for wanting revenge. Um. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, uh, can I launch right into story time with Paul here? If 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 people don't have anything to add to see, do you want story? me to play the intro or whatever? Oh, uh, uh, do, does the Pope wear a pointy hat? Yes, play the fucking intro. All right, it's not here we story go. time with Paul without the intro. Story time with Paul. With Paul. All right. Ooh. With Paul. So. Somebody on one of my social media things. Um, of course, Paul. Yeah, we do want to hear a story time with Paul. So you know what? Go ahead and say your story. Okay, Jim. Uh, don't Jim, don't Jim, do it again. Jim. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're on notice now, Jim. The next time you open your fucking gob, I'm gonna fuck that dinosaur's puffy asshole. Well, it's gonna shit on you. So just go ahead and fuck it. Anyway, 
So uh, somebody on my social media said, next story time with Paul, please uh, tell like a sexy story. And I, I thought about it and I was like, have I told a sexy story on, on, on DP yet? Like, have I, have I explained my sexual prowess to the drunken peasants audience at large? No, I don't think I have. So I thought I'd tell a story about, about sex. And uh, I've told this on my channel before, but once again, you know, uh, the, the stories are always evolving. So I was uh, house-sitting one time with my ex, and um, we had these friends, and they went out of town, and they trusted me. I was about 19 years old. They trusted me to watch their house and they, while they were out of town, and, and they had this little wiener dog <clears throat> named Archie. Now, Archie um, was not fixed, <clears throat> and Archie had big old jiggly, pendulous, stanky balls. I mean, just smelly. Like, you could smell these balls from across the room. Um, just big old nasty balls, and he was proud of them too. Like Archie was yeah, known yeah. for putting stink, his ball- stink, stinky balls in, the, you know, wiener, wiener. <laughs> All dog. right, fuck you, Jim. Yeah. Fuck you. You're gone. Goodbye, bitch. Fucking Jim ass. <laughs> Fucking Jim ass, man. Fucking Jim. Why do you? What do you? Bring, what do you bring him in here? Anyway, um, I love you, Jim. Um, look. So Archie would Archie was known for jumping up on the couch, right? And he would he would he would he would stand there for a second and get your attention. He wanted to make sure that you saw the balls. Like he wasn't just proud to have the balls and you know, I got these balls and it's these are my balls. I can't do nothing about it. He wanted you to know that these balls were there. Like he wanted you to see the balls. And he would sit on the couch, right? Like he'd go, he'd come up sit, stand right next to you on the couch and then he would kind of Flick his hips to the left, and the balls would swing out, and then he'd just sit down with the ball, like, next to his balls. The ball's on full display, and he'd just look at you, like, what are you going to do now, motherfucker? Yeah, I got big old, big old nasty balls. Anyway, you, you're probably asking yourself what this has to do with sex. One night, we were, we're house-sitting, taking care of Archie, and we didn't feel right, you know, because we were, you know, we wanted to be fucking, so, but it's, it's always kind of gross fucking in somebody else's bed, because, like, I don't know about what, what happens when y'all be fucking, um, but there's fluids when I be fucking like all kinds of bodily fluids be having. There's the blood and pus and spit, and <laughs> snot, and just fucking cum and just jizz and squidge just flying fucking everywhere. Like it's a goddamn horror show. But like, that's the, that's the truth. And I don't want to do that on somebody else's bed. So we brought like a, an inflatable mattress, right? And we blew it up and got it all poofed up. And that's where we were sleeping. And we were sleeping, you know, we were doing the big spoon, little spoon position. Everybody knows that, right? I'm playing the big spoon, of course. And uh, I got my arm kind of around, like, up, you know, one arm's kind of behind her head. And the other arm's kind of over her chest a little bit. And, you know, we're, we, you know, I start, you know, trying to initiate some shit. She's receptive immediately. You know, starts making the little cooing noises and shit that you, that you, that you come to expect. And I was like, all right, this is going down. You know what I mean? It's, and at this, at this point, honestly, like, sex was pretty new to me. Like, at 19, I wasn't exactly like Don Juan DeMarco, okay? This is the first, the first lady that ever, like, uh, lowered herself to allowing my penis in her vagina. So, like, I was pretty fucking, like, ready to go all the time. So I'm kissing on her neck, and I'm nibbling on her ear, and I'm whispering sweet little Paul's ego nothings that only certain people get to hear because, you know, like I like to be honest about myself, but I ain't sharing all my little <laughs> tricks with y'all. You know, there are a few people. You know who you are. There are a few people out there that know what I'm talking about. There's one in particular. Anyway, um, but I start whispering, and she starts making noises. Now, I love noises. Like, and you guys, guys in the room, the noises that a woman makes when you're doing something that feels good, is that not the best fucking sound in the world? Yes. Unless it's like Jim Ass's <laughs> wife and it's like, oh, fuck my fat, hairy cunt. Like, that's gross. But like, <laughs> damn. But like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm fucking stoned. I, um, I'm really high. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this story, y'all, because it, it does have a point, but goddamn. Oh, uh, let me take these glasses off. Um, look, she's making noises. I'm loving it. But she's making noises like, unlike the noises. That I've ever heard her make, like d given what was going on, because everything was above the waist at this point. Now I might have been dibble dabbling a little bit with the titties. I might have been tweaking a nippy dip here and there. I might have even, been, I might have even been rubbing the tummy, but it never went nowhere below the tummy. And she's making noises that are not just like, mm, "That feels good." Oh, you're so naughty. It was more like, "Oh fuck," um, and I was like, "God damn." Okay, well, look. I know I'm good, but Jesus Christ, lady. So I'm thinking, like, what is going on here? Well, I'm not going to stop. D clearly, I'm not going to stop, but, like, nothing's happening. Like I said, I still got my fucking pants on. 
Um, so she's, the noises get more and more wanton and more and more needy. You know, that need that a woman gets, you know, just, oh, fuck. And, 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 then, and then all of a sudden, something happens. My world gets shattered. And it will never be the same, never has been the same since. She's right in the middle of just making a noise that she shouldn't have been making, given the fact that we were above the belt. And she goes, oh, my fucking God, and throws the sheets back. And what I saw changed my fucking life. And I'm going to end the story on this. Archie had wormed his way up underneath the blanket. Oh, my God, no. (laughs) And had his tongue about 15 inches into her vagina. Oh. <laughs> oh. And uh you know when when a dog has balls <laughs> And this is the this is the fucked up part. Now you know I've never added this cuz I always thought it was a little gross and unnecessary given the punchline of the story, but when a dog has balls like Archie, right? It's already bad enough. When a dog like eats your fucking girlfriend out right in front of your face, <laughs> And then, and then, and this is the punchline, and then I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And then when he walks away, he's got a big old fucking lipstick boner, just proudly fucking bobbing there. (laughs) You know what? As a man, as a man, you never recover from that shit. And that's story time with Paul. Before you say say anything, Ben, I just want to say I love you all. Um, My name is Paul Zego. It's been great. I love all these people that are here. I love Drunken Peasants 2.0. Episode number one, I think, was a, a resounding success. Yes, I agree. And I, and I can't wait for, for, you know, episode two. I'm the yeah. star. All right. And I wanted to thank everyone. Thank you, Paul's Ego. Thank you, Pimp Monk. Thank you, Creationist Cat. Thank you, Jim Ass, I guess. Thank you, Evan LeFaver. Happy birthday. Thanks to all of you for watching. I, I, I want to th- I, I, I apologize for that horrible... Horrible story that I just that, that I just unleashed upon the world. I I I told that story on another fucking uh, chat in where I was not you, you know it does not take much alcohol to get a cat drunk. Okay, I just want you guys to know that for the future. So uh, a few days ago I told that and people were like. Dude, you gotta tell that on the fucking drunken peasants. Well, fuck you, assholes. <laughs> I, I, I fucking tried it, and it, it was it was a failure. And I and I blame you. I blame you, and I'm coming for you. I'm gonna claw your fucking throats your throats out, <coughs> and then I'm, and then I'm gonna fucking take your hearts and put them in my fucking litter box and shit well, on them I, for the I next. I tell you week. what. I, I tell you what, CC, you learned a very important lesson that every content creator learns at some point. I'm surprised that God didn't zap you through the internet with this knowledge immediately, but maybe <laughs> he wanted you to learn the, the wrong way. Fans are great. I love the fans. Chat, I'm looking at you right now, scrolling by. I see some tuna. I see some hearts. I see love. I see hate. I love the chat. Fans yeah. are great, but their fucking opinions don't matter for shit. Don't listen to them. Don't take advice from the goddamn fans ever, ever. You do you, CC. You do you. And I want to do you, Paul. Mm. By the oh, way, not to plug it one more time, but 800 bucks, get the fucking money together. Me and Pim Mung will swap spit. I want to see it. January, I, I want it to happen in January. I don't want to wait. It, and it's and it's for Galen. Like, let's just be honest here. I'm sorry to fucking bring it down, but it's for Galen. Like, y'all yep. have probably seen Galen on the show. I know Galen personally. I've talked to him outside. I don't mean to be all flowery and shit, but I I got this platform. I'm gonna use it real quick. Galen is yeah. a fucking amazing guy. He's in a lot of pain. You could really make his life. We could a whole lot. the quality of his life would increase greatly if if everybody that was watching this show gave one dollar right now. We could we could call it Seriously. we could call it getting gay for Galen. Getting gay for guys, gay. Yeah. guys. His <laughs> here's head, the deal. his head might explode. Okay, uh, that's not uh, cool. You well, got it. But Ben Hashtag. wants it to happen in January. If you want it to happen in January, Pimp Monk gonna need some goddamn money too. I want to be there. I want to be there, and then like TJ will watch all that man love going on, and he won't be oh, able to handle it. Man. Yeah, he'll get involved, and you know he's a bear. He's a big motherfucker. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Hashtag, Hashtag, Hashtag gay for Galen. Oh, oh fuck you, Jim ass. Fuck oh, you. Before I yeah. leave, before I leave, I want to throw this out. I did it in the video, and he never replied. 
But small dick Olympics, TJ, I'm challenging you to the small dick Olympics. It's events like, can you stick your dick in a Cheerio without breaking it? Hula hoop yeah. lifesavers, shit like that. I believe my dick is smaller than yours. I know that's nothing to brag about. But is, the fi- is the final event who can uh, satisfy a woman the least? <laughs> <laughs> when, well, no. Nah, if it comes down to a tie, we have a mini joust. Oh. When, <laughs> when is a dick no. so small yeah. that it's considered a clit? Um, <laughs> that's what we're trying to find out. That's, that's what, what we want to know. To. That's what we're trying to get to here. So, All TJ, right. be uh, a man, damn it. All right, show's over. Good night, everybody, and thanks to everyone. Let's do story time with Paul. Paul, you can be only Paul? one. Yeah, people were also calling for Brett Keen too, but I guess we can do that next time. Fuck he, Brett next time, you know, I'd about- like to, if I ever come on here again, oh, I'm sure I will be. Um, I really like to talk with the vill- Is it the villagent? Villiant? I don't know how to say his name. Villagent was- Christian Mario kid. I think I'd be really fun to interact with him. I've never interacted with him other than like outside of uh, two videos I did do him. And then All right, just well, we'll try to get you on when he's here. I mean, uh, not to crush your dreams, rep, but pro tip: it's not fun. I it's not. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 pretty it's pretty fucking lame but oh know. it is yeah well, that's just yeah. your worldview it's buddy. just your your world that's, that's just world paul's Peter. worldview uh repsion oh oh yeah world <laughs> story time with paul with paul with paul so i thought i'd do a quick little ode to the shitty old town that i finally escaped um tonight because why the fuck not I don't know if this is really an ode to the town, but just kind of a kind of a couple of things that happened to me there that I guess I'm happy happened. Um, I've always told people that my first job was working at uh, at a Wendy's, and that's that's a total fucking lie. Uh, my first job I got when I was eight years old, and it was as a pornographer. Um, huh. Now, you might wonder, like, how does that happen? How does an eight-year-old become a pornographer? Well, I had this Uncle Floyd. Of course, his oh name my God, Floyd. Jesus! Uh, wow, you, this, you know. is a, this is a this is an interesting story, all right? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and he had this picture up over his bar of this Aztec woman lying in repose with her tits out, mm. and it was the first pair of like drawn, painted, real attractive female tits that I had ever seen. And so I was enamored with, with this painting. And, um, and then I figured out that when I went into the bathroom one day to take a shit while we were over at Floyd's house, that, you know, he had a bunch of National Geographics next to the toilet. But, like, if you dug three deep in the National Geographics, it was all Playboys, right? <laughs> so, of course, seven, eight-year-old Paul suddenly has to take a shit every half hour. And they're the longest <laughs> shits that you've ever fucking seen in a seven-year-old take. People were genuinely concerned for my well-being. They thought I might be like, like, horrifyingly constipated or something. But really, I was just in there thumbing through these Playboys, and I was just absolutely fucking like, it was great. It was like the whole world opened up to me, you know. And uh, he knew I was in there doing it. And so one day after I had taken a particularly long shit, he's waiting for me outside with his trash bag, and he goes, uh, "PJ, come here." And he goes, uh, I made you a little present here. You can't show your mom, all right? Just go ahead and take this home with you and stash it somewhere. Um, you know, this is so you don't have to come over here and take long shits anymore. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, oh, my God, could it be? Um, and it was. I got it home, and I, I had this, and this will come, I guess, into the story a little later. I had this, my dad built me this playhouse. We used to live out in the country. And he had this playhouse called Kid Town. And it was actually like an old western storefront. It was really cool. Um, And I had a bar, PJ's Saloon. It had a big sign, you know, the old western sign, PJ's Saloon. And it had a secret compartment that I'd made in it uh, behind the bar. And so I went back, you know, I took took it back there, opened it up, and it's just chock full of playboys and penthouses, which was a whole new world for me at eight years old. Now, why did my Uncle Floyd... Give an eight-year-old a bunch of penthouse magazines. I don't know, but I don't begrudge him it. You know, it was it, it made me the man I am today. You know, I get to say that I was a pornographer. You know, I was an entrepreneur. I was a pornography entrepreneur at eight years old. So I'm so I stashed him in my little bar, 
And I would go and I would look at them all the time. Uh, I basically lived out there. But it was fine because I was a kid in this playhouse, right? And then all of a sudden, I don't know what it was. One day I showed them to my friend, uh, John, um, who uh, incidentally was also the friend that shoved a screwdriver up my ass. Which I guess I could talk about that too. Um, I don't know if I've ever told that story right here. Let's digress. Why not? It's a Paul's ego story. Uh, when I was five... Uh, um, I was uh, caught in the back seat of, or in the back of my mom's uh, Ford F one hundred and fifty, with my best friend John, um, and I was on all fours with my ass uh, like <laughs> face down, <laughs> ass up, basically, with my pants down. Cringe. And there, there was a plastic screwdriver, like one of like a toy screwdriver, buried to the hilt in my asshole. And John was, <laughs> cringe, and, uh, cringe. <laughs> John was just kind of wow. kicked back. Yeah, John was just kind of kicked back, you know, uh, with his with his uh, you know his head in his hands, like Johnny Bench, just kind of wa- like examining, I guess, my asshole. And I was perfectly cool with it. Um, so anyway, yeah, this guy. So I bring him over. Now this is years later, um, and I bring him over, and he's like, "Holy shit!" And he had the greatest fucking idea ever. He was like, "You could fucking charge people to look at this." And I was like, "It was like." a light bulb went off in my head and I knew what my life's goal was. And so I started a pornography ring on Donald Avenue in Madera, California, but for prepubescent boys. I don't don't know how else to put it. Um, We had this friend, Kevin. He came over and I was like, dude, you want to see some naked chicks? He was like, yeah. I was like, how much lunch money you got, nigga? What you what you got on my forty, basically, um, and and so he would bring like a buck, and I'd let him, I'd give him like you know fifteen minutes in the in the playhouse alone, looking at whatever he wanted. Oh to. my god! And that spread to you know our friend Shane and a, a couple other older guys got in on it, and the whole thing was brought down by Kevin, unfortunately, who had to go home and say something to his mom about how he was looking at naked ladies over at my house. And his mom fucking called my mother, and the whole the 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 magazines were confiscated. My porn and I felt like Larry Flint, to be honest with you. My whole porn empire just crumbled out from underneath me. Um, I had a massive stroke, and uh, then I was outside of the Chuck E. Cheese in Fresno, California, and a crazy fuck walked up and shot me. Um, so I had another stroke after that. Um, it was just fucked. Like, but yeah. So that was my first job. I made quite a sizable sum of money. My mom made me donate it to the homeless shelter, though. Uh, I had a mason jar filled, according to her, filled with $5 and $1 bills. She said it was a couple of hundred dollars um, worth of kids' lunch money over the you know five and six months that I got away with this. So that was kind of cool. Um, that, that playhouse, though, John Buckles and I, we used to play uh, hide-and-go-seek a lot with kids. Well, okay, here's another one. You remember, so the there was a jail in Kid Town, right? And my dad made this jail, and it had actual bars, but you could lift the, you could lift the bars out and just escape. Like, well, that was the whole point, right? And there was also one of the boards that made up the back wall of the jail it had it obvious hinges on it, and you could just uh, and walk out the back of the jail as well. It was, you know, it was cool to have a jail that the bad guys could escape from. Well, you guys remember Sean Johnson? Uh, hey, the, the the little boy that I blamed the trumpet on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the yeah. weird okay, voice so Sean and shit. Johnson, not the smartest kid in the world. We locked him in that jail room <coughs> and went running off because we just assumed he wouldn't be retarded enough to sit in a jail um, where you could lift the bars out and walk out the back fucking door through a hinged board. Um, so we locked him in the jail and we went off and kept playing. He was in, he was in there for six and a half hours while his parents were at work. Weeping profusely and shaking the bars and screaming for somebody to help him. A neighbor heard him and came and lifted the bars out and let him out. So that's that's another Sean Johnson tale there. I oh, guess. my God. Um, but um, to kind of put a period on it, my, my, my friend John and I dug a big grave out behind this thing to play hide and go seek in. We had a, a, this six foot deep, but it was like a. It was like a mass grave, though. It was six feet deep, but it was like, I don't know, it was it was long. We spent days and days and days digging this fucking thing because we wanted a place where we could win hide-and-go-seek every time. And so we we covered it with weeds, and there was this old gate that my dad had. We tied a bunch of, like, uh, tumbleweeds to it and used it to hide the thing. 
Well, years later when my parents divorced, I'd forgotten that this thing was there. Um, but it was there, you know, six feet deep and huge um, and covered in a gate, covered in weeds. And you can imagine after a couple of years of sitting there, it was just completely invisible. And I, I, the, my most catalyzing memory as a child is the day that I that they were bulldozing my little playhouse. Oh, by the way, by the way, Paul, Paul, I don't yeah. want to interrupt too much, but uh, Repsion is bored. He, he just announces yes, to the I chat room. Well, fuck you, dude. <laughs> I'm you bored. Suck my dick, Repsian. Come over here. Uh, over okay. Come over here, big boy. Come on. <laughs> I need tickets, faggot. Um, anyway, not to belabor the point, but this big fucking pit was there. I, I was sitting across the street watching them bulldoze my childhood playhouse. And they had this big tractor uh, that they were pulling this tilling thing behind. One of these big, expensive farm implements. And uh, I watched that fucking thing capsize and turn over in that fucking grave that I dug. And it was the best day of my life. It was the best day of my life. So that's, that's what a did, little ode, I guess, to Madera. How, how long did it take to get out of the fucking hole? Did I you, don't do know. You know. I didn't hang around. Uh, I, I laughed and ran to my friend John's house and told him. And we went back and looked at it. They definitely had to get another fucking piece of farm equipment to come pull that thing out. Because there was no way. Uh, it was coming out. Man, normal. I feel like that makes me want to just go around digging holes for things <laughs> to fall in. Dig yeah. a hole, cover it up, wait for some hilarity to happen. <laughs> Probably so, dangerous, anyway, though. Yeah, that's, you know, just a couple of little stories about my, my hometown. And uh, I hope I never go there again. Well, <laughs> Repsion, Repsion says He's your story is fucking Fuck yeah. you, Paul. He's so bored he may just flag this video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> DMTA, you bored poor you know, little Repsian. Some, that's something that I actually wanted to address on Vegan Games because he got really mad that I blocked one of his videos, which I did do. But I actually have a really good explanation for it. Well, let's wait till he's good. here so he can defend himself. Yeah, but I, I hopefully like we can make this happen in the next uh, I don't know week or so. Well, I, I was. I'm, I'm really glad we we stopped story time with Paul for that scintillating tidbit of information from Repsian, who's you know <laughs> been a, a, a solid what 15, maybe 16 sentence guest. So kudos. Yeah, that's always me. That's <laughs> always been me, though. <laughs> I've always been boring and not very talkative on the show. You know what the fucking crazy thing is? We actually had this really good interview with him one time, but the audio that was, was totally I fucked. I so much. I he was a that. fucking. He was also. a regular blabbermouth. He was going on and on. It was interesting. It was funny. It was like, wow, was that the same Repsion? And then <laughs> Who is this? We go back to listen to it. Like, wow, we finally got a good Repsion interview thing, and we listen to it. Like, oh fuck, the audio is shit. It's all yeah. fucked up. God, the lost episode of Repsion. That would have been the best. Yeah. Maybe one day you we guys swear Repsion like, is actually capable of being charismatic and interesting. I promise you. Guys. <laughs> I know I it's, it's a skeptical. rarity, but I do hold that quality. Isn't yes, so much better, on occasion. Anyway, thank you, Repsion, for being here. Thank you, Paul, for being here. Yeah, thank we'll you, get the uh, Paul's girlfriend Ashley for being here. Thank you to Ben and Scotty and me, most of all me. Uh, and fuck you to Vegan Gains who lied. Thank you, fucking Jesus. Lied. Oh we'll God. get it going. We'll we'll get it. But we'll make it happen. Yeah. Fuck this. This is fucking happening. I don't care if he's even dead. We'll reanimate his fucking corpse. <laughs> Sweet. I look forward so to that. So here's the here's the question, guys. Is there a show on Friday and am I going to be there? Uh I'm going to say Fridays? Ugh. What is there? Friday, that's New Year's Day. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't see I don't see I don't see why I mean maybe I don't know. We'll talk we'll think about it. We'll announce it on Wednesday. I'm pretty sure that. we will, but we'll see. We'll let you we'll know. We'll, we'll we'll announce it. Well it is New Year's Day. It's not like it's New Year's Eve. You're so right. yeah, probably gonna be a show. Yeah. yeah, I would imagine so. And I would say Paul, yes. Yeah, Paul will be there. Yeah. All right. Uh Anyway, so thank you guys and uh, rock on. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Sorry that we couldn't deliver on what we promised, but uh, you know, guests didn't show Circumstances. up. Circumstances. So what you gonna do? It's I'm the first time ever in 190 uh, episodes. All joking it wasn't aside. My fault. All wasn't joking my fault. aside, I'm sure that Vegan Gains has a good reason sure. for missing this. His flight I, probably got delayed. Yeah, yeah probably sure. flight delays. I know there's some s- snowstorms and shit probably going on in Canada. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, uh, rock on, and uh, that's the end. Oh, uh, one, one last thing. One last Sweet thing before we go, uh, Repsian, take that fucking shock collar off your dog. They don't work. You fucking retard. They do work. They, they fucking monster. Work. Oh god, well they let's let this work. go. 
It's All completely right. she I've I've she would bark constantly 24/7 anytime someone walks up my apartment stairs you just and it's her. limited her barking to only a few times this in the past 2 hours that we've been doing this. It does work and You're it stops monster. her from jumping on me, which is another problem because her nails cut my through my skin because they're so sharp and I trim them but she's just she's is crazy it, puppy. Is it in Don't inhumane, discipline your dog. Is she's it inhumane? She's old. She's nuts. She's crazy. She's energetic. She needs to have How do discipline. you feel about it, Scotty? Is it inhumane? Completely. Repsion probably jerks off thinking about how he's going to abuse his dog every day. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, he just sits there like, shit. fuck. Yeah, I'm going to abuse that fucking damn animal. Fuck you. you know, I'd even make a goddamn video on YouTube. Fuck putting you. I'll put that shock on yeah, you, I bitch. I even, even, even shock myself on YouTube videos just on, on YouTube Good. to show that it's Shock yourself every fucking time you think about making a video you'll stop. You're a monster. <laughs> all right, all right. That's enough. The show's over. Let's go. She's like, I'm hungry. I'm I want Taco Bell. So because someone wasn't right with God, they were shot in the eye. <laughs> How the fuck did this woman get a gun? How the fuck did, uh, why the fuck was anyone else in her fucking apartment even? Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Come over to my house for Christmas Eve. Okay. You for in God? three days no. with a towel Boom. over her head. She told detectives the victim was a shrine from God. Tumblin, shocked to learn his neighbor could be capable of committing such a heinous crime. Hold on. Wow, I'm totally sh You just told them that she threatened to shoot you. All the time. And now you're surprised? I can't believe that bitch is always talking about how she's going to shoot somebody, shot somebody. Shock. I could not going to a human being do something like that. Now, Braxton is being charged with first-degree murder if the victim isn't... This guy's, this guy's 15 minutes of fame are amazing to watch, yes, dude. Gosh. He's like, he's, solic he's, he's giving a fucking Shakespearean uh, soliloquy here. Like, man, you just never see this type of shit coming. Wow. Good times. So what the fuck? This, this could have been me the other night. Like, the other night, I think it was... Night before last, Ashley and I went out to like a Denny's at 2 a.m. And this black couple comes in and gets seated. Now, I didn't even tell Ashley about this, but I was listening to the black guys he was ordering. And like he was trying to get every discount in the book. He was like, uh, y'all got a military discount? And the dude's huh. like, uh, uh, yeah, I guess we do. And he's like, OK, well, I'm a sergeant. And he's like a sergeant in what? He's like, I'm a sergeant in the army. It's like, OK. And he's like, you got a, you got a senior citizens? Anyway, he, he was jocking for every discount discount in the book then when we get up to leave he stops to talk to me he's like hey how y'all doing tonight and i was like hey what's up man how's it going <laughs> and uh i start talking to this guy and then his wife chimes in and drops the do you know jesus bomb on me oh god like uh-oh okay uh no but it, well, i had a long conversation but i think those people might have been nuts too is what i'm trying to get at like you never know you never know with these people man you aren't right with Jesus, Paul. You need to be shot in the fucking eye. <laughs> you, but, you know, it, you know that's not going to happen, though, because obviously, you know, that's being saved for the meetup. That's when you're going to get shot. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, that's Why? true. Hey, you can't get shot in the eye before then. You got to get shot at the meetup. Yeah, and it, what really sucks, too, for you, TJ, is that you'll be dead long before then because I'm coming to kill you first. So. Right. <laughs> so you're going to kill me, and then that guy's going to kill you, and I don't know who's going to be left to kill Ben and Scotty, but hopefully someone. Hopefully nobody. No, nah, someone's going to kill you guys. Can each other. Can't just be me. As can't long as Scotty Cena lives, the show will go on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah, look Ashley at will go crazy with grief from Paul's death and blame Ben for some ass. reason, and she'll kill Ben. And then you're going to be hung, Ben. You know. Someone awful. else will kill. Someone, I don't know who's going to kill Scotty. Maybe Scotty will kill himself with grief. Story time with Paul. All right. Yeah, I got to sit up for this shit. Um, okay. Oh, are you going to tell a story? Yeah, man. I'm, I'm going to try to, but you're going to you're going to do that hilarious shtick where you like interrupt <laughs> me with a non sequitur every 15 seconds until we boot you. Why not? Why not? Why Oh, Jim. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I just want Jim, to you're listen. like the Fonzie of the drunken peasants. You're the crazy hey. breakout character. You know that? Hey, you got your taglines. Hey, bull puss. So <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. Fireball Z. Judas Fireball Priest. Fireball Z. So what I was going to try and talk about tonight before Jim interrupts me 17 times till you kick him 
was alcohol. <laughs> we 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 covered alcohol as our favored drug of the of the show, right? Yes. The, the I, drug I, of the I day. I thought I'd talk about briefly another thing that happened to me on alcohol once. Um, it was at my mom's wedding, which, you know, I hate to involve my mother in all my alcohol stories, but she really, I think she is involved in most of them. Um, this one was at my mom's wedding and there was an after party, you know, there was a reception where everybody at the wedding got drunk. And then there was an after party where just like a core group of cool people got to come to get more drunk. Did and you so get drunk too? There. Did you get drunk too, Paul? You drank? I did. I did. Yes. Oh, oh yes, nice. Jim. Oh, yes, cool. I did. I drank, hey, Jim. I drank a whole Sh- lot of tequila. Shut the, the fuck up, night. Jim. Yeah, Jim, okay. keep your fucking dinor shut. Piece of okay. shit. Okay. Um, I, I, can't, I drank I can't a whole lot of tequila. Oops. All right, fucking Jim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will Apologize stop. again. Apologize I'm to the sorry, people Paul. watching the show who are just trying to listen to story time with Paul and then move on to something else. Apologize. I'm I'm sorry, people, for <laughs> listening to story time with Paul, and buy my Dino shirt, please. Okay. Apology accepted. So Move I was at on. my mom's wedding reception. I drank a lot of tequila. I got really drunk. I hit that point where you know that things are going to go poorly. Like you've already drank too much, and I kept how drink, drinking. How drunk did you get, Paul? <laughs> how drunk did you get? All, All right. right. All right. Kick this fag. Goodbye. I can't, I can't deal with Jim. Jim's too hot for me. So anyway, I, I I I was doing shots of tequila, and then people kept kept making me do shots of tequila, and, and well, not making me, but anyway, I got real. Jim has thrown me off my fucking game. I don't even want to tell the story. Yeah, now, he's Jim. good at he's good at that. He's gone. He's gone. No, I know, I know, I know, but he's listening. He's always listening. So I got really fucking tequila drunk. I'm out back. My head is spinning like this. I know I'm going to throw up. So I, being the responsible drinker that I am, decide I, if you're going to puke, you should do it somewhere where nobody has to clean anything up. The shower. I'm at my mom's house, so I go get in her shower. I should, you know, get nice and naked, and I get the hot water on me, and I sit down in the shower. Now, at some point, my girlfriend at the time comes looking for me. And this is how she tells the story. She says she opened the door and saw me there with my head down, sitting Indian style with, you know, the water on me. And she says, Paul, are you okay? And I look at her and then I look back down and I open my mouth and this like torrent of tequila and hot dogs and like Kool-Aid all over my balls. Like literally I just puked on my penis and balls. Oh, Oh, (laughs) gross. And uh, so... (laughs) So she says, oh, oh, God, you know, and she grabs the thing and helps rinse me off. So anyway, she takes me to bed, right? And she, this is her. I blame her for this, not me, because she saw me vomit on my own testicles. So she knows the level of drunk she's dealing with. She apparently thought it would be a good idea to engage in sexual congress with me while I was, um, you know, this this fucking drunk and allow me to go down on her. Now, that going down on a woman is a very particular situation. Like, you need to know what you're doing, uh. what you're not doing. And I'm really good at it, usually. But, like, when I'm drunk, I don't know what the fuck is going on. So she, she <laughs> describes it like this. She's laying back enjoying, you know, the Paul's ego ministrations. And um, I'm doing my business. And then all of a sudden, she feels something she's never felt before. Kind of a, kind of a rapid fire pressure, like this. And then it stops for a second. And then there's a rapid fire pressure. And she, she, she said, I kind of liked it at first, but it just kept going. And there was this weird pause in between them. And I was like, what is he doing? And she says she looked up and realized what had happened. I had fallen asleep with my entire face in her vagina. <laughs> and when I exhaled, it was making like a flapping noise as the air escaped the tight seal <laughs> her vagina had created around my mouth. So it was like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and, yeah, this is the same poor lady that got got eaten out by Archie. So um, I yeah. almost slept her to an orgasm. So that's how cool alcohol is, and that's story time with Paul tonight. Awkward. Not awkward. awkward. It's pretty odd, actually, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I was turned on. I got a boner. 
I think we got a little more time. I I, I do want to encourage everyone to give the video a thumbs up, please. Please. Yeah, thumbs thumbs up. up the video, you pieces of fucking shit. Have we got anything else? I mean, I do have other... Maybe we just play one more video because we got a little we got a little time left. Oh, uh, let's see. I got an Onision video. Nah. Um, <laughs> I'd be too afraid of him. Uh... <laughs> you think so? Somebody in the chat just typed Queefinous Prime. That's basically what it was. It was like the most like <laughs> just like flabby queef that ever got queefed. That's the best. Sounds like the title of a novel. The Flabby flabbiest queef, queef that ever got queefed. Ever got queefed. <laughs> Kurt Vonnegut's new novel. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, man. Story time. I should have said this earlier, but Paul told me. Paul pulled me aside. He's like, we can't be doing the story time with Paul thing all the time. Cause... Oh, well, no, you know what? It's okay, though. Uh, you've already played the here. intro. It's I am like here. It's the first time ever being It's the first time I've here. been in the studio. I should do a story time. I just got to be honest with you. I don't know a story that I want to tell more than just like the craziness that's gone on in my life recently. Do it. And I don't know if that's even worth telling. Huh. Just go ahead, Paul. Tell what you got to tell. Or maybe I'll like try and think of some time I committed. Sucks, we'll boo. I committed some horrifying act of incest. Yeah. I did. I did actually commit technical incest once. Oh my god! Tell us that story then. Okay, well I'll tell that story then. Fuck it. Who cares what's going Paul on? Paul commits technical incest. Well, you need to refine the what's going on. That's true. I need to do that. You're right, TJ. Your your instincts. Incest always leads. Let me just qualify this by saying it wasn't really incest. If it really inbreeds, incest. it leads. Yeah, sorry. Go it wasn't really incest. It was with a girl named Angie who was like a third cousin or some shit. There was no blood relation. But uh, it's it's been this absurd anchor around my neck and my family this whole time. Like, PJ done lost his kiss and finger bang virginity to his cousin <laughs> Angie. <laughs> PJ. <laughs> and it just follows me. It's like, it's, yeah, it's like the albatross, you know, yeah. around my neck. Um, so, yeah, when I was 10, Angie was 12 or something. She was older and she was, you know, sporty and kind of cute. And I thought she was hot. And at 10, I was randy and ready to go. And so we kissed out back and that was cool. But then, like, she wanted to go, like, we were going to Disneyland and she was like, on the ride to Disneyland, stuff's going to go down. And I didn't know, like, I was 10, so I didn't know what that meant. Like, stuff's going to go down. I didn't know. I didn't have a frame of reference. So on the way back from Disneyland, actually, is when it went down. There was pillows over laps, and there was, like, finger banging, and I think, like, a hand job even. Damn, Paul. But that was, like, my first, like, real sexual experience, and that was with a cousin. Yeah. Wow. Like a, like a third cousin. <laughs> She I think you're cousins. lying about this degree of uh, relationship. Okay, well, this I'll was, walk you through the degrees. And you, was, you tell me. I'll, no, I'll no. tell you exactly who she was. You're lying. This was this. Was I like have an aunt. Sister okay, I have an aunt, <laughs> a blood aunt. Okay, so my dad's literal blood sister, okay? Okay. We'll call her Aunt Tilly. Aunt Tilly married a guy named, we'll call him uh, uh, Joe. So Aunt Tilly marries Joe. I'm not related to Joe. Joe has a brother. Joe's brother has a daughter. That's Angie. Wow. Yeah, that's that's not even. You see really the absurdity related. of it? You that's see not the, really like, related. You see the absurdity though that like at every family gathering, there's literally no blood relation. My entire at all. life, this gets brought up. Every family gathering. Every one. Oh, every God. single. Like we had. A How part, does it get brought up, Paul? Like like I don't know because you know well you've spent some time with me in L.A. Right. Mm hmm. You know I just don't stop talking. Yeah. Like we've talked about that. <laughs> We We've talked about how you don't stop talking. Yes. yes. Um, so the, 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 the line always leads down sex, no matter what crowd I'm in, even. Like, I'd be with my, my sister. My, my, my biological sister is hyper Christian, like super duper fundamentalist Christian lady. Um, but it, she will bring it up too. She'll be like, PJ done made out with his cousin. <laughs> Just drop it in the middle of a dinner, and then I have to qualify it. And you know how people are at dinners and stuff. They're just like, nah, you fucking kissed your cousin. <laughs> this guy over here, you know. So I've lived with this my entire life for kissing some chick that just by happenstance happened to belong to the family of some man that my aunt married. That's my life, TJ. Kiss your cousin. All I know, Paul, is you're <laughs> one queer, incestuous faggot. 
Yeah. Yeah. Kissing That's disgusting. Pimp, kissing pimp monk though. Oh, God. What was better, kissing your cousin or kissing pimp monk? Pimp monk. Pimp monk was better. Yeah. It was, why? I remember Pimp Monk more vividly. The yeah. softness of his tongue. Uh, uh, was there uh, tongue, Paul? There was tongue. Oh my god! I know there's a little controversy about that because we did a very, very sweeping dip. But uh, Pimp Monk will attest, like there was tongue. How do you feel about around. that, Scotty? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was there, dude. I know. Mm. I know. We were there. Hashtag we were there. Yeah. Oh my. It was goodness. not as bad as I thought it was going to be, though. It was worse. It looked bad yeah, for me. Yeah. It was you bad. It looked terrible. You repressed <laughs> memories, Paul. It was bad, but it wasn't that bad. Paul said he wants a rematch. So I guess that's story time with Paul. I didn't kiss my cousin, but I have to live every day with the knowledge that everyone in my life that loves me thinks I did. <laughs> Including Okay. <us. laughs> All right. Show's over. We will be back on Friday. 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 All right. Good night, everybody. Subscribe to this channel if you're not. Thumbs up. Thumbs Love you guys. Up. Peace. Do all that shit you do. Yeah. Good. Downtown, homo on the ground. Says he got a probe. No, I got my chode. But no, that's sick. If I want a dick, I can get a dick. And I like the metal stick with a little drip, drip. Knob on the top and all the sickiness And I know the satisfaction of a man Don't get me wrong, bars your eyes A baby does turn me on Like when a man tries to beat me To drop my hope and close And then he tries to beat me Cacking the mouth, put in the mouth Sucks the sound, makes scream out Then I'll be the hobo you and friends Talk about standing in the street Getting bent over a vent Looking forward to the Roman experience Get the loop, dude, use it for the back in action Stick it in and watch the hobo's ass construction Hobo, hobo, hobo Sorting a boner for the killing of the hobos in the sandy of the boat. Feeling good, looking out the window. Looking down the alley for a dirty old hobo. Yeah, I like the anal probe and shoving like the dirty dozen. Says the ladies in the dress of babies, mom and dad's cuz make me feel like a hobo. Time me down for anal probe and tossing over with blood running out my ass. Think it's funny. Take a look at the fucking bust you in the nuts like you're my lover. Fucking dirty hobo dick and saucy like the suck drip. Think twice about your trip, the hobo probe with confidence. Building up the meaning or something. Lonely boy, you're fucking hobo, hobo, hobo. hobo. I'll do
gobbled my novel with the shit still clinging to her chest as she started to begin. Eat my shit! Off my shit! And she started to moan like she was getting boned. She was a man, just a city I'm running, I'm on the feeling, but nothing is dying. Get 
Maybe reminisce about LA some more. Yeah, if I mean, anyone, if I mean, how deep any... do we want to go in our reminiscences, though? I don't know, man. I mean, because some balls crazy shit. deep, some crazy. We, shit. There was really no, there really was no crazy shit though. Because no, like, we uh, mostly just hung every out. night, every day was like, man, we gonna go to the. I was Hollywood gonna do Bowl, some shit, and we gonna. But then I got high. We gonna go walk Santa Monica, and we gonna go to. The I did Viper do those Roman things. Shit. We, just, we actually yeah. did that more than you did, TJ. But every we day, walked around, pretty much every, okay, the city. but at least for me and Paul, every day was pretty much like. Yeah. Let's sit, at, let's sit at this table on the back porch and talk you know, and smoke okay, you know for nine funny? hours straight. <laughs> I think it was like the third day, Ben Kennedy was like, man, Paul's going to say the same shit. Man, let's go out and do shit. And then the TJ and Paul are going to get really fucking yeah. high, and it's not going to happen. I like, felt, I felt yeah, kind of right. bad because, you know, Beyond Fear was like kind of, I was showing her around L.A. and stuff, and she would call, oi. She'd call me every oi. day, and she'd be like, oi, oi, we're going to go out today, see, some, see something American. And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's just go over to the, you know, the peasants' compound first and she'd be like oh shite because she knew like as soon as <laughs> as soon as i as soon as i got shite. there tj was gonna be like let's smoke a bowl and yeah. talk about life and like it was gonna be nine hours later and we were gonna just order pizza again <laughs> we were oh, we pizza ordered like pizza three, four times so many nights we four ordered times i thought we were there pizza was scotty ordered. took a pizza and oh that was great oh that was great that was great we got that's tell a that. great moment all right so a, a the moment. night after the uh after the hangout, right? Not the night after. The night no, of the, the night hangout. Of the hangout. The yeah. When we got party. back home, we, yeah. we ordered pizzas and shit because we were hungry. And there was, you know, we didn't want to go out. We were drunk and all this stuff. And um, Pimp Monk was there, too. That's kind of unrelated. Oh, my God. He was trash. It is sort of related. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I'm just going to pass you the baton for a second right. here. Maybe there is a story time with yeah, Paul tonight. Yeah, kind of. So, Scotty, as you know, doesn't doesn't eat meat. He's a, you know, he's a vegetarian guy. He likes his vegetarian pizzas. So, we were trying to be nice. Uh, and we ordered several pizzas for everybody with meat on them. And we ordered Scotty his very own medium-sized veggie pizza, whatever the fuck the veggie pizza was, right? Yes. And so Scotty is gone. Like, he's in the back room or something, and we're all starting to eat. And Scotty comes out, and he goes, oh, you guys ordered food, huh? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, oh, pizza? And then TJ's like, yeah, Scotty, we ordered you a medium veggie pizza. 
And Scotty goes, I don't even want this fucking pizza. He opens it and looks at it, and he goes, no. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't ask for pizza. And he punches the pizza. Right? Now, meanwhile, you got to keep in mind, I'm standing in the kitchen laughing my ass off. Pimp Monk, on the other hand, who is from uh, uh, Missouri, and, li- you know, that's a very poor area of the world. He's looking at this like, is he really- Is he from Missouri or, or Mississippi? Mississippi? Sorry, oh, okay. I get those mixed up. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's still poor as fuck. Like, you know, Pimp Monk probably has never done that to a pizza. Let's just put it that way. I never have either, but whatever. I, I didn't care. Scotty punches this pizza and grabs it, and he goes, you know where this pizza belongs? Right here in this motherfucking trash can. And he just literally <laughs> folds the pizza box with the pizza in it, not a slice eaten. In half and just stuffs it in the garbage And Pimp Monk just looks at me and he goes Can he do that? <laughs> and I was like can he do what? He's, like, He's going to throw that whole pizza away? <laughs> and I was like yeah Pimp Monk And he goes well, uh, can he do it? And I was like do you want it? And he's like no And I was like neither do I <laughs> If he don't want it he can do what he want with it but yeah, no, that was a good pimp monk was fucking trash. Oh my god, he was so trash. We were all what, fucking trash. What was he this saying? Is, no, no, this is we were in the back. Me and Paul were in our usual spots in the backyard, <laughs> sitting in our respective spots on the table. Yeah. Pimp monk, who does not smoke <laughs> weed. Ate gummy bears. He was eating like these gummies that are like THC heavy. They're I, strong. I, I went. I went. Paul to was a, trying to caution him. I tried. I went to a dispensary and got a bunch of really yeah. potent shit. And I was like, look, guys. I told everybody, really. Because you guys don't have a lot of that around here. No. Um, so I was like, guys, this stuff will mess you up. It takes a long time to kick in, but just eat one or two, chill for 30 minutes, and if you're not super high, eat another one. You know? yeah. But Pimp Monk, so I told Pimp Monk, eat two. Yeah, but I was like... Come on, don't be a pussy. Eat three or four, you know. Because me and TJ, we don't really subscribe to that rule. We were just eating and fucking spraying and smoking and like any any type of THC we could get. If there was, if if we like, if there was a nurse there with like THC drips, sir, we'd uh-huh. be like, yep, hook it up. <laughs> yep. But Pimp Monk, so Pimp Monk eats two, and TJ TJ's like, eat three, Pimp Monk, don't be a bitch. And and Pimp Monk's like, I'm gonna go with Paul. So he eats two. Like half an hour later, out of the corner of my eye, I see TJ, the fucking demon that he. He is going <laughs> eat, eating some more, eating some more um, uh, edibles. And, and, he, and mind you, they had been drinking for like four oh, hours. Yeah, <laughs> wasted, yeah, wasted. And Pimp Monk just grabs the bag and eats like four or five of them. I was like, oh, there goes his night. Yeah. And then for the rest <laughs> of the night, me and Paul were talking in our usual position. Pimp Monk was off to the side of us like. He was literally out, and then he would, like, every once in a while, he would, because, like, we'd just forget he was there. And me and TJ would go on philosophizing, and then Pimp Monk, every once in a while, he'd wake up. And what he so, And, like, his eyes wouldn't focus, and he would just grunt incoherently at us. We'd, we'd try and calm him. We'd be like, Pimp Monk, you all right, man? You just got real high. And he'd be like, I don't even... What? Where do we? Uh, I don't uh, fucking gummy bear, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't move him. And then, like five seconds even, later, he would just he would just lose consciousness and just list back into this pile. On Happened the like eight chair. times. Yeah, I was real worried because I felt kind of responsible for the guy. Um, you know, I wanted to get him back to his hotel, and I didn't want to dump him on you guys. Don't want him shitting his pants. So I was real glad that, like, either. like about an hour later, he seemed to come out of it enough to get in an Uber and get on home. But man, yeah, that weed got on top of Pimp Monk. It was that kiss. It was, your kiss was so Ugh. intoxicating. Ugh. He was intoxicated. He, was, he, just, he was falling asleep so he could dream. TJ, do you remember moment. the fucking brownie? Oh, dude, I ate dude, the brownies. The fucking, Fuck. they, 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 Paul got these brownies. There's like two to a pack. They were so. They look like just and, little brownies. And like, we, brownies. And by the time we we eaten a couple edibles, we're like, we're not gonna get so fucked up. And oh, like, I me and TJ, that. me and TJ like, ate at the same time. Like, pretty much ate a brownie. We're like, who cares? We're smoking tons of weed, spraying this. What was this? Uh, the tincture and shit, and we're eating all kinds of the yeah. edibles and shit. And then like, we're like, we're gonna see a movie at, at, at like eight o'clock. And it's like four hours. We're gonna go see a movie. Movie at the arc light. It's going to be great. Nope. <laughs> like seven o'clock rolls around. I am in my room. Like, what is the meaning of existence? And you know, I warned you guys about those. And I went like, up to, I went to TJ and I'm like, TJ, we can't go to the movie. And like, I, I, he's like in his bed. Like I'm paralyzed. I warned you guys specifically about those brownies too. When I brought those, I was like, these are the fucking. Yeah, but you know, I have half a one. I don't take that shit seriously. Though. I know. Yeah, we didn't. Cause you know, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty hardcore with the green, you know, I didn't hear that advice. Maybe I, 
would have taken that advice. I just ate yeah. The you whole did. Thing. You did the next day. And you were like just like we were. You, you woke up. You like looked at us for a second. You're like, is there food? Like, no. Bye. Uh, I I gave one of those each to Ashley and Beyond Fear. I ate two, and we went to the Natural History Museum. Like, I was tweeting rocks and being like, I found the the atheist rue rock, because it was called Beta Fight. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. Like I was high, and you're it, regressive. I was just obnoxious as Didn't fuck. Didn't you say some rock called like Grossiller? Yeah, Grossiller. I was like, this is the Brett Keen rock. But the problem was, I wasn't just taking pictures <laughs> quietly. I was announcing it to the whole fucking room of people that were there with their kids <laughs> to look at rocks. This is like Brett Keen. Little kids, like, what's that man we talking were, about, mom? Just come along. We were all like stage eight high in public at a public museum. Like it was insane. It was great though. Yeah, dog. It's fucking brownies, man. Everyday racism. Pretty it's all awesome. good. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Show's over, right? Yeah. Um, so all the patrons that uh, are $5 or above that your transaction went through. At, Tune in tomorrow. Yes. We 6 will be p.m. doing the private show. Paul will get drunk. TJ will get drunk. Wait. Scotty will get drunk. Ben Jesus. will get drunk. Yes. The show won't even make any fun. Sense yeah. to be awesome. Things will I have happen. People so will many. Die. I have so many crazy ass weird videos that I could never play on the regular show. Sick. Ben's got videos oh, that you can't even show on YouTube. <laughs> too hot for videos you. Videos too you, crazy yes. to even fucking perceive or understand. Yes. So good night, everybody. Peace. Love you guys. Good night. See you on Monday. Fuck. Smoke weed every day. Every day. Hey, hey. And every night. So the looming pain of having your fist in my ass begs me the question. Are we going to do story time? Can we just get this fucking... fucking do it. Is it time for story time with Paul Ben? Yeah. Only you can decide. I was just trying to find the intro. (sighs) Story time with Paul. That's slightly different than what we remember as the intro for Story Time with Paul, is it not? It is. It is. It's updated for my 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 look currently. Oh, I think. very interesting. Um, so um, I had. Hey, Paul, uh, Paul, you gonna tell a story today? Yeah, Jim. I have a story in mind. Jim, if you want to stay around for the fisting, you'll have to shut the fuck up. Yeah, seriously. Oh. If you want to, if you want to be here for the fisting, <laughs> you're gonna have to close your fucking pie hole. So okay. the one of the reasons why uh, this fisting tonight is kind of a psychological. Uh, uh, I have a, I have an aversion to it, even beyond the fact that TJ's got a giant fist, is because I had kind of a run in one time at a job interview, and I think I've told you guys yeah. this in private. It's going down my elbow, Paul. Oh God, TJ. In in LA, I think I found the occasion to tell the guys this story. I had a. Uh, what the fuck is that? It's Jim. Fuck you, Jim. <laughs> so I had a job interview once, and it was at a recycling company that my dad worked with. And he knew the boss uh, of the company, and my dad and this boss were both assholes of the same stripe. And they decided that because it was my first real job as a man, that they would try and get one over on me. Um, and this just this gives you an insight into how fucked up my familial relationships were. Okay, so I show up to this job interview at a recycling factory, and this guy named Mike is the boss, right? And he's interviewing me, and uh, he he gives me the interview and. <laughs> Jim? Jim, dude. Jim, you remember that caveat we gave you earlier about shutting the fuck up? That includes rustling your mic. (coughs) Rustling Paul's jimmies. Jim. So anyway, I go I interview with this guy, and he goes, okay, so all we've got to do, you've got the job, g- good interview, thank you for that. We've just got to do a quick physical to make sure that everything's okay. And I was like, cool. Well, so do I go to a doctor's office? He's like, no, 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 we have a nurse here. Just go ahead and step in the back room. Uh, so I did. And I go into the back room, and there's this person in full, like, OR scrubs. Like, have you seen the whole fucking dress that the fucking uh, 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 OR doctor uh, uses? <laughs> All right, Paul. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I'm just excited about fisting your fucking oh, fat my fucking God. faggot ass, dude. Anyway, he goes, uh, so, I, so I go in there, and there's this nurse standing there with these gloves on. And they're not, they're not like surgical gloves. They're big industrial, like, keep your hands from getting cut gloves, right? And so I'm standing there, and the nurse is just standing there silently. And right behind me walks in the boss, and he goes to the side of the room.
what the fuck is he doing? He, he's in a fucking stupor. The only thing he can think of literally right now is fisting your ass. <laughs> anyway, has lost you know what? His you mind. know what? Fuck it. The, to make a long story short, <laughs> the guy. The, <laughs> the guy, the, 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 the boss guy goes, drop your pants. And I'm like, here in front of you. And he goes, yes. So I do so. I down to my boxers. And he goes, go ahead. Continue. And I was like, all, everything. Yes. So I dropped my, my boxers. Hold on, Paul. Yeah. So they saw your supple, naked, fat man booty. And my, and my cock, too. Ooh, okay. So I'm standing there naked from the waist down, my pants around my ankles, and the nurse person, dressed in full OR scrubs, starts squeezing this black tube of grease onto their fucking big industrial glove. And the and the bo- I look at the boss and the boss goes turn around boy. And at that moment the nurse starts giggling, like, <laughs> and I turn around and I'm starting to actually turn around to accept this fist into my ass. When I when I recognize the giggle, it's my grandfather. Oh, your destiny's about to be fulfilled, Paul. My oh, gran- PJ. My grandfather, who also worked for this PJs. recycling company, was dressed in OR scrubs and was looking at my cock and threatening to fist my asshole. So I have a natural aversion to what's about to happen. I don't. <laughs> I, I honestly don't want to belabor it anymore. So if Ben's ready, uh, oh, Paul, I need that ass, bitch. Come to me, Paul. Hold on, your your mic is dead, and the one over here is live. Come to me, say, Paul. Which which uh, one of your multiple personalities is Shut this, TJ? Shut the fuck up, Jim, bitch. Thanks for taking my place. This is sexual oh. altar. Oh. Sexual altar here. Oh my God, no! Oh. Let's get ready to oh. this. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I need and a here we go. Oh, no. Two contestants. Oh. Oh my god, stop, stop! What oh the god. F- <laughs> Oh, what's going on? Jim's like, what? <laughs> what the hell is this oh. shit? Get on the fucking floor, I've waited long enough. On, Pull that That's pants on. down, this you truly fucking just, pig. This is fucking disturbing. I know. You can feel the tension shit. in the room. All right, all right. Oh my god, I cannot believe this. All right, Jim. Drunk Jim. <laughs> all right, I'm not gonna. Oh fuck! I'm gonna try to. Oh shit! It's the loop. All right, get the get the fucking. You know what? All right, I think it's better if you use my mic. Okay. Yeah. This is not a fucking joke. This is not a fucking publicity stunt. I'm doing this for fucking huh. real. I don't care what you guys this think. This is disgusting. I'll be honest with you guys. This Shut is up, disgusting. Scotty. Fuck you, TJ. Fuck you, Scotty. <laughs> Ow. Okay, hey, look, I'm, this is going to uh, happen. Some sense into you. We already talked about this, guy. This is going to happen. I know you it, have your objections. I don't give a shit. This is my fucking show. I'm the amazing atheist. Just describe what's happening. All, All right. right. Paul. Well, go ahead, 